pareciera esta vez Que no te conozco tanto como dices Está haciendo como antes Como cuando éramos niños y dejaba cicatrices Y yo pienso que andabas arrebatado Sobre todo el último tiempo Quisiera no tener que verte más Pero si vuelvo a esta puta ciudad te pido Pero Grupitos quemando cookies y la UCI La llevan los bandidos que quieren mm, ah. Se crean malitos Y son puros foolish Vito los luxury Lo que lo caro no me quito Grupitos quemando cookies y la UCI La llevan los bandidos que quieren mm, ah. Se crean malitos Y son puros foolish Vito los luxury Lo que lo caro no me quito Pareciera esta vez Que no te conozco tanto como dices Está haciendo como antes como cuando éramos niños y dejaba cicatrices Y yo pienso que andabas arrebatado Sobre todo el último tiempo Quisiera no tener que verte más Pero si vuelvo a esta puta ciudad te pido
Que tú ya ni te acuerdas de mí Porque un clavo se haga otro clavo Sé que te fallé, pero wey No te vayas de mi lado Dormí en tu culo, mi baby Ahora sin ti se me hace raro Me desperté, pero ve Todo ha cambiado Y ya ni me aguanto si no voy ciego Pero te pienso siempre que veo Me vi un poco, yeah. Como los de antes nos vemos luego Sabes que nunca fuiste una más Y que me encanta como lo hacemos Pero yo no No me aguanto ese culo de supermodelo Y la doy online, pero pienso en ti siempre Voy tan high que ni puedo correrme Dice que no piensa en mí, ah, uh ah -uh. Sabes que lo nuestro no fue corriente Encontra un love, pero no como este Bebo de todo hasta quedar mi consciente Y si tú piensas en mí, don't cry Tú nunca confías en lo que diga la gente Yeah, voy si hoy te puedo ver, ah, uh ah -uh. Decir en ti no me vale Acabé en tu cuenta otra vez, uh -uh. Siempre que me acuerdo cómo te daba Ahora me despierto con un culo diferente Cada mañana Siempre que te enteras me pides que te cuente Pero no recuerdo nada No vale la pena llorar por esto, por favor, baby, don't cry No vale de nada pensar en la pena, más es lo que hay Luego hasta que me olvido de esto Aunque nunca me olvido mi error Ay, ay, ay y la doy online, pero pienso en ti siempre Voy tan high que ni puedo correrme Dice que no piensa en mí, ah, uh ah -uh. Solo que lo nuestro no fue corriente Encontra un love, pero no como este Bebo de todo hasta quedar mi consciente Y si tú piensas en mí, don't cry Tú nunca confías en lo que diga la gente Baby, don't cry 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 Said I will find you, but it's not the time to. This stream contains fast flashing images that may affect viewers who are susceptible to photosensitive epilepsy and other photosensitivities. Viewer discretion is advised. the world stage and former champions are ready for another run and it's anybody's game in a year already full of upsets and surprises oh. it's time for the next chapter of vct hello everyone and welcome to day one of masters madrid we're coming to you live from the madrid arena for the first global event of the year i am your host ying su and i'm delighted to be joined on the desk uh, by mimi and kukuka kepasa we're in spain Finally. Bienvenidos a España. Eh, yo creo que podemos hacer todo el programa en español y si no os enteráis de nada, pues simplemente os echamos. I, I agree with everything she just vale, said. Vale, 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 Spain's vale. great thus far. This, this <laughs> city is beautiful. I think, I think the crowd is going to be amazing. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait. But so we are changing the game in 2024 and Masters Madrid will have a standard, will not have even, a standard double limb bracket. Check out this quick format explainer brought to you by the one and only Mixwell. Get ready. 
From March 14th to March 24th, the best Valorant players in the world will converge for Masters Madrid. The first global event of the 2024 Valorant Champions Tour will feature eight teams representing the four international leagues. Teams earn qualification for Masters by finishing top two at their respective kickoff tournaments. Masters will be split into two parts, the playoff bracket and the all-new Swiss stage. First up, we have the Swiss stage, which will narrow the competition from eight teams to the top four. To advance out of Swiss, teams will need to secure two wins before they accumulate two losses. Each match will be a best of three series. Before the tournament, participants will be drawn into four matches. In the first round, we'll see teams who won their kickoff events face off against all the second place team finishers. No same region matchups allowed here. Those who win round one will move up, and those who lose will find themselves in elimination matches. Between each round, two fully random draws will decide who plays who, and from here on out, regional fratricide is fair game. After three rounds of Swiss competition, we'll have our four playoff bracket contenders. A random draw will pair the competitors, a double elimination bracket will narrow them down and will close out with a best of five series in the lower and grand finals. The last team standing will be the Masters Madrid champion. Mark your calendars, tune into the action and catch the grand finals on March 24th for an exclusive preview of Valorant's next agent, followed by a show match to see them in action for the first time. For more information and updates, visit ValorantEsports.com and follow us on social media. Get ready for the ultimate clash of Valorant at Masters Madrid. Oh, mixed well, I am so ready. There's a lot to unpack there, but let's talk about the new Swiss format uh, yeah. because Mimi, we have never seen this at a global event before. Yeah, it's very similar to the old GSL format where it's you have to win two before you lose two. But what's interesting is the opponent you play is randomized. So it makes yes. it a lot harder for the teams to prep for their future matches. Yeah, exactly. But I think this is the kind of competition that we wanted to see. We get the seat ones versus the seat two. And of course, we're very surprised that some of the usual suspects are not here in Madrid. So I think that this tournament is going to be definitely one that nobody wants to to miss. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy the amount of teams you would expect to be here that aren't. EG, the champion from last year. Fnatic, the team who won every other event yeah. last year. You have you know. DRX, you have NRG. <laughs> All the mainstays of Global, yeah. for the most part, aren't here. This is really the year of, of young blood, of new teams stepping up to the Global stage. Yeah, all I'm going to say is it's, it's chance for Paper Rakes. Paper Rakes, uh, they haven't had a trophy yeah, they're one yet. they're the few who made it. Yeah, with everyone else being, uh, not being here, this is their chance for sure. Uh, we're, of course, also playing on patch 8.0. Point zero four. It doesn't really have uh, any major agent balancing or major tweaks. So, uh, you know, I, I feel like we've already seen enough weird things that's been happening at kickoff. <laughs> so I assume we will still see those weird things here. We've got a new format, of course, and the field is wide open. We want to know how you think this is going to play out in today's MasterCard fan poll. Which league do you think will bring home a trophy? Will it be America's China EMEA or Pacific? Scan the QR code on your screen to cast your vote and we'll have the results in just a bit and if you want your post on the broadcast make sure to use the hashtags valorant masters and vct i'm just gonna let you guys have it real quick which league is bringing home the first trophy of the EMEA, EMEA. it's gonna be a close EMEA final against and nothing America's. else this EMEA is, and nothing else. Bea, this is EMEA the closest. and nothing There's else. No I know favorite. anything can happen, okay? But they're the There's one being no the very big, biggest surprises. So it's only no fair. Favorite. I will say Pacific or China, just to oh, be different. Except yeah. for that, that's just not to, <laughs> You know, I'll, I'll throw my two cents in there. Uh, while we wait to hear what you guys think at home, let's hear from our resident to know it all. It is Bren and Saisho. They're here with some Swissology. Never been wrong. Welcome to Swissology. I'm joined here by the Prophet Bren, and we're going to lay out for you how the Swiss system works and our predictions for what's going to happen. Part of it's random, so we're definitely getting this wrong. <laughs> These are the opening matches. Bren, I want to start off by getting your expertise. Who wins Carmen Core versus FBX? Carmen Core. Okay. It's uh -huh. all blue. All right. It's okay. all blue. We'll, we'll turn the teams that are losing upside down. Yep. That's never gone wrong for us before. No disrespect intended. Not at all. No. Genji versus Loud. Who have you got winning that game? Oh, Genji apparently, I mean, Dominating their scrims. Owning. Yeah, haven't lost a single Owning. single scrim. Um, I'll go Genji. Okay. I mean, EDG sorry, Paper fans. X. EDG Paper X, I'll go VDG. I mean, okay. EDG, oh. I think EDG have shown higher peaks, but listen, I'm as controversial. 
All right, and Sentinels against Heretics? Again, I think, I mean, Heretics could win, but I think it's going to be Sen. Right, okay, so that sets us up for all of the teams on the left winning. Okay. So let's get them into one and zero. So they would be in round two. Yeah, okay, all right, so Carmen, Carmen Core. Core. Yeah. Boom. Who are they playing Put against? that there for now. Who are they playing against? Uh, give me another Just one. Just keep throwing. Gen G, keep Just throwing. keep throwing. Okay. Okay, right. They, they might we'll be Carmen Core up here. Okay, and then they give me Gen another G there. Team. EDG. EDG, Sentinels. Another winning team. Okay, Where EDG playing against Gen, Gen G. G. Okay. So that means then, Sentinels playing Sen against Carmen Core to open. Who wins? Sen Carmen Core. Sen Carmen Core, that's such a hard one. I mean, dream matchup for me as well. Um, Pick. Sentinels. Sentinels win. Carmen sure. Core, upside Sorry. down. Gen G, EDG. Uh, Gen G. Gen G win. EDG, upside down. The 0 <laughs> oh, 1 God. teams. Get them. Get them. Oh, whoa. Loud. Whoa. Paper X. Paper X. Pa I've, I've picked up Heretics instead. Well, they yeah, okay, there. that's fine. That's also fine. Paper X. Paper X. Uh, they, they go down there. And who FPX. Else? FPX. FPX. Who wins? FPX Heretics. Uh, Heretics. Okay. Sorry, FPX. Who wins? Loud. Uh, Paper X. Loud. Okay. And who who goes through? These are one on ones. All right. These are the one on one teams. That means that Heretics. Loud. Lo Heretics. Heretics loud. Heretics. Okay. Loud. Ten seconds. To, uh, heretics? Against Heretics. Again, uh, what? Comic Core. EDG. Comic Core EDG. The Comic Core's already there. Comic Core's already there. Go on, EDG. Who wins? Who wins? Comicor. We're out of time, man. We're out of time. <laughs> Who wins the whole tournament? Mm. Pick. Mm, I want to think about it, actually. Unbelievable. This guy is not the Lisan Al Gaib. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Yinsu, back to you. Uh, if he's not the least on our guy, we gotta find one. We gotta, find, like, we one. gotta find one. So Solage is my new religion. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's what it is. You're the still girl. You're the still girl. This says your gas in the mouth. My religion is yeah. chronology. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, they've never been wrong, right? They've, they've never been wrong. So, for, yeah. well, but I mean, really how right Tokyo do you think? I, I think that everybody right. at home guessed how we made the brackets and we finally shown that it's just bring some That is actually what yeah, the admin exactly. does in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually Brett. Yeah, he's the script writer. No, but not, not many people he's know about He's the script writer, he's the him. admin. It's, it's just him. Yeah, well, let's see if they're going to be right about this first matchup of today because Carmichael will be taking on FPX. Uh, they did face each other at lock-in, but so much has changed since then. And Mimi, who would have thought that this team will be the one to come into this tournament as EMEA's number one seed? It's unreal. Last time these teams played, it was like the silly match, right? It was like, oh, no one, no one's looking forward to FBX oh, Carmen Core. They are changing. Yeah, now we're going back, and Carmen Core have completely reinvented themselves, rebuilt the team around Shin, and completely reinvented their style. And they dominate in EMEA. They played more matches than all the other teams yep. in playoff. They beat Fnatic. They beat Foot. They beat pretty much every <laughs> top team in EMEA, except Na'Vi. They just look unbeatable right now. And I think it's important to also say that Shin, it's not even that it was built around him. He also had to go through that trial yes. process. He also had to be selected. And every single one of these players has a very um, specific mission in the team. And the way that they play, and like fundamentally, is just beautiful to watch. And they are one of the reasons that EMEA on itself, it's changing and how uh, everything is going to be different. And probably th the reasons why we do not see the usual suspects here. It's also a very different way to build a team. We yes. saw, I think, last year when we started our international leagues, a lot of teams building super teams, focusing on getting the best players who have proven themselves. That wasn't K-Core. They picked up tier two players. Magnum hasn't played in tier one in ages. Neri was on the worst NA team in challengers, and now he's dominating EMEA. It's all fresh talent on this squad, but they have made a monolith. Yeah, and I have to uh, mention the man that ties all this together. <sighs> Any opportunity to, uh, to talk about Gambit, yes. I will take it because N is back and Kukuka, it is the same formula that saw him succeed the last time he was here. Exactly. I don't know if you've been living under a rock, but Eng did it again. In Gambit, he picked up three duelists, gave them different roles and created a super team. The same way that we were hearing Brent talking about how Genji doesn't, it didn't lose his cream since they got to Madrid. Gambit was that team every single event. They couldn't perform in the international stage, but then in scrims, uh, they were winning everything. And it's that formula, that hard work, that actually finding and studying the player, learning what is best for them and how you can get the best out of them, especially picking up so young, because it's so easy to, so, sorry, so difficult to unlearn things, that if you get these young guns that can shoot and are definitely willing to, to learn, you put Aang there, it's literally a win. Exactly, right? This team wouldn't be the team they are today without strong leadership to develop it. You still have Zaish, mm. who was with them last year coaching, but now he's built up with Coach Aang and all these players. I mean, every time you hear them in an interview, they're talking about how impactful the coaching staff is at building them up, at making them the 
best players that can be. And also bringing up what I think is the forefront meta leading compositions out of yes. any other team here. I mean, that's just what N does, right? Like you said, in every interview, it's even crazy the, he e wasn't on a team last year. Even by the, the ex Gambit players, you, you have an interview, Red Guard with Shade Oz Chronicle, they still talk about N and what he told them uh, as well. And I'm glad you mentioned the scrims, Bayer, because yep. they uh, tweeted out shortly after they won, became the number one seed of EMEA. Just basically uh, re rehashing what happened with Gambit. Just yep. the fact that they played an obscene amount of scrims and they won them all. Yeah, exactly. I think it was either Chronicle or Redgar, I cannot remember, but uh, three years ago we saw them being like, oh, we played like over 700 scrims this year, something crazy. And it looks like this is part of the Eng method. This is one of the things that he does. And I think that it translates very well onto, um, uh, onto the officials because the fact that they don't lose a scrim is that they only focus on improving their fundamentals and not focusing so much on the set plays because they, it all comes together if you have that base. Yeah, it absolutely does. And I think we see that in in the amount of practice, how well put together the initial ideas are, right? They're playing stuff no one else is, and the implementation of it is really good. But it's not just that, it's the synergy between this team. You watch them play, and you see in every situation, even when they're up, how intentional they are at setting up double swings, at putting each other in positions to make rounds that a lot of teams could let slip away, unlosable. They are so methodical in their approach. Honestly, my favorite thing about this whole narrative is they're just good. True. <laughs> they're just really good. good. Like, what else yeah. can we say? Uh, and speaking of that, uh, Kakuga and I had the yeah. privilege of watching Naray on land in EMEA, yes. uh, doing everything that he does, having the best performance there. Is this what you expected when you heard that he was coming over Dude, to the he was, he was on, <laughs> oh, okay, just for context, he was on Mad Lions last year, a team that hey, was one of the have bottom. Hey, what you Nothing against uh, York. We're in Spain. Can't say any of that. But <laughs> one of the that. bottom <laughs> three teams in Challengers North America. And then he comes yeah. to Europe. There's a, a risk taken on him by the coaching staff of this K Core team, and he looks electric. You could see the potential when he was playing back in NA, but it was not unlocked until he was with this team. And Bea, the most impressive thing to me is that he's a young player. It's mm -hmm. his first time on a top-level team like mm -hmm. this, and he's not just playing duelists. The guy's flexing yes. around so many different roles and is electric on every one of them. And that is so important, Mimi, because the fact that he comes from being a duelist means that he knows exactly what a duelist needs to succeed, and he's going to be uh, at that kind of initiator that sets everything well for you. And when he's on the duelist, he knows exactly how to complement that. And going back a little bit to what we were talking about, Ang, Narrate was the player that he wanted the most out of all of them. After just talking to him for a couple of days, he, he was like, I know exactly what I'm going to do with you. Yeah, I mean, the talent scouting from this team is on. Oh, when the real process was long, you know how they, you know, you, you have your interviews and everything. They took a lot of time. Obviously, Ang just loves to put a lot of time into everything that he does, uh, into selecting these players, and he definitely has paid off. I mean, think about what a risk that is to see a player in Tier 2 North America not performing, ship them halfway across the world, move them to Berlin, apply for all their visas, sign Ang them, knows. pay them. He it's has that so look. Much. He and has that it's look. All paid off. Yeah, my favorite thing about that is after one scrim, one trial, and was like, yeah, you're not going to play duelists. Uh, learn, learn, <laughs> learn these <laughs> eight like, <laughs> Yeah, learn them, and you're going to be the best. And uh, speaking of Narrate, he gave us oh. a little insight to the game plan, to their game plan, even coming into this Masters. Take a look at this. Give everyone a reason to watch Madrid. Give them one reason as to why they should tune into your game. Uh, we're just gonna peak everything. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Come on, oh, clap it. we gotta give them a round of applause for that. Uh, do you think that's a good game you plan? You know, I think for yeah. such a young player, the guy's only 21, <laughs> so, such maturity being shown in that statement. Yeah, you can will. take him off the duelist. You can't take the duelist off him. Like, but more importantly, is that a good game plan? You think that's gonna work here? I think you have he's to take risks. He's full of it. He's full of no, it. No. He doesn't mean it. I, he he doesn't he, mean he's just gonna do that. But yeah. I think that <laughs> this team has also shown a willingness to enable the, their players to take those risks when they need to. It's a similarity they have with mm. other top teams at this event, like Sentinels, being willing to sometimes break that and let their players just be strong individuals. Yeah, I mean, I, I, we need the KC versus Sentinel game, by the way. Like, I don't know what. Yes. I don't care oh. what else happens. I mean, Brent Bren already need put that. it in the script, yeah, so we we're need, getting it. We need it a clout uh, matchup, but let's. Shift gears to FPX over here. Uh, again, uh, some different changes coming into this. Uh, Mimi, do we like these changes? What do we think? I mean, I'll be honest. If there's a team who's just going to effing shoot them, it would be, I was gonna it would be this squad. Uh, this is their first year in the Chinese League now that it's kicked off. But we've seen this mm -hmm. squad before at previous global events. Yes. But they've made some changes since then. Picking up Life, who you might be familiar with from his time with EDG and with Attacking Soul Esports, noted a teammate of HFMI0DZJC. 
long, the long name guy. Uh, but he's now on this there, roster. Yeah. I almost got it. It's, it's been a while. But they've also picked up Autumn from Tier 2, yeah. uh, or from the OCE scene, mm. that is, and moved him into this roster. But they still have the kind of identity of yes. that old FPX. Yeah, exactly. Um, it is funny because I think they uh, interpret the, the game in a different way. I think that the regions are uh, very different in yes. that sense. You know, playing the double duelist, the double controller, just focusing uh, on those surprise plays and being very aggressive, not giving that value also to the information. We don't see the Sova, we don't see the Sky, we don't see uh, all of the things that we've seen in the past. They interpret the game in a different way. And that is what I'm very excited to see, because as you said, probably this is one of the teams that's going to pick them a lot. So if Narit wants to go into those aim duos, he's going to get them day one. Yeah, and on their, their map pool, four out of seven of the maps they play, they're playing double duelist comps. All yeah. the other comp, it's not, it's or double dive comps, that is. It's not double duelist because they're playing arena or, or a chamber. chamber. Yeah, right? I mean. Like, these guys have compositions that kind of remind me of like early days Paper X, where they just will put something ridiculous together and they will just run at you, but they have incredible aimers and solid enough synergy to make it work even against some impressive teams. I mean, I'm glad that you guys mentioned Autumn as well, but I was sitting in the press conference yesterday just listening to some of the answers coming from Berlin. One thing that I am extremely impressed with and also a tiny bit concerned with is that Berlin is making all of his calls in Chinese and then translating himself into English before every round to make sure that Autumn knows what the game That's plan unreal. is. And he said that some of the other players are also chipping in with that communication, but he feels that the, the comms get really, really flustered when they are not sure if they're trying to speak Chinese or trying to speak uh, English. But Mimi, the fact that they're making it work is pretty impressive. Yeah, it absolutely is. And you have to give a little history on this guy, Autumn. He's the yeah. first player from OCE, the first Australian to ever qualify to a global event in Valorant, which is pretty cool to see that that come through. But it is definitely a challenge, right? Moving up that language barrier for players who have only ever been speaking Chinese in comms. It's very different yeah. to have to make that change. I mean, everyone is adapting. And uh, speaking of a challenge, earlier I spoke with Autumn about the language barrier he's had to overcome and put him to the test. Take a look at this. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's me here, Yingsu. I'm now joined by Autumn from FPX. Hi, Autumn. Uh, welcome to an international event. Now, uh, you joined a Chinese team uh, last year, so I wanted to ask you about how are the comms? How's your Chinese going? Uh, what's it like to uh, be a part of FPX? Yeah, so to answer the question about the comms, it's uh, pretty. I think it's pretty good now. But when I first joined the team, it wasn't like super good. There was a lot of like my other teammates trying to come in English, and then sometimes in Chinese I didn't understand exactly uh, what was going on. But now I think it's getting a lot better. Just some rounds in clutches. It's not perfect yet, but. I think it's uh, it's getting there. Like the more we play, the better it gets. I think within a few months, or like towards the end of this year, it will be like perfect. Oh, are you studying hard? I'm trying to, but when, when I'm coming to the event and like playing, I'm not really getting any lessons in there. All right. But well, before that, I had like two lessons a week. Oh, that's a, that's quite a few yeah. lessons a week. I, I'm going to put your uh, knowledge to the test. I yeah. wanted to see how good your Chinese uh, really is. I'm going to give you a few words. Uh, some of these came from your teammate, Life. Uh, some of these came from the FPX fans. I'll start with what Life gave me. So I'm going to give you uh, the words in Chinese. So you just have to tell me what you think it means in English. You yeah. ready? Yeah. Okay. 小心屁股. Uh, like what? Uh, care flank. Yes. Care flank. Yeah, perfect. Got a spot on. So that came, that one came from life. Uh, now I, I got a couple of the ones from your fans. Uh, they wanted to test your Chinese as well. I'll start with an easy one. Uh, Chiu Tian. Uh, autumn. My name. Perfect. These lessons are great. Uh, Fen Si. Fen Si. Fen Si. Fen si. I'm not too sure on that. Uh, like it kind of sounds like what it is in English. If I give you a clue. Fence. Yes. Perfect, fans. fans. There we go. Um, Odalia. Australia. Is there anything that you don't actually know? I feel like I need to make these a, a little bit harder. Um, Dweyo. Dweyo. Uh, like, I know Dwey is right. Um, Dweyo. Like, there's people? There's, Kinda, yeah, yeah, you're There's there, a person? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, your people that you sit next to, maybe, when you play? Oh, like teammates. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, and lastly, I wanted to ask you a question. So I know the Chinese fans, they like to give players like quite cute nicknames. Um, uh, what do they call you? Do you know? Uh, I think maybe Chotian or Ultraman. Like yeah, Ultraman. Ultraman. Like Ultraman, but oh. Ultraman. And uh, yeah, maybe Chotian Ge. 
like autumn brew. Oh, that's cute. And is there any Chinese words that you've uh, particularly liked that you picked up since playing with FBX? Uh, Some you say a lot, maybe? Piao Liang. Piao Liang. Yeah, when someone makes a great play, it's oh, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, like pretty beautiful. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I like it. I like it. Hopefully, we'll see a lot of uh, Piao Liang plays yeah. from you, yeah, yeah. Autumn. Thank you for joining me. Best of luck in this tournament. Thank you. Honestly, I know they're still trying to get their comms uh, up to scratch, but his Chinese is really good. He's, I was surprised, uh, but, but also knowing that, you know, he, he he's playing on the jet, he's playing on the most explosive duelist, and he needs the most important comm, you know? He needs to communicate when he's going to go in, or he be, needs to be reactive to that information. You know, he may say that he doesn't speak it, but I was very surprised with the level that he showed. The thing is, though, that it's very different sitting in an interview on a couch versus all these words being yelled constantly in hectic yeah. comms. It, it's definitely really hard not just to adjust to a new language, but to adjust to it in that environment of a live match. Yeah, I can't wait to see uh, if they're going to be able to bring us something new as well when we get to see them on stage. But uh, speaking of new things, life, we've seen him on the international mm -hmm. stage before. Kakuga, he yes. is back. And uh, what is he bringing to this roster? Yeah, exactly. After not making, after uh, his team not making it through Ascension, he joins this team. And he's like the other half for Autumn when we talk about the duelist and when we talk about a little bit more of a passive uh, aggression, to say it in some sense. And he's going to be the Euro player that we're going to be seeing for the most part. So he's taking not only that uh, uh, that duelist, that, that operator, he's also part of the initiation that this composition is lacking. His communication has to be very, very good, and he has to be in a lot of sync with the rest. Yeah, absolutely. For, for life, though, I, I think what you can always expect out of him is just electric performances. The guy oh, yeah. is a fantastic gamer. He has been since the first time we saw him mm -hmm. back with EDG. The thing is, with how this EDG team, or excuse me, this FPX team plays, they are very explosive. They're playing these double duelist comps, they take a lot of risks and those risks rely on Autumn and Life being successful Literally. when they're going for these double entries because there's a lot of times where there's not the normal initiator utility, not the normal player there to trade. They have to be good for FBX to win, really. Yeah, and uh, we, let's just talk about the Yoru. We, we, we mentioned it. Yes. We're going to talk about I it mean, more. Both these teams. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, but what kind of Yoru do we get out of them? I think they're they're very different. Yeah. For, for Carmen Core, they play Yoru kind of like half KO, half a jet, right? You're you're not seeing them very often go for like deep TPs into their opponent's spawn. Instead, they're setting up with fade Yoru flash combos or, or double flash combos on the entry and then diving in with the rays. On the other hand, Bea, yes. FBX's Yoru is teleport <laughs> wherever you please. Uh, go crazy, yes. go ridiculous. It, it's a lot more chaotic to say the least. That's the thing. How is that chaos going to affect KC way of playing? You know, like taking uh, the duels in couples, being very methodical in how to approach the retakes, for example. I think that FPX is going to be on the surprising side, and uh, I think that that might be a big upset for them, and probably we'll have to, you know, call in some pauses, being like, oh, what is going on? But hear me out, if someone can study a, a, a Yoru, is definitely Aang. I know that they know exactly what to expect uh, from FPX. The, the thing is, though, I think today for Carmen Core, compared to their, their run in EMEA, where they're very prep heavy, they have a lot to kind of specifically counter strat teams and be ahead of the curve on. They're great at that, given the coaching staff of this roster. I think today is going to be a lot more more reliant on just the individual players being able to adapt in the server and not getting flustered by the craziness of FPX. That's the thing. They'll drag teams down into the chaos. Yes. It even happened to EDG in the finals and in China. They're very comfortable with it. They will go with the fast rotations, with the fast decisions yes. every single time. So that is the kind of thing that can get into your head and definitely get in the way of your plan. Uh, so let's see if KC is ready for that. Yeah, and remember KC, still all these players really young. Most of them, their first year playing on the tier one level on a big stage like this in in front of a crowd. FBX is a squad that applies a lot of pressure. Carmen Core heavily favored to win this game, but I still mm -hmm. think it'll be a test of how they can perform on the stage. I mean, Naray wants to peak everything, so surely they're going to have to be ready or other people This might be the fastest back. match ever. <laughs> <laughs> you just jinxed it. You just jinxed it. Uh, but it's time to get the results of our MasterCard fan poll. Earlier, we asked you which international league you think will win it all between Americas, China, EMEA, and Pacific. And I can reveal to you it has been overwhelmingly uh, America's. 49% of you voted for America's, 10% for China, 26% for EMEA, and only 13 for uh, Pacific. Is this your doing, Mimi? Did you get rally the troops? I, I, okay, let me just say, I literally said there is no favorite <laughs> to win this tournament. I think the finals is Sentinels, Carmen Core. I think that is oh, the that hardest match to predict. Jeez. I think that is such a hard match to predict. I think America's looks great right now, though. Sentinels yeah. is in the best form we've ever seen from them. Mm -hmm. Loud, as always, is back at an international event. Yeah. 
innovating. They have a strong new player in QCK, and they're living into Sonic's vision well. But I think EMEA looks great. I was so impressed with both Heritage That's and That's why you're wearing blue today. They have a lot of experience. That makes so yeah. much sense. What color is it, Yensu? It, it is blue. Shirt. It's blue. It's blue. 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 Uh, and it might, come, uh, it might just come down to some mind games today as well. Coach N and Coach Nathan are standing by for map selection. So let's send it down and see where we're headed. All right, welcome to Map Select presented by Omen. Uh, first match for this entire event. Congratulations to both teams for being here. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, KC, you are a higher seed. Team A or Team B? Team B. Team B. So FPX, you will be Team A, and we will start with your first ban. Uh, first one, split. Split. Your ban, KC? Ban Breeze. You ban Breeze. So map number one from FPX. Pick Icebox. Icebox, side on Icebox. Mm. Defense. Defense. And map number two from KC. Big Lotus. Lotus. Side on Lotus. Attack. Attack. And then we will go into the next set of bands, starting with FPX. You have Ascent, Bind, and Sunset. Band, Bind. Band, Bind. And then your band, you have Ascent and Sunset. Ban Ascent. Ban Ascent. Map number three, by default, is going to be Sunset. FPX. Side on Sunset. Attack. Attack. All right. Great, guys. Good luck to you both. And now, Bea, uh, Casey, they yep. won't get the split, but they will get that Lotus. And this is where in the final we saw them absolutely dismantle. Yes. Uh, Fnatic, they look so good. Yeah, exactly. And I think that they have a very good read on the map. But I'm more surprised by the read that I'm seeing from FPX. Uh, deciding to ban onto that split, to have that flexibility and that understanding that maybe that head-to-head -head could go on the favor yeah. of Casey. <laughs> so let's just forget about it and just go somewhere completely different. And I think that Icebox is going to be crazy because for the side of uh, Casey, they were the one team that decided to keep keep that Sage in the composition out of all of EMEA and keep it a little bit more traditional when we're talking about probably two of the most untraditional teams that we have here. Honestly, out of most of the world, most most teams are moving yeah, away from true. the Sage comp, but I actually still think it's really good. They're playing oh, yeah. the old last year default comp, just subbing out that Sova for the Gecko. Reason for that change, drone nerf map changes, makes it a lot harder to clear yeah. B main. Gecko, there's so many positions on attack. You can refresh that Dizzy. You can re-clear in the mid round. His ult is also really powerful and very farmable on Icebox. I think that's sick. You can also combine the wall with the wingman to plant. Yeah. They have really good ideas with this comp. On the other hand, FPX are playing Reina Jet. Yeah, Reina Jet, Gecko, and double controller without a Sentinel. We can expect, for example, on mid, someone is going to have to completely, literally, you have to put a man there to control the space. Yes. Probably is going to be uh, the Geckos just to throw a little bit of utility, but it definitely makes things complicated to uh, dwell around the map. Now in the attack, just try break the Dizzy and the Leer at the same time. Just try. Is that and it? Then, and then a Paranoia will appear. Oh gosh, I can't wait, I can't wait. I feel like, <laughs> I, I mean, I set it up as a possible mind game. Crazy. And I think the mind games were played well. This is it. The wait is over. Our teams are ready. And it's time to kick off the first global VCT event of the year. It's Carmichael versus FPX, Genji versus Loud. Day one of Masters Madrid starts right now. So this is how it's gonna go. America's is all about the noise and the volume. We're gonna end on a decisive 13 to three victory with a knife kill to close out the match. Then, when it's time to celebrate, we're not even gonna shake hands. Just leap on the table, flip the trophy, and fight it to make sure it's real. Tunay, gusto mo malaman kung anong tunay. Ito ang mangyayari. Magaling sa control at maging aggressive ang Pacific. Maaaring isuko namin ng ilang rounds, pero tatapusin namin ito sa 13 to 10 na panalo at jet knives sa buong mapa. Sisigurong namin ay akapin ang mga palaban. Dahil kakailangan nila ito. Iyuko kami bilang masasalamat sa mga tagahanga habang inaangat namin ang trophy. Hindi ba maganda? Yeah, 
其他队伍休想拿下任何一分。我们将以是三比零完胜，并与判官团灭掉对手，结束比赛。当我们在欢呼中举起奖杯时，我们会仁慈的感谢对手所做的牺牲。Son teorías interesantes. Ahora para nuestro uno, dos, tres, cuatro, sexto trofeo. Welcome to Masters Madrid. America's interview. Take one, marker. I like the flames. Thank you. I'm yeah. pretty hot right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you know the meme with, with Aaron Schwarzenegger that just like, yeah. Is that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's better. What makes America the most competitive region? I would say we have the best duelist in the world, for sure. We have Aspas, we have now second. QCK is proving himself. And we also have a lot of world champions. We have one on your team, for yeah. example. So, make us great, for sure. Historically speaking, a lot of good IGLs in America as well. I love how you are playing more women now in Saint T Peace. Definitely like your team is like, I would say like scary to play against because you have like world caliber players, world caliber strats. I'm super happy you guys are here representing yeah. the night with us. I think Masters Madrid is going to be absolute cinema. More like absolute defeat. <laughs> Director's cut. Celebrity coming through. <laughs> For a second. You look pretty cool. Really? Yeah, yeah I look some like superstar, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys tell me uh, about the Pacific playstyle? style? It's like a game that we play with like games. There's a lot of I think sometimes we can play like five duelists, three duelists, maybe even no duelists. It doesn't matter, you know, because we always press W. Are you guys going to take down America's so in Madrid? Hmm, maybe. I mean, they kind of beat us before, so maybe some revenge, you know? The EMA regions, I would say our strongest part is the balance between uh, macro and aim. <laughs> oh, we actually are the future of EMA. It's Fnatic and Navi, we're both top two in EU. We both knocked them out. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Congrats to making it there. Thank you, man. You're expecting Boaster, right? Spanish org, Spanish crowd and everything. I feel like it was destined that Heretics were at Madrid's. Here we go. Ready and aim. People, they think it was a fluke. So we're gonna show them that it's not. It's time for the new generation to take over. Hey, you got this, bro. One of us will make it to the finals, mate, I promise you. Uh,今天特别开心能够跟方帕斯他们一起来到这里跟他们拍摄，然后今天也能跟Life在一起，然后在马德里又相见了嘛。<laughs> In your opinion, what makes VCT China so competitive? I think it's because I don't know how to do it. I know the king, follow his lead, repeat that to me. I know they lurking and serving and serving, but I can't work. I'm trying to get a break. Or the team, you want to win, but you can't win. Then, more and more, 
不被更多更多的爆发力，还有那些不被他们所预测到的那些东西。我觉得 V C C C N 大家的这个环境都挺好，不仅是你跟我，是整个环境其实也更像一个家庭 family 那种感觉，对兄弟。Fala, manito. Quanto tempo, hein? Um aninho. Um aninho. Demorou. Demorou, é. Tô atrasado, né? Demorou um ano pra eu ganhar. Aí você deixou ganhar também. Muito obrigado. Não, jamais. Jamais. Valeu, valeu, valeu. E agora, né? É muito feliz que estamos aqui. Internacional juntos. Internacional juntos. Muito tempo, cara. Tentar fazer a final, né? De novo. Igual a América. É isso. Final América contra América. Exato. Fotinha? Fotinha. Fotinha. Vamos lá. For Carmen Cara, most of these players were picked up from Tier 2, were new prospects heading into this year. They've done something incredible by beating the best in EMEA, coming out as champions from that region. But now it's a new pressure, it's new opponents, it's new styles on a big stage. And FPX, if they are one thing, they are a team that can upset, that can yes. surprise, they can push you off guard. And every single team, because of the opponents that they're going to be facing, are so hungry to be the yes. winners of this tournament. You were saying it, Mimi. Anybody can win this tournament. The favorites are very, you know, in the air. Anybody uh, can take this game. And I think the FPX is hungry, is devoted to change our minds, to just not thinking that China is just EDG. Yeah, we've seen a lot of rookies this year, you know. It seems yeah. like the rise of all the rookies, but it's been such a long time since N was on this stage. And just to remind you, the two tournaments that N made globally, he won one of them and he reached the final to the other one. So he's got a lot to prove coming into this as well. I mean, technically the next one he's going to get grouped or, or what is he? He's not making it to playoffs. He's going down one. Uh, no, 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 I'm not about that life. I'm not about that life. For FPX, it's been a while since they've been on an international yes. stage. This team has represented at previous events, but they didn't make it to champions. The big event at the end of last year, they made some changes, picked up stars into this year, and I think are looking better than they used to, but still have that same identity, right? They play weird comps, and Icebox is no different. They're playing a Jet Reina Gecko composition. Well, at least we expect so. Yeah. Did you imagine they changes? Could, they could definitely change. It. They've had time to do so. I mean, we've seen that already, right? Teams are starting to adopt uh, the Navi way of having multiple comms uh, on yeah. one map. I don't think they will change anything coming into this, uh, but Mimi, it will very much disrupt uh, their preparation if they did. It absolutely will, but this event had very low turnaround time for, yes, for the teams that exactly. went deep, especially for a team like KC, who played so many matches. They had to go through the they group stage, the through the, the play-ins, <laughs> through the playoffs. Like, there really hasn't been a huge amount of time yeah. to turn around new ideas, which is why I, again, think that today, 
in a match like this, it's really going to come down to, to yeah. adaptation, to the leaders in the servers, and not necessarily the coaches in the prep ahead of I time. Think, I think it's going to be all about exploiting the weaknesses, and I can see a lot of them in the FBX comp. Uh, the, the way that you have to play it, the way that you uh, have to default, having, as I said, someone always in the middle. We do not see many teams playing 2-1-2 uh, on a map. This is not New York, by the way. But, yeah, but and as we can see from the agents of light here, what do you guys make of this? I mean, it's, it's what we expected, right? Yeah. I, I think looking at Carmen Core starting on defense. Their biggest strength with this composition is their retakes. They have Sage Wall and Wingman to get on that spike, and they have good flash utility with that Dizzy to fight forward. FPX, I think, need to be taking space past the spike site if they're planting on B or holding forward on A and kind of having a, a, a scaling defense where they start forward and move back to not yeah. fall victim to these retakes. And I think it's so important what you're mentioning with the retakes because that is what has made the difference uh, out of for most of the teams, especially in EMEA. KC was the best. The protocols were the cleanest probably out of the entire world, the way that they were playing off yes. of pairs and knew exactly what ut utility to invest. And again, exploiting the weaknesses even with the retakes. Out of this entire tournament, they have the highest success after the spike has been planted. You have to watch this jet head to head. Autumn and yes. Martin, both of them prospects at their first international event on the star roll for Icebox. Oh, I can't wait to see it. But that is enough from us. I know there's been uh, two gentlemen waiting in the flanks, waiting a very, very long time to cast Carl Michael. Give a warm welcome to Bren and Saito. Thank you very much, Jitsu. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to let loose an Ale Le Bleu at some point, maybe, potentially. We'll see. Bias casters online, mate. I mean, I don't know. We'll get into it. It's Madrid here at the Swiss stage, day one, to get us started. Carmen Core versus FPX. You know, you've got potentially quite a one sided matchup here on paper, but a real chance to potentially show some of that parity that might be there at these international events. I mean, Magnum has spoken in press interviews as well, talking about how, you know, they're ex familiar, I think, with the way that FPX are going to be playing, but they're not going to be coming into this underestimating a team like FPX. No, certainly not. Magnum quoted in the press conference saying, it's Valorant, anyone can lose. Here we go then, into the pistol round, and Carmen Core had three players up towards A. Anticipating this space control, perhaps, but FPX are not committed with it. Not quite flash to clear with the Dizzy, all combined up. That's going to be the dash active now for Martin. Using that in the response of it, but there's no go button press here for FPX. Keen to just wait this one out on the opposite side of the map. Autumn went poking around, and he managed to catch Tomasi. Good opening here. I mean, it does open up the B side entirely. A repeat from Live. He's got the heal online, but Martin returns with the kill. Nice trade. Lysor didn't buy the orb in this round, so having to use the wall in order to escape there, that means there's going to be no wall placed down over towards B. So Carmen Core are going to have opportunities to try to deny this plant, though they are players down. That's true with the paranoia here, FPX. One of the sidelines blocked off. Now look at this, the Omen Smokes are lovely for them to take more aggressive positions on site. Kamako all up towards Kitchen, doubled up here, but just picking and choosing it. Battles at the right time. They have no idea. They have no idea where they're being shot from. Through the greats here, one player left standing is Lisa. We'll see what they can do. Snake bites, at least one connection, but the wall's up in their face. They've got to really just get a move on as well. Wrapping all the way around here. Shin sticking to the fuse here for the pistol round. It's all calm and caught. And that's the power of that retake. It's what the desk were talking about. Carmen Core look so good in those kind of situations. But really, the retake wasn't even where the danger was averted for FBX. It was the fact that Magnum was able to pick off two from this angle. I mean, yeah, looking all over the place. Look Ultimate at I mean, is completely lost. On us with them. And this is where you might start to see the cracks in FBX because they've talked about the fact that the language barrier has been an issue for them, a really big one in the past. Berlin said in the press conference he's having to repeat the communications twice a lot of the time in English and in Chinese so that everybody on the team is on the same page. That's going to introduce delays, and it was an unusual position anyway for Magnum to be taking that fight. The pistol round secured, deep home and smoke. Magnum has to body check a lot of this space, really. There was some danger there, but clears out towards mid, knowing that nobody's lurking. And those lurks are going to be a pretty important part of how FBX creates threats on the attack side. Smokes from Lysor and Berlin need to be dealt with. And sometimes that's going to require face checking, and when there's opponents hiding inside smokes, that's a great way for teams to get upset wins. Yeah, here we go. Offloading the util here with a dizzy. Player's not been pushed off from the backwards positions, though. Out towards the back and aside, it's a nasty and messy spray. 
No kills collected there, but only just for life here with the heal online. But now reinforcements are here, finally arriving. Multitudes of targets to pick from, but really Carmen Court coming up green in the kill feed. Blue, surely. I mean, well, okay. Some kind of teal. It's but... a teal. You could, you could make <laughs> the argument. <laughs> yeah. Easy cleanup, despite it looking a little labored there from the right early, early on. And now FPX, first round where they can do some serious damage after the pistol. Five Vandals facing off against KC, who have three Bulldogs online as well. Turret out. Clear weaponry advantage for FPX, especially down these longer angles, so they might want to take over towards B. And defaulting the Viper Wall, A, at the start of this round. Not quite the same as they did on the pistol, because this time we've got that Viper Orb coming down mid too. Does have that threat of potentially working their way through into mid. Call lovely. Would love to set their sights onto a bonus round conversion. As you said, longer fights to be taken with the rifles of FPX, and they're cautious just at the beginning initially here. They don't want to run into things. Omen Smoke now propped up, will divide up the site and allow them to start to take a bit more of that space once they clear through the appropriate positions. But we're almost down to a minute on the clock. And they haven't created too many threats oh. in mid either. Almost wow. betrayed there by the ponytail, but Shin gets away with it. And Berlin, with nobody there to try to support, the IGL gets picked off with no advantage, no possibility of a trade, no information even as to where Shin and Martin could have repositioned to. As FBX come back in here, they're going to have to use these flashes, the Dizzy, just to try to figure out where those players on defensive A would have gone. And it orchestrates kind of exactly where these FBX players are going. Now it really does feel like it's going to be landing into an A hit. Shin. It's a great timing saved. on the wall. Yeah, I mean, for the precisely right moment. In the right. Flash over the top. It's going to be going straight through the gap at the top there. Good connection. Martin willing to take the fight. The transfer damage done, but no kill. In fact, that's all life here. Just leading the charge for the rest of his team. Is there only going to be clean up onto Shin eventually? But Very time, weak. 12 seconds, and yeah, life is weak. Pops the ult off. Might be able to get something going with this one. At least he's one more kill for it. Nobody watching. Back there up, it good is. Auto. Back up. Needs to get the plan down. Four seconds. Taps. Taps. Force it into the one you want. It's the only win condition for life. And time is born and played. Frantic in the minute. In the minute moments. I mean, minutia making the difference there. That's a wild one for FBX to not convert, honestly. The spray from Martin was really labored, a little similar to Narate when we saw him with the Bulldog in round two. Ten seconds left. But how Magnum gets past there without Life being able to get the kill. Life whiffing on the spray means that Autumn goes down. And Life unable to convert in the 1v1 as well. He decided to go for that uh, the, the duel instead of just sticking the plant. That's a tragedy for FPX early on. Back to me. Knocks the economy down a peg or two, so gonna be working with some weaker weaponry. Life's gonna be after making the most, I think, of this Guardian purchase. It looks fairly explosive here over towards B. Aeon having that ult online, it would be a really large investment early on before you've managed to create a pick for yourself. Yeah. Smoke's finally back online now to cut off sections onto the site. Snake Mites and Molly, just in case they want to press the advantage and push the back of the site. But it's just being held for control here. Carmen Core, happy to play this retake. A lot of focus being put on that angle where Magnum managed to pick up two on the pistol. A weak spot, perhaps. We'll see now. There's Wingman. That's going to be spotting out a player or two. Berlin. Let's get the initial kill, but not enough to get the follow-up here. But down below the bridge, where's the expectation of it? Narrate, he was dropping down, but not enough bullets in the clip to really finish him off. 3v3 shots, life regaining the advantage potentially there. It's traded back and forth. It's Narrate versus Ayang. Narrate comes up with the goods. Rifle in his hands to get the job done. And plenty of time left on the clock too. That one had danger in it. It absolutely did. But Kamen Kors still managed to forge their way up to four. FPX deciding not to invest Aeyang's ultimate into that round, where perhaps you know, it could have made the difference. It did end up being fairly close. Frankly, if Autumn even gets that kill, the round is looking really dodgy. I gotta say, while Kamen Kors are up 4-0 here, this is not the same level of clinical play that we saw from them 
in the EMEA when they were making that run. There's a lot of conversation about because we've seen so many unexpected teams make it to Masters Madrid with so many rookie players as well ascending to this premier level of the game. Are people going to adapt to the stage quickly? If you have some nerves, how do you play through it? It feels like it's a little touch and go at the moment for Carmen Core, but enough to be able to get them over the line in these rounds. And similar nerves on the other side for FBX. You've got to remember, FBX are a team, this is their third time getting to a global event. They've only ever been able to take one map at a global event before, and that was against the old Carmine Core when they played first time at Lockin. It was a 2-1 victory in favor of Carmine Core, and that was that was the old, you know, Melons lineup. That wasn't the <laughs> that wasn't the Madrid clean, clinical calming core yeah. that we've come to expect after their running kickoff. It's well-honed squad and, you know, to just touch on that rookie point as well, you know, maybe that an experience rearing its head for some of the players. Uh, Carmen core looking like one of the youngest rosters I think we've got coming into Madrid. They are, yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe that does showcase. Of course, some of them do have that international experience. They do, and, you know, you see Magnum up there towards the top, managed to find that hole in the pistol round and has been very consistent so far on the defense side for his team. So we get to see another rifle round here, starting to get up towards some big ultimates too. Narate and Magnum's ults in particular are going to be excellent on the retake as Narate takes first contact and wants to hunt for more. He's not scared, is he? No, Shin was holding up towards the belt, so he had angles covered. Martin's crosshair placement looked like it might have been off for just a moment as Aeyang's head poking below, but I don't believe they caught any whiff of the jet stuck in that corner. I say stuck, hiding. Hiding. He's got the starting dash, of a trap. To get out. Yeah, it's a lovely position to play in. FPX. Didn't quite like what they were seeing, just from cutting the noise there. They show a bit of that presence just initially. Now making their way over towards B. Contact reclear. Is that what's going to be called here? Certainly looks like it. The same kind of B end with that double omen smoke setup that we've seen here. from FPX in a few rounds so far. Util combined together, unfortunate for life there. He will fall just through the smoke as it was propped up. Bloomed and blossomed, but FPX keen to still play this one. Maybe a bit more aggressively as well. Look at the position of some of these players. Berlin taking a peek out towards Kitchen. Expected though, now you see it. Thrash exchanged. Dropping down onto either side. Detainment potentially there. Looks like it, yeah, Berlin. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. And now positioning, being swarmed and approached from every possible angle. I saw, realizing now that Really, has to give it up. It wasn't that mid position. He was the insurance policy, but now has to save that rifle. Gutting as Carmen Core get up to five. Absolutely putting away FBX. I, this is looking like they've got a very good idea of how they want to deal with this classic exec that we're seeing from FBX. Nobody is getting caught on sight. Tomaji is just getting a kill by spamming a common angle where he's expecting them to be pushing up. Yeah. Defending that over push into Snowman and making sure that they have the pieces together to be able to get back in onto site. FPX are finding it difficult here to force the fights. One of the big powers of their uh, composition is the ability to combo flashes together. And they're not really finding an opportunity to do that because Kamikor are playing so much further back. Initial expenditure of Util, but they are playing really far back. I mean, that's just the retake protocols. Get out of my way. Desk was mentioning it. It's super, super well drilled for Kamikor. Yeah, the bread and butter, really, of you know what was getting them so many of the wins because they were looking so well honed. And there's always a little bit of danger when you allow your opponents to plant against you so often that you wouldn't be able to pull it off. You know, most teams, even the great ones, are only converting something like, you know, a third of their retakes. But these teams at this event are looking to try to change that. So this makes it feel like it's something similar over towards B, but it's not a full commitment. No, in fact, they haven't used both the smokes. I mean, Berlin hasn't locked off the angle, so they're getting information the entire time. Magnum has just been egoing the angle on B. And Martin, ready, waiting, not spotted in this position before. Be able to receive this. Now, Dizzy wasn't collected over towards B to clear it, so they don't even have that util to clear this angle. Up top, though, yeah, crosshair pace. You've got to take a gamble if you play in that spot. It could come from two different directions, and so... Gambling incorrectly there, life is the one to capitalize. Magnum, though, still with ultimate. How does FPX deal with that? Put down with a wingman, clears out a bit off the side. Now the plan online, but here's the lockdown. Oh, hey, I'm denied ball. from even going for that. They can't go for the plan. Time, time. They have to fight this one. FPX has to make a call to do so, but now, detainment. It's going to be happening anytime soon. This is a round basically done and dusted. 
Online there with a res. Magnum back into the fight, three versus three, but with time like this, I mean, there's just no chance. You have to kill everybody. It's not there for FPX. And a complete, complete tactical outplay there by KC. They're thinking ahead to, in terms of the ultimates that they have available, it's very clear that that lockdown is going to get used. And FBX didn't come up with a game plan quickly enough to try to challenge it before it went down, didn't have a game plan to try to increase the tempo, and I think we're just expecting to get the plant for free. They're thinking, all right, KC, they've been playing retake this entire time. They're just going to use lockdown. We're going to be able to play the plant. And Aeon could not get that spike Let's down. Go, boys. Yeah. I love to see this. The overall game plan of Carmen Court just fundamentally is fantastic as well. They've been playing super far back on B, almost conditioning that they've got nobody playing towards B main or towards yellow whatsoever. And then they're playing these one and done angles towards A. I mean, yes, Martin ended up falling, but uh, they've just been doing such a fantastic job. And like you said, you know, too delayed in terms of just thinking about the game plans. Can't call one step ahead. This is also the second timeout for FPX, called already. So if we, you know, framing this in the context of FPX trying to get this revenge matchup against a Kami Core that's retooled so heavily, looking for a potential good beginning to Madrid, this is a disaster. They had their chances early on in some of these rounds, but the later that this is going, the less and less chance it looks like they're getting as Kami Core polish things up a little and get comfortable, get into the groove. Down 0-6 without any timeouts remaining. If they don't end up winning this rifle round that we're about to watch, it's a disaster zone. That could be dire. I mean, they are quite literally running their heads into a brick blue wall right now. <laughs> they cannot find a way through. Now, are they going to get conditioned? You can see elements of it from Carmen Core again. Like I was saying before, they weren't playing anybody up close towards B. They've got Martin with an op now. He's playing in this spot. Kamiko, I think, are hoping now that FPX make the decision to start contacting into B. Dizzy broken. Martin can now play onto the angle. It's watched for the shot. Missed and go to wide. But they haven't heard the dash. They know that Martin has not left that in a hurry. There they hear the shot from the operator, and Martin's going to bait that out, make it feel like he's still there, and try to rotate to anticipate this attack side rotate that Berlin is calling. Yeah, and he is. He's already called it for the rotation. The troops on the move. And guess what, Martin? Again, Here. one step ahead. Like you said, still has the dash in his back pocket. Didn't end up using it to escape. A lot of flashes that he has to dodge here, though. Leah, Dizzy, both broken. Narate with a pick. pick. I mean, Narate just back towards Rafters there. Dizzy also returning as well, getting the acknowledgement that his play is there. Now there's 45 seconds left. Could pivot into a different direction if you want to, but FPX looking a bit indecisive, just a pause in the play. Now the paranoia sent flying here, but again, no connections. Martin towards the back, trying to go wide here with a Dizzy. Narate is on one, man. He's on one. Almost there for the ace, but four kills eventually shut down in the end, but seven to zero. The scoreline we're looking like, the round differential is immense right now, and you're truly seeing it. I mean, we said on paper it was going to look like one of our more one-sided matchups, but Carmen Court, in almost just every element of the game right now, they're ahead of it. And they're destroying them. I <laughs> think Kakuga said on the desk, trying to break the Leah and the Dizzy in one go, narrates like, yeah, bet. <laughs> Just rinses them both before FBX can use them to get into the site, and then swings around for four kills afterwards. FBX are getting pasted. And I, th I think it's a really interesting idea, right? This is one of our most one-sided matchups you could possibly see at the tournament oh. on paper. But what does the parity look like? Everybody was saying, you know, anyone can win Madrid. There are chances for even these teams to be able to make upsets. Even Magnum himself, you know, coming into this. They're not going to make a mistake with prior teams, you know. Maybe they turn up to these international tournaments, they expect to have a, a freebie, an opening match that just is so one-sided but i'm of course still showing him respect absolutely yeah magnum said quote if i had to rate fbx in terms of macro i think they have a lot of gaps and then he said but it's valorant anyone that can lose martin under pressure though yeah dizzy in his face though it does fade away he's just absolutely caught a timing still autumn will shut down a counterpart damage number no kill collected Smokes at some point surely going to be fading. How are they going to get this spike down? They really don't have any options or tools, but there we go. That's a huge one. Yep, a gap available with that up drop down. Autumn picks it up. Acquiring that upgrade. Now we can really just see if he can 
Hunt for any more sort of kills. Now, this is a player advantage for FPX. Question is now, how do Carmen Court approach it? Dizzy, down to the back along with the molly. Players all over the place. Thrash to lead the charge. Entertainment there. Shin, round to the side, but doesn't expect Berlin. And there it is. Okay, around on the board for FPX. Thrifty win. And that one basically set up by Autumn getting into a nice spot. Martin has been caught out in a number of these more aggressive positions. And this is the opening. He had a chance trying to take the timing. But then Autumn also finding this pick onto Tamashi over in Snowman. That sets up the player advantage. And FBX are finally able to capitalize nice. and bring around to themselves. Can they work this into a little bit of momentum and make it less of a one-sided matchup? They would love to. Now, back into the action, you're seeing it. Line in the sand drawn in terms of the skirmish. Berlin. Berlin has the he's operator. The operator, yeah. I mean, he's TP close. Yeah, of course your IGL Omen has the off. <laughs> Angel emote. Uh. Now an attempt for them to try and get themselves into the side wall. Definitely impeding them. Ash to the top here. Dizzy in their faces. Everybody able to see really anything at all. But FPX granted the site now. So that's online for them. A four position here, playing inside the pit. This is really going to test Kamiko once more, especially with Autumn ripping off heads. Here. Towards the back of the side, just really impossible to clear this through. And here it is, momentum on the side of FPX. This is basically a done deal into the round. Look at it, second one on the board. Now maybe you can start to keep this going. That's huge. Didn't even have to use all of the ultimates at their disposal. Still have the Thrash available for them in the next. And FBX using the pit to be able to establish much more aggressive post plant positions. Put pressure on KC before they can get into retake spots. Look, the raid's just flooding out heaven there, thinking, yeah, they're going to give us this space for free. That's what they've done every other time. And FBX have brought the battle to them. Amazingly enough, those two rounds have actually been enough to knock down the economy of Carmichael. So we're not seeing a full buy here. I think the money would be flourishing, but. Instead, okay. At least Martin has a rifle. Here. Here. Really quite aggressive into mid. Very aggressive. But Martin hasn't been able to do too much from these extremely aggressive positions. He's the danger in the round. The rest of KC mostly playing for a little bit of plant pressure and then the retake. Martin's been the dice that they roll to see whether he can find value. And this time, just missing the timing of FPX, who've all gone into B. Clear and Dizzy all comboed up. Smokes to get himself into the deeper angle. Autumn is here this time. Not using that second smoke to block off this one. Autumn, he's got the operator. Aiming to lock this one down. Two potential positions. Shin, he's taking out Berlin. Now Berlin's been playing in that angle all the time, honestly. Most of the time. Yeah, and it's a spot where Autumn can't actually hold for Berlin to get into position. It's a bit of a freebie there, actually. Kamiko giving it. That's decent damage there, actually. Diligence being shown with the util to clear through most of this. Uh, Casey have a wall to work with, but there's a thrash on the other side. Martin, what a peak! What a return! Ayang goes straight there, and here it is with a spray down of life. War can't save you from that one. Great awareness from life. Adapting to what Kamen Kor have been doing, making sure that he's in a position where he's still going to be able to get picks over the top of the wall. FBX holding on in these post plant situations. <laughs> I mean, Ayang is like lining up a shot with Martin and Tomaji's right behind. FBX going from 0-7 to winning three rounds in a row with the potential to make this quite a competitive half. Yeah, you wouldn't think it. You would not think it if you were only tuning in for the beginning, but they have the chance. Slow warp. Used here, Shin feeling the danger now, the heat turns up, that isn't, okay, slow up, don't think it was intended for that one, Molly's being used, snake bite, here close, and there it is actually, that pouncing into that wrong angle, Martin can't evacuate, can he stand his ground, can he hold it down, the answer is no. And that's probably going to incentivize Nare to try to make a play here, instead of just playing for the player down retake, we get to see now, do they trust the system, do they try to go for the hero play? Man down here, snake by four, it's life. Tucking behind the box, out into the open though, has to just spank on the rest of his teammates. Lovely movement from Ayang, Magnum. Nasty stuff, oh my! Almost making a go of it. 
so close. And Berlin, the player Last with the open hand, the goes for the rifle to win the 1v1 at the end and keep this momentum going for FPX. KC making a good job of it, despite the fact that they were down players. But this opening play as Shin swings to try to relieve pressure from Martin. Martin can't quite get enough kills to help. Final round of the half here, and KC are going to be knocked down to four Bulldogs. There is a great chance that FBX get up to five and rewrite this terrible beginning they had to Icebox. That's just insanity. The pick got popped down over towards B. No immediate pressure. So Tamaji might think that the rest of FPX are looking to work down mid or over towards A. Martin once again alone on A. Tucking himself into these aggressive, unexpected positions. But generally, FPX have been able to either dodge or deal with it. It's slow and somewhat ponderous, though, for FPX in the first 40 seconds of this round. And now they're making a commitment to deal with some of Magnum's utility in mid and create threats and pressure around a leg. Oh, it's betrayal. And there it is, sets up Autumn for an easy one. No possibility of that being rezzed. It's now being offloaded, dash towards of Autumn, top of the box, just spotting. Head of Shin, unable to rip that one off, but Berlin's caught into the mid-flank. And now the ult online, Magnum, has that retake ultimate that caused so much pressure for FBX previously. Could be opting to use this as a really forward backside position. FBX are trying to fight this one. Then they realize, at least now that the lockdown is down, but do they have any util to try and fight this one and clear it? Out and through, they don't need util, man! They got guns and weaponry still locked down. Didn't get broken. 1v2. He's out of dodge here from FPX, so the positioning is going to be known and noted in the rate. How do you hit that into the 1v1? Wingman, exactly the partner in crime that you'd want, at least taps out of position, trying to force life out into the open, but it's a guessing game for the rate entirely. Doesn't know where he is in life, playing time immaculately. It's 7 to 5. And how the bloody hell did FPX salvage that? What a ridiculous comeback! We were all ready to talk about how it was playing out as expected on paper, and then FBX fire back with five in a row. One enemy remaining. And a lot to do with the rifling coming online. I feel like Aeyang has just woken up. Go on, go on, look at me, bro. Let's go. They're fired up. They're feeling it. Life on his feet. They certainly are. Let's send it down to the analyst desk to bring it down for the half. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, what a great half that was. A nice comeback from FPX, but Kakuka, yep. it all started with a great chain of rounds coming from Casey. Yeah, exactly. And it was a perfect example of what we were discussing, right? Those retakes coming in, the protocols being completely sharp up, uh, coming in from Casey. I think that round five is a perfect example of it when we would see the exchange of the ultimates from Gecko, and they know exactly where to put the pressure and how to address everything that is going on in the map by the positions that they expect the other players to be in. The follow-up from each of the players, it's clean. But but then, after those seven rounds, something changes in FBX, maybe. And for FBX, I think the adaptation was really good. In these post plants, once they got that spike down, once they got that space, they were using that second dizzy refresh to fight forward and get space in these late rounds and really punish yeah. KC while they were still setting up, getting their util in hand. That's the X factor of this team. They will sometimes pull out these hyper-aggressive rounds where they stop you from setting up the way you want to play. It was really good yeah. on that comeback. I think it was a little bit of, of both, right? We have a KC that made this getting too comfortable because everything is working and an FPX that you know it starts making a little bit of mistakes we see um, you know the flashes being a little bit separated one from another but then when they realize that they just have to disrupt that and just keep pushing a little bit more that changes now coming into their defense as I said it's very complicated to defend this map without a sentinel the aggression has to be there FPX is very known for that and they have to keep it up if they want to keep that score up. it absolutely does but if KC wants to close this map out they have the fans to do so in this arena right now there's there's not a huge amount of fans out on day one, but every single KC fan feels like 10 of them. Yeah, shout out to the Gentlemates fan as well in the Gentlemates jersey, uh, but this blue war, it is looking so, so strong, but I'm going to send this back to the casters and see if KC can close this one out. We'll see if they can close it out, but listen, FPX, kind of momentum behind them as well. All it takes is a pistol round. You've got an even match, at least an even map. And uh, this is a team, and I mean, a reminder, I think this is an FBX squad that's got a bit of a chip on their shoulders from the previous international appearances. They want to turn up to this event, and they want to really prove as well that teams should be paying attention to them. They want to teach teams how it's done. They've literally said that themselves. 
Uh, for Carmen yeah. Court, left reeling a little bit, I think, as well, off that string of rounds, but we'll see. It's a new half now, getting started with a pistol. And it looks like there might be a clash of B main to begin this one very quickly. It's an unusual spot to fight over. Not too many teams trying to fight this area aggressively. But FPX have got a pistol round strat what? that involves them pushing down mid off the back of this pressure. Yeah. The Viper Wars. They've actually abandoned so it chaos. very early, though, Bren. I mean, it is he. Surely you collect the kills. Berlin gets three. That's wild. Get the hell out of here. Dealing with the util single-handedly. I mean, a man was basically alone. And now, how do you clear this one out? The sword to the side, lovely peek, off with the dizzy. That is a slam dunk finish. <laughs> I don't want to hear any more about the blue wall. Tell me about the Berlin wall. That's, <laughs> that's, that's ridiculous. I mean, he just, how, have, how has he managed to pick up three there? <laughs> that protocol of jumping through the one way, I think it is a really nice idea. First player jumps through, drags the crosshair is the game plan. Perhaps doesn't quite drag it far enough in that situation because they're swinging almost exactly into Berlin's crosshair. It just worked so well. Bottom of the scoreboard and comes out like that on the pistol. That's what you're saying, Brennan. It only takes that one round. They are being swapped in this position. Like someone doesn't know which way to look. Teammate have us in the back. Okay, traded. Three versus three equalized here. Dash forward to the peak, Ayang. They want to get aggressive and defend these weapons, I think. But Kamikor aren't even going for them. No, not quite. Wall up onto the high ground. Really just props up Tomasi for an easy peek. Spike planted. Easy kill for AI. Autumn there. Can't quite land the shots over to Marshall, but finally a bit of damage done to the body. 100 left. One player left standing. It's Martin. He's sort of plant down, but this is a really difficult situation to try and win. And there it is. Spam damage and the flank attempt there. Very surprised that Carmen Corp played that round so quickly after they got themselves into a 3v3. If they'd slowed things down, I believe there were two Bulldogs lying around for them to be able to try and pick up and use. But they got roped into the pace of that. And then all of the danger just kind of trickled away. See, Ayang deals with that boost play. It's quite a nice idea from Carmen Corp, but something we've seen a lot from these Sage teams. And you wouldn't have believed it if you only watched the first seven rounds. But seven in a row, straight back for FBX, means the game is tied here on Icebox. Nice oh, set up now onto the bonus round. <laughs> Two players survived in a prior round here for FBX, so there's not too much danger, but guess what? The Avengers are completely here. I mean, listen, the amount of players they've got trying to play that four position belt, not really accounted for. It's a high low setup. They are really mopping up the rest of these players. An attempt by life, repositions, but just out into the open. It's all being watched for. <laughs> Cheeky idea, I do respect it. I love the idea. But FPX take a gamble, shove four players in, and KC, that discipline that we were seeing from them all throughout EMEA, I think that's the first round where you really see it exemplified here in Icebox. All down to one. Looks almost impossible. Yeah, so it's just going to be looking to do that. Surely, damage. surely here the streaks are broken. We don't see another seven in a row for KC, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not even possible. It's really not. I mean, at that point. You win the map 14-7? Yeah, dusted. Maybe we get them to skirt the rules. We'll do first to 16. <laughs> <laughs> FPX, though, really have shown that they're not willing to just roll over in these kind of games, especially when they're pushed. I mean, they certainly come into this one as the underdogs, but I had a chance to talk to Berlin before, you know, these games kicked off. And I asked him, how much better do you think this version of FPX is compared to last year's? You know, if you were following this team in 2023, okay, they looked all right. They were making it to some of the international events. They've Since then, they've added Life, who's up towards the top of the scoreboard for them here. He's been a big player for them. And Berlin said, Two and a half times better. It's very precise. I don't yeah. know where he quite got that from, but <laughs> he's he's a lot more confident this year than he was in the last, when they were only able to get one map at two global appearances. They've run the numbers. Two and a half times, maybe enough to try and take it against them. That's a cheeky play. Cool idea. All to boost themselves up. Berlin, no. Deals with the trespasser in through mid. And that's, well, there is the follow-up. Ayang. Watching it for any sort of passerby. Only three players now left standing for Carmen Court. Looks like a read to me that they were expecting Berlin to be playing B. 
you know, both of those controller players for FPX fighting over B. They baited out Lysor there, who swung off the back of a paranoia that was extremely optimistic. They are so damn aggressive, though. Willing to take the risks, aren't they? I mean, yeah. Aeyang has just walked up all the way behind. And all of this in a player advantage situation where you don't need to force fights like this. It's a round winning or losing play, probably, that Aeyang and Life have gone for. Carmen Core are well and truly trapped here. Though I don't believe they know it yet. No indicator. Here. Contacting together. Opened at the gunplay, carried them through around like this one. Looking behind, never know. Not to the side, not expecting a player out towards Yelas Berlin. Still not cleaned up. Spike though. Planted. Two players though for them. Flash over the top, Martin. How's he doing this? No man? way. No way to come and core find that. That's outrageous. FPX had them cornered, caged up, no exits. Utility being used from the back as well. And Martin ducks, bobs, weaves, and picks up three. You are joking. How have they done that? I mean, the first pick, lovely. But then this kill before getting the dizzy. And then a no. jump push in the nice. Stand up, stand up now. Ooh. <laughs> All right, a bit of fire with these Carmen Core players in their first time on the Big Masters stage. Getting heated. Stacked though from the FPX players here. Ball has made a refight. What a shot. Still aggression showcased here by Martin. His teammates are going to be there with him. Got his back live. Live? What? <laughs> you see, KC have no idea that that was going to happen. Even a possibility. Yeah. Just no idea at all. They didn't even think of that as a timing that FBX could have chosen for some aggression. You can see how the unexpected nature of how FBX plays can catch teams off guard. But thus far, Martin in the last round and this has managed to bail his team out. Berlin, knives Ooh. out. No gun. Watching for the mid aggression. And Aeyang, they should have some idea, was over towards A earlier on. That dizzy was used. His shooting's been fairly good. But the most likely outcome here is that he just goes down and gets a thrash online for the next. This game has been so streaky. There's only 30 seconds left. <laughs> 30 seconds left. I don't see how he's able to convert. And KC are going to be able to respond with three in a row after FBX got seven to tie it up. Now, <laughs> would you refer to this one as a back and forth game, Bren? Because technically, it's gone back, and then it went <laughs> forth, <laughs> and now it's going back again. Yeah, but, yeah. By the by, the technical definition. Yeah, but it really has not been competitive in the like uh, round to round basis. No, no. Very streaky. Very, very streaky. Autumn's going to get an op online and try to peek under two by the look of things. Would anticipate him just getting smoked off by Tamashi very early on, but we'll see. Yeah, he gets an early the pick. pick. Wow, okay. Tomazi, Thrash. Thrash. Used to see if they can clear and cleave their way in through B main. Aang is open to the window here. Look, timing could be brutal. Look, timing could be brutal. Spots the head, spots the head. Magnum is racing ahead, man. Doesn't want anything to do with this. Look at him. Ducking straight into the floor, maybe anticipating a re-peak, but no, he's backing it away. In the meantime... Yeah, speaking about re-peaks, Berlin in a player advantage situation again, FPX, deciding to try to make the play to win the round. Unnecessary, for sure. And Berlin does get punished for it. on life of Shin, he's going to play for this one. Portion of the wall broken, but that's <laughs> all good. Yeah, thankfully. All good. Thankfully, Alton wasn't watching that again. That was only 45 seconds left. Walking their way over towards A. Start to get a move on, though. What util do they have to try and clear close? They are, I think, quite scared of the prospect that life could be just in a one and done. Especially when he's playing Rainer. Does he see the hair just on the belt there? Looks unlikely. Orb. In his face. 30 seconds left. Players approaching rapidly on the position. It's a double face as the orb goes down. Only 20 seconds left here. No real utility as far as I can see for FPX to deny this one. Magnum is Magnum. really far behind and has missed the timing. Yeah, he has, but he's going to be making a call at least for his team here. Over to Bison time. Really wide face by Nare. Claiming it, he's feeling it, man. It's yeah. going around for him, and this time, Kamikor are not messing around. 
This is another situation where KC lost players early on in the round. They weren't expecting the op to be on that sight line. It is entirely possible for the Viper to throw that mid line up without exposing any part of their body. But Autumn caught Tomashi at the beginning of the round. And Berlin ended up making a mistake when they were up and it just opened the door for Narei to take over. Narei for Kami Court. One of the North American imports over to EMEA has been lighting the world up. He's been looking unbelievably good but certainly one of those players that we don't know quite how they're going to perform when it gets to the Masters stage. Are the nerves going to be there? And Berlin goes walkabouts again Berlin. in this round. They just they expect it. It's happened so many times now. They were doubled up. I mean, basically a high-low setup. One player crouched in front of the other. Yeah. Just waiting for the aggression. Yeah, and it's very, very similar to what Berlin did in the previous round to lose them that player advantage situation. FBX have got to be careful. They've clearly got what it takes to be able to bring the game to Carmine Corp. But this has given me flashbacks of the finals they played in VCT, where they arguably should have beaten EDG, and they let so many of those advantages slip through their fingers. Here comes Aeon with the play again. He's got a flash out in his hand, still gets one kill. Maybe setting up Autumn for a bit of success, but no, everybody cleaned up. Carmine Corp. Live and kicking with three of their players. Just going to try and hunt out where is life. Fields up now, not letting anything slip. Thrash there, connects, detained. Humiliation time on the grand stage. As Kamikor up to 12. For our first knife kill of Masters Madrid. Do they really count when you've got the Thrash Attain on them? I think it, I, it is I think the disrespect. Yeah, I think they shouldn't personally. <laughs> Don't think we should be recording those in the stats, but... Yeah, this is very well dealt with by KC. You can still see some moments where they're not quite anticipating what FBX are going to go for, but for the majority... <laughs> for the majority, they have got this on lock. The anticipation of Berlin's push at the beginning of that round and the way they executed was immaculate. They're looking for that punish again onto Tomaji. It's not there. Not going to get it. Yeah, this time playing a little safer. Doubling up with Magnum as well. KC, one round away, five chances of converting. Keep it clean. It's going to be their aim. Tucked to the corner, that's life. Avoiding the initial flash across from the ropes. Accurate enough to win that fight out, but dismiss in towards the back now. Underneath Raft, there's plenty more players ready to try and fight him. Target rich environment. Take your pick, take your time, son, because this is you lighting the world on fire. Live! With the ace! Holy! And he's on his feet after that one, too. If the KC players are trying to keep him rooted in that seat, they've well and truly failed in round 20. He's dropped 24 kills. I mean, he's the only player that's actually able to evade the way that KC are playing. Because he can get one, get out, and pick the most awkward timings through all of their utility. Springs out of his seat. Almost, knock <laughs> <laughs> Almost knocking it off the stage. He's feeling it. Definitely feeling it. Back into the fight. Back into the action. Carmen Core, slow and steady. It's their approach to begin. They know how aggressively FPX are liking to play, and they do have both the duelist players. Dash still available. Dismiss there if life gets a kill. Lots of exit strategies, but here we look at this. I mean, they're just holding four. It's still alive, claims it. He's on fire. Barely a shred of Narei poking out. Still manages to catch the headshot. Magnum's one away from having a massive ultimate, and they're sneaking around oh, underneath them. Life goes for the reclear. It's a dizzy. Still, it's traded. Magnum is there. On for the two there. Hang on, drops down. Dash is there. Martins finds it. Forwards now. After lockdown, it's 2v2. This could be it to seal the map. What is going to be the answer from FBX? Holding, walking out. Holding, walking out, hoping that they can punish, but no. Just granted the kill. And Berlin, the IGL, to 1v2. Cover going out. All on the line to keep his team in the map. Paranoia available. Smokes still there, wants to walk though, doubled up, they're dominating the position if he chooses to just peek ever so slightly into it. There was going to be a shorty ready and waiting. More smoke used. 
Tap. Force them out into the open. No easy fights, no easy exits. That is Carmen Core sealing it up. Nice and pretty for map number one. 13-8. A bizarre opening to Masters Madrid, but it had some great moments. FBX, seven out of eight of their rounds taken in a streak. Yeah, absolutely. Was going to set it to a short break on the other side of things, of course. The continuation of the series don't go anywhere. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin. In this series, I'm going to walk you through Attack on Pearl. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle. You're going to be able to fight this.
Red Bull gives you wings. Hey guys, Mika Fabs here, and I'm standing right now with Coach Ang of Carmen Kart. Congratulations on that first map, the first map win of Valorant Masters Madrid. Now, um, of course, we saw FPX had that near comeback. So how did the boys keep their calm and how were they able to close it out? Let us know what's going on behind the scenes. I'm not going to lie, I didn't say anything, to be honest. Uh, I feel like we are ready, we prepared it, and I don't know. People don't understand, but FPX pretty decent team. They're really, really strong gamers, and yeah, it just uh, I expected uh, that they gonna uh, shoot hard and hit hard. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of. But about us, yeah, I didn't say anything to be honest. It's just all like props to our teams uh, and uh, you and, and Ahmed. They prepared them also. The mental device. That's yeah, we are ready. So I don't know. I'm just happy. <laughs> we won. Full trust in the team. Gotta love it. Uh, let's hope that Carmen Cower can can close it out in map two. Oh, if N is happy, I am happy. What a start it is for Casey here at Masters Madrid. I'm your host, Yingsu, and I'm back here with Mimi and Kakuka. Uh, it was a great start, uh, and Kakuka, and also yep. a very convincing way for Casey to close it out. Yeah, exactly. It's also not the fact only that they managed to get that first win here at Masters. It's the fact that they managed to mentally reset for what was happening on the server. I think that Eng was very right. FPX can shoot very, very hard. Like, the, the rounds that life was having, how they were just pushing onto them and doing this kind of things we were talking about before how they thrive in the chaos it is something that Casey had to overcome and did yeah they absolutely did I think they looked really good in that second half with their game plan on how to shut down uh, the aggression that even on yep. the defense is being brought out by FPX it's kind of hard to get that initial bit of space and punish people who have pushed up when you only have that gecko but I think they play around that one piece of utility even though you can't combo it with another flash mm -hmm. very very well for me that second half was a showcase of just how strong Casey's fundamentals are yeah Mimi let's take a look at round 18 because because not many people can deal with k -Core's pressure. Yes. And if, unfortunately, FBX couldn't do that either. Yeah, not not many, Inclu including FBX mm -hmm. in this game, like you say. But this run was pretty cool for me. The, the way that KC are scaling together into this site. And also, I think it's a showcase of how FBX's comp really does show some weakness. Running no Sendy on this map means that if you're hard Look at where to these is. rotates, which you kind of <laughs> need to when you have this, this initiator comp where you're trying to set up those combos, you leave gaps uh, gap like this, and Magnum was just taking advantage of this. Yeah, exactly. And if you combine it with a narrate that was extremely explosive and just going in for the kills, he said that he wanted to pick uh, when he got to Madrid, so he's definitely uh, doing so. And I love that we have this task for him. We were talking about the versatility, the feeling comfortable, and I think that this was a perfect show in front of him. It absolutely was. He said he was just going to swing everyone at this yeah, maybe. and fine. you saw <laughs> take the no, fine, take the fine. He, 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 he did swing in this one i think that when kc is willing to in the late rounds take a little bit of that risk and let him go crazy when he's feeling it is really good and adds a, an extra dynamic to this team i mean this is the thing he does this on gecko he will do this on fade as we see him later mm -hmm. uh, which version of the raid do you guys think is the final boss of, of the narrate I really like his gecko. I, I'm, I'm yeah. on the gecko train, yeah, but I'm it's a big so fan of It's so hard to play gecko solo initiator. Yes. He does it so well. Yeah, exactly. I think that he has a very good balance on how to support the team, how to go on those more aggressive plays because he's the kind of player that can do it yes. and will do it without shaking or, or having like second guesses. When we see him moving around the map and taking the right the right covers and, and making the right choices, everything is very well wired in his head. So I think that is why I like the gecko and also because he can just like... Wah, 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 wah. Do it. You have to. Do the, you have to do the voice. Oh, too good. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Also, she's actually the voice actor. But I am actually I Carnalito. That. Yeah. Can you please share that? Because I feel like it's a way better name than Wingman. Carnalito. Yeah. 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 In, it's not even the Spanish one. It's in Latin America. They call it a uh, little boy Carnalito, and he's very cute. Carnalito. Carnalito. I, I vote that we only call him that from now on. I'm ready for it. Carnalito. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we do uh, have a uh, uh, narrate here. Can you believe it? Warming up in the aim lab shoot around uh, i need his sense i need his game sense everything you know the meme how it goes because uh, he's able to perform emea on land and it's great to see that mimi he's also able to perform on a global stage already as well he just had to get out of an a of an a oh <laughs> he was good he was getting he was help back he was yeah. getting help back he was actually <gasps> He, he is what your ranked teammates want to be in that it was, he needed the right team, right? Yeah. He, he can probably yeah, Honestly, he fight. needed Eng. I think that there is yes. a lot of similarities be, be, uh, between the case of Narrate and, and some other players in KC. And for example, Alpha here, the, uh, 
people might not remember, but there was this moment where Afaria was just 16, just picked up by uh, Fnatic and just performing the way that he was because of the coach that he had. And probably in another environment, Alpha would not be where he is today. But going back to our raid, love the fact that he's feeling this comfortable, that he has, he has this sassy personality outside and inside the game and he can bring it to the international stage. He absolutely can. And we've talked a lot about the coaches today, but I think you have to credit the IGLing of this team as well. Magnum played with Fnatic right at the very beginning, famous for the, the eagle faded sky flash at the end of Reykjavik. But since then, he's been grinding down in tier two. He's a name that I think a lot of people had forgotten. But now he comes back in with this KC roster and is absolutely a pivotal part of this system they built. We saw some great adaptation and mid rounding on that map. And I think you can accredit a lot of that to this guy, Magnum. Yeah, this is the thing. People don't, uh, uh, people forget that he was never IGL before. He no. only started IGLing uh, on this team. I, I also love a moment we had in EMEA where N uh, called attack pause when they were like 11 1 up. And he did that a lot back in Gander. And we asked him, You're 11 1, why are you calling attack pause? And he's like, Look, uh, I want us to close out the game. And I heard Magnum make a call, and it was just the wrong call. I had to step in and be like, Magnum, look, I appreciate what you're doing, but you should not be doing that. You should be, you should be doing this. And he also said that as time went on, he's had to do that a lot less. His trust in Magnum has grown a lot uh, over the over the kickoff period. And given the fact, I don't think they called a single timeout, right? I don't think. No, they, I mean that's what Eng was saying. Yeah, there we go. Right? Yeah. He was, yeah. he was if he's hearing, if so he's Magnum, hearing the right thing, Magnum must have been saying all of the right things. Many people might think, yeah, after you lose so many rounds in a row, why didn't you call a tech pass? Eng is hearing everything, and if he feels that the right calls are being made, and to every problem they're already thinking about uh, to fi to fix it for the next round, you don't really need to call uh, that tech pass. Do you think that your team is going to be you know, a little bit thrown off the game? You don't want to interfere too much. You think that that first tech boss, uh, sorry, uh, attack boss was, was enough? Why do it again? I think you also have to remember that those pauses also give your opponent a, a chance to talk mm. to your coach. I, I think we've heard from like Mini before that sometimes he wouldn't call pauses because he trusts his IGL more than the opponent's IGL. You were going to say you're going to say you trust the other coach me. more. I thought you were going to say that. No, no, no. But uh, <laughs> it is something to think about always of like yeah. that trust in your IGL. Mm. Once you build it up, it means you can save those pauses for that person perfect moment. And I mean, right now, I don't think that game ever fully got out of hand for Casey. They started no. losing those three, four rounds in a row, but the last round, they turn it back around, they fix it, and then go into the second half quite strong. Yeah, and he didn't need to talk to his players, but his players were giving it on the server. Take a look at this. There's some trash talk from the last Guys, time. some smiles in your face. Oh, oh, hey, hey, play the game, play the game. <laughs> so it's just for Mazzy. <laughs> so Mazzy, it's by the way, another youngster, if you no. remember seeing him last year in, to in, in oh, Seoul, no. we yeah. had to do it. Um, it was completely different, right? I think that the environment that they have created, how they're living it's everything on stage. Oh, Mazzy, over no, there. So I, I watched the, some of the Carmen Corp vlogs this week. Did we get to Mew in from Martin already? No. Not yet? No. Uh, it, no. will, it will be there. I, I really thought we could go a long time without bringing that up here. No. Sorry, I'm kind of disappointed we haven't seen it yet. I'm yeah. disappointed in both of you. But what I'm not oh. disappointed in is, is what I was saying with Tomezi being such a great emotional leader. But we're into the Agent Select here already. Carmen Core, we saw them play the Fnatic comp and beat Fnatic. But for FPX, this is one of those maps where they pull out the chamber bear. Yeah, exactly. Funny enough, even though Casey has a very good record on this map, this has never been their choice. This is the first time that they actively choose this as their battleground. It was always like either the third map or something that other teams picked up uh, for them in EMEA. Even with that, I think this is the map that shows perfectly and more exactly how good they are on the retakes and how the protocols are perfectly, perfectly sharp because, of course, with three sides, things change. And they also change when you have a chamber on the other side. Not very popular in uh, EMEA. Absolutely. This comp, beyond just the chamber, has a solo gecko initiator, yeah. which I think is a lot harder to make work on this map. If you go for hard execs, that dizzy gets broken, which, uh, honestly, mm. map one, Casey was doing a great job at. If they can continue to do that, I think they can really punish this dive player. This is an opportunity for KC to close in too. Yeah, well, things are going to get a little bit harder for FPX here. It will be KC's map choice, and it's time to send it back to your casters. Here's Brennan Sideshow. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, let's get to it then. Map number two in for Carmen Core versus FPX. I mean, listen, map one was a, an interesting one, to say the least. I mean, very streaky in terms of the rounds with Carmen Core. you got to expect. You know, these guys are phenomenal on Lotus. It's a map that they've taken, you know, many a strong team to. They look really primed on this map. They have a ton of great ideas. Uh, but now, you know, how are they going to be dealing with FPX, especially life on the chamber? This guy has been a standout in the past, and now he's going to be looking to do a little bit more. There's a smoke here. Haunt. 
dealt with, taken care of. TP back with a rendezvous, but well, Lysol just trying to help out his teammate. Yeah, a bit of a strange decision actually, because Life already had the exit with the rendezvous. Just looking to try to find a timing. Now they're headed into Magnum's setup, where the turret is going to take contact. And this Viper Wall, previously used by teams like Loud on this map, going to allow KC a really nice C retake. You can see from Magnum's setup here with the Nano Swarms, I mean, it's just to make sure they can't cross past the wall, buys time for the rotates. See here now, the spike's going to be planted. Nice shot onto the target. A fight into the back of the site. They're not clearing. The corner have clearance still. Autumn snaps it back around again. They want to really just take the fight in a battle straight to them. FPX are not messing around. Shin, so so much to do. Doubled up, stacked up. They give him a freebie. Three kills now. But a 1v2 and 17 health to do it. Almost impossible. He doesn't have very much information about where the others are positioned and life. The sheriff just watching this smoke. Standing put it down. Round. Yeah, with the double set up there, high, low, and kind of caught. Not quite ready there for the aggression, at least a second wave of things. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of looked like they were ready for the aggression, if anything. I mean, Narey is tucked into the corner, has his pick, should have been able to pick off Autumn. Oh, and that glance behind. And yeah, it's just the fact that Narey isn't able to hit the go shots to be able to pick up a couple of them there in that split second. But certainly, I mean, to your point, FBX pushing so deep. They were taking a fight against Shin and Spawn, basically. And if that's the adaptation that they use going from map one to map two, to keep trying to fight Kamikor at all times, never allow them to set up for the retakes, I think that's a very good strategic idea. Works well. It really does. And you said as well earlier, Brent, that Kamen Core have got a lot of experience on Lotus. They feel very comfortable there. The desk was talking about that too. But they've also played mostly against more meta compositions and relying on having a great understanding of how those work, the timings those take, the utility that they throw. They had very good specific anti-strats in EMEA too. This FBX team does not play conventional Valorant. No. And the composition shows that, but also the way that they run it shows that too. And it's going to be a little harder for KC to get a read on. KC showed her hands, really, that the stack is over towards A, forcing the pivot now in towards B. I mean, to stop this, I saw back position almost asleep at the wheel there. Needs to call for reinforcements and backup here to try and play this crossfire. Set up, Bulldog. Singing true, finding their marks, very wide face, but the second shot of the Outlaw is enough to shut that one down. So, should be very clean and clinical round here for FBX, second one now for them. And it's also close to getting Aeyang's ult online, so I would assume he's going to try the chase. Berlin snipes it, steals it <laughs> for his first ult okay. point. Don't worry, we don't need the Gecko ult anyway, I suppose, as we head into the bonus round. It would have been nice to have it online. Still possible, of course, Aeyang might get it for post-plant here with something like an ult or pick up and a plant. But KC, the war machine starts to rumble. Tomoshi picks up the Odin. One enemy remaining. This team as well, kind of cool. Warbang lineups, I mean, you're seeing FBX as well take a turn with it as well, initially in the prior round, but now we're getting started. Just trying to punish that peak. You can hear the shoulder just sticking out of life. He goes for another one. Very bold, very confident. He was dominating in the individual fights when it came to Icebox, so I can respect that level of confidence. But KC, punishing him there. And despite the fact that there were three players from FBX defaulting over towards Mound at the beginning of the round, they don't actually have any control there. Double smokes and Aeyang's Dizzy has had to be used twice already in the round just for Mound control. So they're still 10 seconds away from using that in any kind of push into C. Shin smokes as well. I mean, they just, they jut out just far enough to really put the fear into FPX, wondering if there could be a player lurking and creeping. The door is going to be hit there with a switch. Now a call is made. Paranoia, Dizzy, everything offloaded all together. Shin is really in dire straits. He needs some help for the rest of his team. Dodging and juking side to side. How does he get the one kill eventually? Falling. Backing away here, Narate realizing he has to respect this one, doesn't want to toss away his life, wants to play for the full retake with the rest of his team now. Plant, actually denied there, that's a perfect placement of the nade, yeah. And wow. a kill! 
I mean, if anyone was going to go down, and I thought it would be Autumn on 30 health, but Lysol just tanks it. Maybe not hearing that in the moment. The rate, despite the fact that he's spamming down, trying to get a second. Finally, the apple taking out all of it, leaves it to Berlin. He's just got so much to work in against him. Berlin, hello. Here's your time to shine, but Tomasic shuts that one down right quick. So, bonus round conversion not there, but he made it a hell of an expensive round. I mean, listen, only one player surviving. Yeah. KC. Absolutely. I mean, when Lysol goes down to the nade, it looks like KC are going to have their pick of that one. It's going to be an easy battle, but Berlin once again in a pretty similar manner to what he did in round 13 on Icebox. 30 seconds left. He's been able to get way more value from a position than you would expect from there. him. Makes it very damaging to KC's economy. So now, Kalmancourt coming into the next round. I have a Bulldog and a Judge to work with. Martin is playing Judge Rays here at the front of B to start this round. FBX haven't been wandering close to B. But I wonder if they're going to try to set up some kind of trap here on mound. Here. A chance of it. Open the door, blast pack out, do something crazy with the Judge, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, Shin's position is playing really quite far forward there. The problem is, out. the more space that you give them over towards A here, Brent, the more that you're going to allow Aeyang to get set up with the Thrash, push Magnum into uncomfortable positions, and get plants down on A. So, this is, despite the fact there's a Killjoy and an Odin playing on the A site, this does look a little weak. There it is now, Thrash, clearing out towards Tree. Magnum smart enough to give up the space. Be free gained now. Plant down for Berlin. Unconventional plant spot. Post plant doesn't allow you to play from stairs to really try and spam that one down. It's actually tucked to the corner. Heavy reliance on tree. We'll see if that bites them here. Here's the initiation. The moves in with the judge eventually shutting down that threat. Martin can't get anything done, but Carmen Course still there with the rifles. Off to the side, Autumn inside the smoke. And the rate. Last player left standing. 1v2, maybe even second-guessing himself, wondering if he gets another one, could be played, but no. Now making the smarter decision here, so saving a rifle, running away with it. So FPX up to a third round. Yeah, getting themselves into a really nice position. The thing that catches Carmen Core off guard there where they go for the retake are the unconventional swing timings from FPX. As soon as they hear the paranoia double blast pack come out, FPX don't respect it, they swing into it. And that catches KC as they go to try to push off the back of the utility, taking gunfights at unfavorable timings. And you'll see here, Berlin just manages to catch this one. And you also have Autumn coming out through the smoke. Perfect timing to try to catch Martin in the back. Enemy Woo, remaining. The damage that they did on the bonus, capitalizing there. And leading to a really nice beginning to this map from FPX. That's fantastic. Keep this one going as well. Listen, generate the ultimates. Keep using them to just snowball your way forwards. I think the more rounds as well that FPX get and start accruing is that question you brought up earlier, you know. Carmen Court, they've been playing against the Metacomps. How do you deal with something that's a little bit less standard, especially against a team that plays a little bit less standard too? You know, FPX, we've been seeing them play. I mean, they don't shy away from a lot of individuals, uh, individualistic plays. No, not at all. Fire! Tucked to the corner. Will he be tail uh, taken out? Yeah, and dealt with. Winning the showstopper there against the weaker by. Yeah, so expensive, but starting to build up to, you know, a Viper's Pit for the next as well. So the alt cycle is still not in a terrible situation, even though they felt it necessary to invest that. They're in a great spot to be able to close this one out too. The weaponry is not great on anyone other than Nare. Oh, all the players down for the double face. Autumn. Three in a round, might be looking for another one. There it is, yeah. the fourth, so. With the classic of all yeah, things, too. Steadily building his way back up to his own ult that he just expended. Four to one here, FBX might be starting to run away with it. Important round coming up now. Take a look at the economy. Carmen Core be able to get some of those rifles online, but they don't have any big ultimates of their own, really. Yeah, I mean, okay, Martini's one away. Maybe if he gets a kill, get the show stopper too, but it's imperative, really, that they put a stop to FBX here. Especially if Lysor starts getting into position to pit on the site. Because we saw that on Icebox, that the pits and the more aggressive post-line positions really messed with KC and the way that they wanted to approach things. 
Early fight. Here, my life. Doesn't expect that Shin has already crossed one way. Might just see the feet. Not quite catching it. Yeah, oh, has he got a glimmer of it there, perhaps? I don't think so. The boombot used from Autumn, close to B-Main, as life forced to teleport away. Autumn has not quite cleared Thomas yet. Yeah, it was broken. It gave the indicator. It gave the indicator for Autumn. Great movement to Wonderful. be able to escape. Really heads up as well, knowing that the boombot was cleared. He's expecting it. He's like, OK. Potential there, behind the box tucked. First kill for them, so 50 seconds now. Cover going out. Making the moves over towards the A site. Magnum is here, ready and waiting with the setup. That's the Nano Storm still, Paranoia. It was wide, he's holding an off angle. This is really quite aggressive. And Autumn just offsets the movement ever so slightly enough. Flank around Shin, they weren't expecting that one with the TP, but he's only one man, what can he do? Paranoia glides, TP in face! No way! No way! No way! Shin! That's monstrous! And life is nowhere near! Sticking this one through, where's the defuse but Not a clue, still half on in life! Puts him to bed, puts him to rest! What a kill to end that! And what a play from Carmen Core! An attempt to try to set that up. And timeout called. That was an enormous investment. I mean, the play that they went for there, Nightfall, into the Omenult. They had no idea that Shin was all the way back there. They had no audio cues. Paranoia, so they have no audio cue on this either. Shin was set up for success. And life what? shut Tomada. it down. <laughs> I said at the beginning of the round, that was a pivotal one. Economy going to be reset here for Carmen Court. Instant timeout called. Yeah, this is now serious danger. Casey unveiling one of their big ideas for how to go for a retake there, or at least to put pressure onto FPX as they were going for the plant using a really nice ult combo still gets stuffed. And Autumn is currently sat 12 and 3 up at the top of the scoreboard for FBX. Finding so many good timings. His awareness in that round to be able to pick off Tomaji early on. In the previous round, to be able to catch Martin as he went for the double blast pack retake on A. Autumn has been playing wonderfully here. Pride of OCE. Stepping up here onto the big stage. And so many conversations about, you know, what do the communications look like within FPX? Because Autumn isn't super comfortable with only speaking Chinese inside the team, so they're having to do a lot in English too. Is it worth it? Well, if he plays like this, it is. Yeah, it definitely is. And Life, who was at the top of the scoreboard on Reina, is still 6-1, and one, barely been punished. Only that one time where he overstayed his welcome slightly on A. Double control given up, FPX happy to do so. Autumn also one away from his ult. Yeah, and look at how that round is about to spiral the ult economy out of control for FPX. This ult cycle is getting monstrous. Magnum, tucked here, has the stinger. Too much util, still finds the kill. Just taking the timing as well, knowing they were going to explode into the side, and he backs away, so... Toss away his life for no reason. Plant. This is going to be difficult, though, for Kami Core because they're going to come back into this against potentially big ultimates if Autumn or Lysor are able to get a pick. There are huge ults on the other side. It might have been a good idea to try to stack one of them, the plant. Yeah, potentially, because Martin's now going to be coming back in. Nade rebounding. Snake by ults offloaded. Tomasi, what a shot. What a shot indeed. The players are toppling here. The rifles matter not. Kami Core on display, showing exactly what makes them that number one seed from EMEA. And just a bit too passive from FPX. Thrifty. Resting on their laurels, not remembering the game plan that they had coming in. And that's our second MasterCard Thrifty of the series, I believe. But from what we'd saw, seen earlier on, sorry, when Kami Core were fighting aggressive post plans deep into spawn to this, like, almost the most passive way that you could now. play this situation, not loading the plant into Lysor or Autumn, where you would have a big ultimate to be able to work with. Bit of a misplay, but like I said, the ult cycle 
is demonic right now for it's FPS. Everything online. They have <laughs> literally everything, yeah. It's a rubble fight, not being contested early by FPS, play. they want nothing to do with it. KC not even really using too much utility of their own. It's a stalemate just to start things off. Life with the Tour de Force. Open Deacon contact in as a slight gap into the smoke. He was praying that Magnum potentially cross into the sideline. And Magnum is just holding angles where he would be able to catch people. Yeah. You know, blast packing in with an ultimate. He's looking to try to catch Autumn. In a very non-committed place, Magnum. But one where he can just catch headshot sightlines. I sent flying out towards B. Now it's going to be calming this. You it's still not a full commitment though at all, is it? No. It's just supposed to feel fakey. All over the place here, but really there's not too much behind it. Still, okay. Prowler peak. Martin, what? A shot. The quick scope of life shuts that one down. Now the showstopper. All laid out on top of it. Magnum. He's out of there. Vacates it. Wants nothing to do with it. Side control going to be. Gain for them. Fights being lost all over the place here with Thomasy losing that one. Paranoia swing through. A little bit delayed here, but FPX are the ones that are coming out on top. Kill feed. Filling up with red. And that's all they're seeing right now. Hunted for the kills. Magnum. Lovely shot with the discipline. Shin. He's setting the aim just enough. 1v2. Does he still choose to make a go of this? He's worried about those aggressive timings that FPX like to take. Fear in his heart, causing this to be a retake. Uh, sorry, a save. Meaning that KC are in a hole right now. And in a whole lot of trouble. FPX still with some big ultimates that they didn't feel incentivized to use there. We were watching that fight happening over towards the defender side spawn. Actually, the big deaths happened in Waterfall. Yeah. Those are kills that I think either happened over the top of or through a smoke, and obviously that first pick is massive. But yeah, just as that smoke was about to bloom, it's a one-way actually from Berlin. That's so nice. Interesting ideas. Lovely idea. And not something that KC was set up to deal with. It is an attack-sided map from everything that we've seen, but FBX here are looking so much more successful than they did on Icebox. Ways exchanged, Berlin. Looks like he could be playing into a deeper angle, potentially even inside the one way, but. FPX previously, when they had Aeung's ult online, did end A. They expected it to only be one player there. It was, it was Magnum with an Odin. And now Aeung looking to make his way towards A again, but Berlin with a spike on B. So there's a serious potential that this becomes an A fake with the Gecko ult into a B pivot. That's going to be challenging for KC to deal with. I think it depends on the success of these A players. Berlin does have the ult tucked away to reposition to A if they are going to find a kill, but no. All broken wide. Paranoia was sent flying a bit prior here, and they've put players into four positions with Lysor to be attempting to backstab. Weird though, because that means no pit available on site. Lockdown. There's forwards here with a thrash. I want to seek to try and fight this one. Really far back positions. Can they deal with it? Magnum nails it with a detainment. That's two players there. They can't actually enter the fight, but really, they've done the damage here with the bodies. Nothing to break this lockdown whatsoever. Life was being pressured onto that position. Once more detainments across the board. Narrate sticking forwards here. Sees half on the board. Magnum really just seeking to delay. He's got his teammates back. Ayak forcing out the wingman. Horn. Drops down, rebounds, half on it, really needs to swing wide. Magnum needs to shut it down, not even necessary. It's Carmen Court with the win in that round. Salves that third one. Really important round for KC to be able to get on the board. But I like the ideas actually from both teams. Sure, we didn't see the pit on the site, but we did see them save that thrash for a post plant situation to try to challenge the lockdown. Unfortunately, the fights just simply didn't go their way. Magnum being able to pick up both of them in that situation is just enormous. If he hadn't picked up both, there's a great chance that FBX are able to push forwards, get the kills, break the lockdown, and it's around done and dusted. 
lot of aggression out towards a rubble now. Well, okay. Deep Horn just tagging up there onto Lysaw. Couldn't stand his ground there, and even Life Trade taken out. Paranoia to set that one up, jumping up into their face. Shots going wide. It's the weaker weapon, so it should just be an easy job. Finishing them up. One enemy remaining. Strenuous. There's a rifle gain here for Berlin. He doesn't have the spike. No. He was hoping to just TP himself out of there and doesn't win the fight out. So, real rapid one. In round 10. But now, FEX rifles back on board. And this is where the ult cycle has declined a little bit here for the attack side team. But they haven't really been able to find use out of this pit. It's been the one big ultimate, actually, that they haven't used at any point. They're going to take a timeout here, discuss what the round game plan should be. I feel like the game plans have been good from FPX. Yeah. Generally speaking, apart from that one round, was it round seven, I believe, where they just played a little too passively. For the rest of it, they've been up, aggressive, in common cause faces, forcing the duels, utilizing nice pieces of utility, like the one way on C, the thrash to push the lockdown over towards B as well. They're really proactive calls being made by a, an FPX team that, honestly, I thought were gonna be riddled with these communication issues, you know, having to really translate twice, you know, Berlin having to talk and describe these game plans throughout. It, it led to the macro game of FPX looking a bit weak. I mean, Magnum pointed it out. We've said it many times now over the course of the series. But that hasn't really been the case. I mean, they have been rapid in terms of the way they've been pressing the issue, forcing KC to react to them. And it's been by hair's breath, really, in terms of KC being able to win some of these rounds out. Maybe they can even it out. Maybe they can make it six to six here. Timeout is being taken by FBX because they're feeling that struggle now to hold on and maintain this lead that they've gained. KC have also, I think, found it a little difficult to tell exactly where FBX have been moving around the map because they're playing quite far back. I mean, they push forward in like B main at the beginning of the rounds, that kind of thing. But generally speaking, Carmen Core are taking a more passive approach to the defense, relying on those good retakes. And that's giving FPX a lot to work with. Here we see KC start the round with three, ready to play around a rubble. A very classic setup here on the defense. Just the one way used. Berlin, hoping they hear the sound cue of that one. Viper's pit dropped down in through C. And Narrate actually saved all of his fade utility. Didn't throw any for the rubble fight at the beginning of the round. They're not worried about that area of the map. KC have maintained control of it at the start. And now you can see both teams saving a lot of their utility. They're expecting KC to play passive, and they're also not really fighting rubble. So both teams coming into the mid round here with tons to work with. Just conserving everything. All the contact plays online. Reclearance of rubble is called. Snake bite and a nade combo is excellent, but no players ready to receive. Still, it gives them the space. Haunt. Really actually catching on to a few of these players. They're lucky to be alive back in the way. Meanwhile, out through B, that's a trade from a hang and even more so. Oh, that's wild. He's ripped away Nere's head. And he's just swinging through an Anna Swarm there as well. He's opened the round up so wide for FBX. Looking to try to no get another way. and he does. Aang's been such a beast in this series so far. Hit drop down. Berlin's watching for it. You can hear it. The rumbling of the footsteps. That is 7 2 4. You're exactly right, Josh. I mean, Aang has been a difference maker. Like I said, Nurek didn't use a Prowler, a, a Seize, a Haunt, whatever, at the start of the round. But he did Prowler B main, and he found out that there was a Lurker there. But he thought it was only one. Magnum is about to pull out his turret after killing life there, because they are so convinced there would only be one B Lurker. They're getting caught off guard by the unconventional way that FBX are playing, and it creates moments like that where KC have an assumption that is wrong, and it bites them in the ass. The money is just absolute bargain bin purchases for Carmen Court. Working with scraps to the final round of the first half. It's led to them to make the decision, really, to just give up C. I mean, they went aggressive towards B main early, hoping that they could maybe get a favored fight, taking it with the, the numbers that they've got, but for now. Space given and granted for FPX out towards C mound. And Aeon picks up his ultimate. So FPX really happy to work the map. And this is looking like another one where they fake it. Bit of a feint over towards C. 
now opening the door, putting pressure on Magnum here. Pulls out that trap play set up, this wall tucked behind it, Magnum. Maybe he could do something about it. Nightfall here, forward sound cues, missing, taken away. Plant still online for it. No, he's just spotted. Everybody watching towards the wall, but that is a nasty shot by Tomasi. And through main, could have blocked that angle up. Actually, might just be through to Smoke here. Oh, sound cues, life is really just going to rely on his aim. Smoke finally blooms and blossoms to cut off these available players, but guess what? That flank of Lysor is coming in right from the side. Tomasi sticking half already, has to get off of it, has to get the kills, but not expecting it. The full wrap around and an eight to four finish for this opening half. Very nice ending there from FPX. Good way of adding extra layers into that. And a very competent attack side on a map where KC have been very dominant in EMEA. I don't see. It's an attack-sided map in general, so don't count out the European squad from being able to make a comeback happen. But the pressure is now firmly on them. Yeah, send it down to the Atlas test to break it down. Thank you very much, guys. It is a great half and a nice start from FBX here. But let's take a look at a Verizon high-speed moment of the match because this one goes to Shin. And what a play this was, Mimi. Yeah, it, it was impressive, right? But this round started off so good for FBX. They got a huge advantage. And then Shin, I mean, just incredible instincts to get behind instantly on this TP and almost win it. But he did lose the round in the end. And that's the story of this half. It is FBX up 8-4. to four. And for me, this was a very different FPX from map one. It wasn't defined by life going crazy, by these super mm. aggressive pushes in the late round. It was instead them playing really good fundamentals. Yeah. Starting off the <laughs> one three one pressuring the extremities, and then late round making really good reads and actually out calling Magnum to get ahead. Yeah, I think they outmantled the plan that F uh, sorry that um, K Corp originally had for this map. If we look at the uh, the hyper wall that they were using from the attack, it differs completely from what we see in EMEA. We were talking about the Odin, Thomasy going crazy on that. It doesn't hold a lot of value if uh, if that position is not going to be uh, held by them. But this does get risky in the second half. This map, as the casters were highlighting, it's a lot harder to defend on, even with FPX having this lead. And I think on this defensive side as well, this is where we really get to see what this team is made of. They have to be on top of these rotations, because Carmen Core is a team who is really good at selling these little fakes, at playing into the right site in the mid round, and then having super strong post plants. Yeah, it is a healthy lead, but a pistol could change everything as we head back into the second half uh, with your casters. It's Brandon Sideshow. So for Carmen Core, I mean, backs against the wall with this one. Hefty, hefty lead for FPX. Look, look at keep the, it going with the pistol. Look at this pistol round by. It's really interesting, actually. We've got three players with sheriffs online. Shin on attack side Omen has bought one smoke and a teleport. So he's clearly planning to get value out of that as part of their pistol strategy. But if they're going to end B here, that means that they're only going to have one smoke. They're going to fight heaven aggressive with the Viper Wall. Oh, again, trying to disrupt this one, FBX. Cracked open the wall out towards C, trying to double face this one, but they've gotten deep into heaven, calm and core. Cool. There's the second protocol, just leaping, wow. boundless man. Jumping straight into the face of Ayang, and he can't withstand that kind of pressure. Interlink now, Paranoia. So flying, corners cleared, making sure they're there with the diligence. Nade rebounding, but Magnum holding down the ground, forwards. It's the approach, but again, there's just nothing to deal with this guy. He's just rattling off shots. Left, right and center, straight from main. Finally smoked off, Berlin defusing. Half, half, sticking, hello, gets off of it, but now damage is done. Snake bite tap, they've got to realize this now, surely with the time cues, but they all collapse in time. Karma caught, the pistol round win. I thought there was a little bit of danger there, turns out. Tomaji, he had his orb and a snake bite on the plan. So not too much danger, Berlin was maxed out at only being able to get half of the spike. This is the play, though, that really wins them the round. They're not just fighting Heaven aggressively with the Viper Wall. They're planning to swing through their own Viper Wall to be able to hard clear out anybody that was looking to try to play retake in that area. Great pistol round strategy. Well cooked up nice. by KC. Gives them a chance. A lot of util going to be expended here by KC. Some control towards a rubble, but a stack of four players are going to be 
meeting them pound for pound. Yes, they don't have the weapons, but they do have the util. And look at that dizzy connection. Which way is the fight going to go? But oh. Hanoi have lined it up. FBX could have gone in any direction, but eventually it's the Bulldogs that carried them through it. Yeah, after that initial wave of utility got the first two kills for FBX, they just couldn't quite hold on. As soon as the KC players could see, they shot back. And Life tries to make the play there, shut down. All down to Berlin. We've seen some outrageous situations from Berlin so far in this series. He's managed to pick up a Bulldog. But I think this would just be a little too Spike much. Planted. He's gonna need a freebie. Carmichael haven't really been offering too many of them. There's an option though. Magnum's just jiggling the corner out towards Link. Berlin making sure to clear everything before he starts the approach now. One smoke, two smokes. Freshly rejuvenated. He's found a timing past Magnum, yeah, but he's set up a crossfire. This triple setup is so strong. You just don't win it. There's too much to account for. Too much to account for. So, three players surviving here for Carmen Court. Three rifles to carry into the bonus. The Bermuda Triangle post plant setup. You ain't getting out of that no, one. No, you can't do it. Can't do it. So, yeah, this is going to be a fairly potent bonus round, but not the most that we've seen. There was a little bit of damage there. Also, something to keep in mind, Autumn was 12 and 3 to begin this map. So, you look at where he is on the scoreboard right now, he hasn't been doing too much since that absolutely electric beginning. A bit of a struggle. In order for the FPX to be able to close this out and take their second map ever at a global event, you're going to need big players like Autumn or Life to really make sure that they can close this one out. Berlin trying to make the most of the Odin spam. Well, that util was used just to set Shin up into a forward position through rubble. And the second wave is going to be used early on here. I mean, talking a minute 20. Now, Carmen Court could look to try and go all the way back over towards A. Berlin. He's going to get pushed out oh, into the open. He's going to get pushed out into the open. I mean, the Berlin oh moments. Oh, my. <laughs> Berlin, what are you doing? They are wild. Oh no, I can feel it, the danger zone, and it's there. FPX now forced to try and do a lot more. Ayang out wide into the open. Lysor, he's found his straggler up onto the opposite side of the map, but really the damage is done. Life has to make a go of it. Wall fades, no one accounting for it. Spike dropped down, he's brought this into a two versus two. Definite chances here for him. Serious opportunity for FPX to be able to recover this. Oh, that's a ton of damage onto life, though. The Odin spam perfect, but he might have distracted for Lysor to find a timing. What happened to backside? Shin is just on top of the ropes, man. That's a bonkers play to go for. This post plant now gets so much more difficult. Lysor, how do you cut up these angles? How do you find the right fights? How do you isolate them? He's not even clearing Shin. Tucked up there, and there was a player ready to swing. Him and Tomasi, dynamic duo. Should have been more dangerous than that, actually, for Kamikor. Shin somehow manages to make that one look easy by pushing with an Odin into heaven. But it's the it's the player on the other side. It's Shin's opposite, Berlin, who just threw the round away so early on. I this mean, is an anti-bonus. You have an economy advantage to clear the round out. And he just wanders out through the rotating door. It's the kind of play that you should never be going for. And I think he just got completely lost with what was occurring there. Didn't think that KC were committed to rubble whatsoever. And uh, we've seen a few moments from, from him throughout this series. He's matched the big round winning plays with those kind of moments where he loses the plot a little bit. Certainly has. Interesting play by FPX here on the half by eco, whatever you want to call it. They throw a ton of utility at a rubble and they over rotate immediately. So they have the stack. They're trying to force Karmacore right into them. They're going to get their wish granted. Martin can't see anything yet with the Phantom in his hands, making sure work at him. Wide face driving by. One player left standing in Autumn. Feels his position. Earns a kill because of it. Spike planted. Really should not be any more danger in this. Now oh, with the stack dodged, KC should be able to rely on their discipline to get them through this one. No problem. 
the time's an issue. Autumn's been stuffed into a corner. Has no idea that these two players are so close. He's getting bullied. Lunch money taken here. The high-low setup. Very little chance and opportunity. And so 8-8. Eight to eight. And not only 8-8, to eight, Brent, Carmen Corn now actually favoured, in my opinion, because I talked about it on the attack side for FBX, the ult cycle is just monstrous. Look at what they're starting to get up to. Nightfall, lockdown, available. Those are going to start to build up. The pit and the showstopper. This composition has so many tools to be able to chain stuff together on the attack side. One enemy remaining. Oh, guys, nice. And this now might be a little too late for FBX. They had their opportunities early on in this half to make it dangerous for KC. Round 15, round 16, getting that stack that you called out too, and yet weren't able to convert on them. Now they need some hero plays. Because if you just look at things, all things being even, an attack side map where KC is starting to get big ults online, with the quality of this team, FBX should be in the, in the squeeze right now. So they are going to need somebody to step up. That's why the timeout's called. So maybe just rain in Berlin in a little bit might help. But it hasn't been costing him too much, just that one round that just sticks out in my mind, of course, when he donated over the Odin. Yeah, but the thing is, if you have those round losing plays in big situations, they're actually worse than the round winning plays that you get in some other spots. And when we think back to Icebox, one of the worst parts for FPX was that they were only winning 43% of the time when they were up a player when they were 5v4, Which, when they got the first pick. I mean, speaks volumes, I think, about Carmen Core's ability to turn situations like that, but also for FBX, I mean, that is... They were tossing some of those yeah, situations. It's pretty dire, isn't it, not being able to convert. With things like going for those mid-round reclears and trying to take possession of the round, even though you were up players. It's a very risk-positive play style that FBX have. But they can bite them. This is where you got to try to take the risks, though, I think. You can't just sit back and allow KC's ults to come Face at you. Your fear. I fall. Whole cacophony of util. Used to try and clear out towards the sea site. And Shin's ult just being offloaded here, so... Yeah. Looking to try and put pressure on anybody who might be anchoring into the site. They would have been deafened. Shin might have been able to get huge value out of an ultimate there. But they're not overstepping themselves and overreaching. FPX are now going to be in a retake with life, opping, no ults to work with. And this lockdown. Precise time. Should be used here. Ults, util, paranoia, but it really doesn't do enough damage to clear this one out. So FPX forced to run away, tail between their legs. Yeah, the mosh, the nade, none of it finding value. Time now becoming an issue. Here comes the approach. Satchel's in, Dizzy's there, but Wingman follows it up, stunned up. Well, Cosmetic in nature, FBX still. All here now, Shin, last one left. Half of the fuse, they're watching for it. They knew he was there. Barely, barely enough with the time. And what a retake from FBX. They hit the commit button, and they won all of the aim duels. And they'd already used such big pieces of utility too. How, how, how did they win that when they're retaking with it off? It's wild. I mean, look, no paranoia, no nade, no mosh. Remaining. Just being able to win the raw fights, uh, particularly those kills against Martina Tomasi there, being massive difference makers. Head in hands for Zeish. That was a round that KC were expected to win and did not. Big ultimates used too. It's broken their ult cycle. What a time to do for FBX. Same opener for Carmen Court. Out towards C now, like so. That is the snake bot gonna be using. Wow, okay, just spanning straight through. That's one way to clear the pit. If he didn't get it, at least my team at a showstopper might have. And I say broken the alt cycle, but Martin being able to entry the showstopper into Marcy Sting. Being able to get the pit online as well. They're fighting tooth and nail for this. It's making sure that they don't get pushed into an uncomfortable spot. Real uncomfortable though, is the retake. How do you choose to take this one? The pit blocking off all the avenues out towards Waterfall. Thrash, might be the answer here for Ayang. Berlin can't work his way through that one way. A lot of util being used to try and push them back, but look at how difficult this is. I mean, you're just clearing one section of the ult detained. Did catch, I believe, the one clearing through. Need the guns, at least with the fight. It's Magnum, just dominating that one angle. Looks to really just step towards them now when he spots the final few players, and Berlin's out of there. But oh, what a response from Carmen Core. Kept it simple, used the ultimates, got themselves a round win. And that builds up 
the economic safety net that they have. Yeah. But it, now it's nine to nine with all of the big ultimates starting to try, uh, favor FPX. You know, it's going to be a while before Kamiko will have those to rely on to be able to string around together like that. It does feel like Lotus is very based on what ults you have online. FPX, economy disadvantage. But it might not feel like that if you end up running into life. KC just looking like they want to focus on mound control into the C hit. That's again. the same hit over and over again. The deep smoke that Shin places down. Everybody plays inside of it to dodge any attempt of a flash repeat. And this feels like they're just punishing the lack of the killjoy on the other side. Yeah. They're not worried about running into life. A scrimming, man. Practicing yeah. C execs. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> Autumn. Does have his old. Needs to stay alive though. If he wants to use it in this, any chance of it, a tap from the rate with the spike. They are trying to force out at least some util, maybe the ult out of them. Now sticking and committing into it. Ground setup. Backing them away with the rifles here. Kamiko, it is quite passive position, just giving up basically the back section of the site. Does Autumn choose to ult? You're down crazy. to 4v5. Would be a crazy one. That's a, essentially a solo swing there from Lysol. Not really set up for it. Life onto the flank. Lambot notifying the team of his position. There's not too many more pieces left for FPX to do anything about it. And these last two rounds have been just what the doctor ordered for Casey. It was looking on a nice edge that it could spiral out of control. And instead, they've kept it so clean. Only that one round going the way of FPX. And at this point, FPX are going to have to try to come up with a different way of holding on to C. You look at how Kamen Kor are taking one mound control remain. at the start of the round. Shin throws a smoke. They get a teleport into the smoke. They have double faces in case anybody's playing aggressive. They can use fade utility there as well. Prowler when they get in. It's all very rigorous. Look, there's the, the smoke that you can see. Martin's inside of it instantly. They can swing out of this in a variety of directions. Avoid any dizzy. If there's a paranoia, they can hide inside the smoke. You know, creates that little safe beacon, safe haven for them to play around. But they haven't neutralized the danger on the opposite side of the map. No, looking for a re-clear here, but it's a high-low setup. Safety, at least for some of the players. Nana Swarm, got to respect that one. Berlin dropping down. Nightfall now being used to clear. In the midst of all of this chaos, Berlin, man, he was setting up another one-way smoke. Still with the rifle traded. Shin. That one away from him. 50 seconds left. Quite efficient on the attack side around here for Carmen Core. Plenty of time left if they want to take a pivot. But the problem is, the more the time ticks, the more Autumn's ultimate becomes a game changer. You do not want to get in a situation where you're trying to exec with only 25 seconds left and there's a showstopper on the other side. KC hoping that uh, any stack over towards C would have been dismantled at this point because of all of that rubble pressure. It feels like they're going to be pivoting into a B, A to B almost, with them opening the door up. But High low. Set everybody out towards C, and the players, they're running away, but they hear it jumping around. Autumn, he's popped off the old high low setup. Not expecting it. The rate's already there. Dizzy, avoided, but no, just catching onto him. 15 seconds left, has to deal with his player. He's got the spike in his hands. No teammates, nowhere near at all. He's got to try and force his fight out. The rate wins it. There's Eight no seconds. Way. He's got to get this plant down, and it's being covered. Surely no spam, he does. An extension into the round. Monstrous from the right. He's 22 and 11 in the map so far, and trying to win this round almost on his own, waiting for the cavalry to arrive. Port spotting it, avoiding it. The bullets hailing down onto it, but his head just peeking out and over. No right, oh! can't be stopped, man. It's just disgusting. The desk was talking about, do you like his gecko more? Do you like his fade? Nare is out here dumpstering people. No matter what he plays. Playing like this flex initiator role. Sometimes we'll see him on duelist, and you can see why when you look at this guy's talent. So many duels here that weren't favored. Where it looked like an FPX player had caught him. Oh, Marshall. Marshall. Marshall, can you look at me for a second? Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Shin's happy about that one. Just 
time Carmichael setting the sights over towards A. And the push out C from FPX, they knew they had to change something up. And now Magnum's got the read on it. All right, so they were aggressive on C, let's try and push it into A fast. What is that? Spam through, catch onto Berlin. Didn't stand a chance there. Well, they catch the C push yet, yeah, Magnum is watching for it, knowing that. Another duel though, where Lysol could have found the timing. And instead, the Kamen Core player comes out on top, readjusting the aim. It's fallen to pieces. Ayang. It's a good go of it there. Looks away two of them, but not enough to withstand the pressure for all the players there. Now, a deep push from life. He's the last one left. Hold up. Rotations. Players. Oh, it's a timing game. It's a timing game. Ah, Shin's seen the barrel. He's seen the barrel, and he takes care of him. 12 rounds. Now game for Kyman Core. One step closer to taking the series entirely. An 8-4 half. And as soon as Casey got onto the attack side, navigating danger, putting together some excellent rounds. Chaining ults, punishing the C defense, reacting correctly to. And a reminder, yeah, we thought that this would be one of the least even matchups on paper. FPX came into this one hoping to be able to get at least a map, maybe a match win show the global stage that they were capable of so much more than they've done in the past. Another one round away from getting knocked into the bottom portion of our Swiss stage. Face your fear! I fall, suspended once more. Prowler connecting, Magnum holding, watching. What is that by Autumn? Those are amazing. Hell of a time to come alive. His team definitely needed it, and the kills are just being collapsed upon. Shin. He's got his ult, picks up the spike, repositions now, but guess what, Berlin might be one step ahead. He's running his way back over towards A, anticipating this kind of reaction. A plant, though, won't be pushed back. So Shin has a chance to close the case entirely. 1v2, Aang has the ult, a lot of util. Shin reveals his position, Thrash. No bunny hops online, wide swing and face there. Paranoia repositions out wide to the side. Shot connects, snaps to it, Shin! Will not find it. FPX alive for now in the map. Zayang is the one to do it. What a recovery in that round for FPX to find four kills off the back of Guardians. Two players, the two star players, Autumn and Light, just being able to pop. Those initial kills, though, Autumn, again, a key one in dimension. He was 12 and 3 at the beginning of this map. He's still only got 17 kills. If he can wake up, FPX can still bring this to overtime. The big, heavy hitting firepower from FPX has got to come online now when they need it most. Otherwise, KC are going to win this series. First time we're seeing a bit of aggression on the defensive side here from Life. Horns dealt with, smoke forward, so many positions to look for here, but a Boombot now, look at the levels to it, the layers to it. Boombot proudly have to respect it, rendezvous back now, and here comes the C hit, pressure, there, Martin. Vulnerable up. there was a Nana Swarm at his feet, but now there's a snake bite to try and respond, and a flood defense by FPX is caught, is he missing wide, facing Lysor. He's got his two there, the rate is eager to take the challenge straight to them, he's eager to put an end to the entirety of this series, but a spike has been dropped into the middle of nowhere. That's the big problem now, extraction is the name of the game. KC, Magnum's trying to cause some chaos, see if he can pull people away from the seaside, threaten some kind of wild lurk, but... Would they really push through Waterfall here to retrieve the spike? Or is it all a fake? Subterfuge being thrown into the mix. There's a Haunt to clear the way, but Berlin is back up onto the space, into the angle, an essential kill, but it goes missing. And now Waterfall Control is there, it's Order. He's there with a crosshair placement. And White now have to deal with these players. Carmen Core! It's all down to 1v1. And this is it. Again, continuation of the series, or will it be that slam at Dunk Tomasy? Wraps it around, 20 seconds left, Spike still not retrieved! Thomas e. He finishes the job on their feet before you know it. And it's a two-word wrap to the series for Carmen Court in their opening batch of Madrid. That's a great way to get the nerves settled early and showcase that you can do it on the biggest stage. The Global Masters stage. These players 
with such small amounts of experience, but such a great system behind them. And passionate fans that are hoping they can go so much further. FPX certainly pushed them. But no map win for the Chinese squad, who still only have one so far in these three global showings. They'll have more chances. The Swiss system gives them future opportunities as well, though they have no idea who they'll be facing next. You could say that about both of these teams, though. Because, to be honest, when you look at the other matches that you've got coming up, it is difficult to predict who the favorites are. And just to revisit that topic, Bren, we were saying at the start this should have been on paper one of the most one-sided matches you could get, and yet we had a 13-8 where things looked very close. We had it wrapped up at 7-7 and then a 13-10 on KC's map pick. Parity may well be the key word here at Madrid. FPX definitely bringing it and testing it, Carmen Core, but they come out strong. It's a ten to, uh, two to zero, actually, in terms of that map scoreline as well. And like I said, I mean, a series of unknowns leading into it. They don't know who their next opponent is going to be. It's up in the air. They're going to be paying close attention to these upcoming matches, including the one that we got coming up even next. That man is going to be a certified <laughs> yeah. banger, man. I mean, Genji versus Loud, who knows which direction that one's going to go. It's impossible to call. KC are going to be so happy, though, that they got that win under their belt early. It's going to give them the opportunity to watch these other games that are happening. They're a team that loves to prep, loves to practice. They were talking about the fact that it's been difficult to get that level of prac under their belts here. So that's a great start to the tournament. Absolutely. Well, that's us finished. We'll send it down to the analyst test to break it all down so far. Thank you very much, uh, guys. I'm joined by Mimi once again. What a fantastic win and stuff. But it, it is for Keiko, of course, for majority of these players, Mimi, they've never even played on a global stage before, and they just 2 0 at FPX. Yeah, I mean, even like in EMEA, there's a lot of the big matches they were playing. That finals against Heretics was online because the player wasn't there. For them, this match, I think, meant a ton to really get acquainted to that stage, to a bigger crowd, to a new environment. It's a lot of new stuff for these players. And honestly, I think they, they came out swinging. People can critique that it wasn't the stomp a lot of people predicted, but I think that was people underrating FPX, like Eng said in that first halftime interview. This team has shooters. They'll catch you off guard. I think they're a real kind of test team that, that pushes you just enough if you're one of those top squads to be worrying, but it's about how you bounce back, and they absolutely did. Yeah, I was getting a little bit worried there towards the end. Honestly, I felt like FPX, they might have been able to push them uh, all the way to overtime, but the fact that Casey actually closed it out, uh, Mimi, especially for, you know, a player like Madam, who everybody used to harp on him for not being able to close games out, for being a bit shaky in those moments. Uh, I think uh, I'm getting on the Casey train really Are early. you bringing back, like, the really 2021 early. fraud? Yeah, yeah, about and, Magnum. but I'm saying that that's no more, right? This is, a new, this is a new look, and uh, I, I mean, we were watching the games. You were telling me, Naray, MVP of the tournament already, early shout. I would, I'm kind of feeling it. I mean, reactionary Randall, but this guy <laughs> just came out and absolutely impressed. The second half especially, I think they had a great read. They realized there's not a lot of soul in this comp. They just kept pounding this C site. And for me, honestly, when you see this team go for an exec, they commit so perfectly around the utility, just really clean stuff here from Carmen Core to kick off Madrid. Yeah, Casey. and speaking of Naray, he's standing by with Kakuka in the Verizon post-match interview. Bienvenidos a todos a la primera entrevista después de haber ganado Casey este primer partido aquí en Masters Madrid. I'm here joined with uh, Naray. So first of all, congratulations on the first win of Madrid. How are you Thank feeling? You. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good. the KC bundle. Thank you very much, guys. I mean, the crowd has been amazing, so thank you very much. Now back into the interview and the actual questions. First of all, um, how do you think this team has been different from everything that you've seen in EMEA? Um, how the preparation has been different to, you know, adapt into a Chinese team? Um, well, obviously we have, uh, like same thing with every team in this uh, competition, we have a lot of info on them. So it's not really any different from any other team we played. I would say that they're really good at like making really good individual plays. Just absolutely, if you make any mistake, they will punish the fuck out of you. And it's like, it's really hard to be honest. Like, 
we can play perfectly, but if some guy just finds a perfect timing, he's gonna he's gonna kill all of us. Okay, le he preguntado que qué tal ha sido no prepararse para todo esto para equipos diferentes a los que está acostumbrado en EMEA y me ha dicho que la verdad tienen mucha información en los equipos, pero que eh, la preparación es básicamente la misma. La información está ahí y sienten que FPX les ha castigado bastante, no, en cada error que podían cometer ahí estaban ellos para poner la bala. Of course, you had a brilliant performance. Uh, let's call it like that. How do you think this is going to translate into the rest of the tournament? Because, of course, uh, you guys are the, the least experienced in, in some senses. Do you think that gives you that underdog power? Uh, I mean, to be honest, we don't really see ourselves as underdogs or overdogs. We're just a team that we're going to try to play every team as well as possibly can, just play our game. So I don't think it's really going to affect us. Like even though, like you saw at um, EMEA, that we don't need stage experience. We're just the players that we are. We don't crumble under pressure, and that's it. Dice que no se derrumban ante la adversidad, que no necesitan esa experiencia y que todo el torneo debería de ser así. No se consideran que, que, que sean débiles o que, o que vayan a sufrir eh, por todo eso. Uh, real quick, before I, I let you go, um, Chamber, Reina, of course, a lot of things that we do not see in EMEA. Was it hard for you to adapt onto all of that, or was it just the duels? To be honest, like it's not that hard to adapt to. Like obviously, we we knew their comps before we played them, just because they played them in uh, like Chinese league, and so like we kind of knew what we were going into. But also, I feel like a lot of EMEA teams also play kind of crazy stuff as well. So it's not like we we played against a billion different comps and scrims, and it's yeah, it's just preparation, and our preparation is really good, and we know what they're gonna do, and yeah, we just execute. La preparación también por encontrarnos agentes como Chamber, como Reina, cosas que no solemos ver en EMEA. Dicen que la preparación ha estado ahí, que estas composiciones ya han jugado contra ellas en Screams, en, en, en EMEA también, así que eh, se lo podían esperar, sabían cómo adaptarse a todo esto. Bueno, well, thank you very much, I will let you go, we'll see you in a couple of days. Uh, and you guys at home, do not go anywhere, because that's Gen G against Loud coming up next. Red Bull gives you wings. She said he was calling my name. She was naked up against the bed frame. It's a safe bed. This will happen again. So walk away now. You're bad. 
Welcome back, everybody, to day one of Masters Madrid. I'm Yingsu, once again joined by Mimi and Kakuka, and it's time to talk about the second matchup of today. It is Loud uh, versus Gen G. Let's start with Loud because, uh, Mimi, we talk about, you know, teams missing out, NRG are not here, DRX are not here, but Loud are always here. They absolutely are. The color was blue before. We're back to being green because this team <laughs> always shows up to international events. And what makes it so impressive is that it seems to consistently be a new roster. Yep. Loud looked great last season, and they made changes in the offseason. They lost a player who a lot of people considered the best in the world mm -hmm. in Ospots, but now they've picked up QCK instead, and Sada, as he seemingly always does, has reinvented this team and made it back to a global. So it would be normal to think that if you have not been following Americas and you see this change and you see that Aspas is no longer in being such a staple for the team, that probably Loud has suffered. And maybe, you know, not seeing them being seed one is all that we can account them for. I understand that we We've seen some funky compositions, you know, here and then. Uh, they rely a lot on the Viper. We've seen some Phoenix. I think that, uh, you know, coming into the tournament, that might be considered a weakness. But at the end of the day, it's exactly what you said. These guys have a lot of experience with most of them into those uh, international events and the effect and, and all that trajectory has to put into play today. Yeah, let's talk about those cons because Sadak has clearly been cooking. Do we like it? You know, is, is it our flavor or is it an overcook? How do I, I think that it's something it can work, but I don't know how for how long is the thing. So they're playing Breach Phoenix on four out of the seven yep. maps that they're playing, which is crazy to say the least. But the, the idea behind it is you have double flashes. You can yep. go around on example for Ascent. You can be splitting into a site, use flashes on both sides, overwhelm teams. You have great retakes, you have strong site hits, but what you give up is you have no dive agent. So if you're playing into a heavy Sentinel comp or a team with a lot of stall, yep. you really can get punished for that. Yeah, exactly. Also the double controller or on, on Ascend. Maybe we even see the Phoenix there. Uh, but I understand why they want to choose the Phoenix. I understand that the ultimate is very powerful. The flashes are very weak, in my opinion, because of uh, how they stand. And I think that it is, from the outside, pretty easy, easy to counter. But once you're in-game, there are so many things that you need to remember once you're going up against this combination that the conditioning actually favors loud. And that is one of the reasons why they managed to make it so far with this kind of compositions. Yeah, we've seen teams kind of them out. EG, for example, did very well at that, even though they lost the series, pulling out the yep. Odin, shutting down because there was no dive exactly. to get through the stall. It is possible to counter this out, but the thing is the comp has a lot of little intricacies, a lot of little flash combos, little plays that can still catch you off guard that I think give it more depth than kind of initially looking at it would lend you to believe. Yeah, of course. This is the seventh consecutive time Loud have made it to a, a global event. A lot of other IGLs, they didn't make it, but somehow Kukuka, Sadak, many iterations of this roster, he's yes. always here. So talk me through uh, why he's always making it and can we confidently say that this is the greatest IGL in Valorant? Yes. Nowadays, yes, we can definitely say it. He's been proving it, not only in the server, but actually, you know, getting the team uh, exactly what they need, finding the solutions inside and outside of the server, being that kind of reliable figure that can uh, put you through the tough situations and make you a winner. Because it's very different, you know, to just be able to, to, to roll with things, to improve things. But actually, Selak is the kind of player that makes and creates them winners. He certainly is. And it's not just the seventh consecutive loud that has made it here. This guy has brought five Even louder. different... <laughs> nope. This extremely loud incorrect buzzer, wrong. <laughs> what is Loudest. right is that this guy has brought five different individual distinct rosters to international events. Twice with Vikings, three times with yes. different players on loud. He's the ultimate talent developer. Yeah, and I, I also think that we can probably just give him the hat, right? The greatest IGL of this game. I'm quite happy to do that. I'm not sure about you guys. Uh, but I speaking... Yeah, and I'm speaking <laughs> Of uh, speaking of Sada, he's actually standing by right now with Mika Fabs. Check this out. Hey Sada, can we pull you in for just a really quick question? I apologize, you have to drag your bag over here as well. Um, so this is the third variation of this team, and you consistently keep making it to global events. I mean, how how do you keep doing this? I think it comes down to us having fun. Uh, I have great teammates, so. It's kind of easy when you have amazing people around you to do amazing things, so yeah, pretty much it. Well, excited to see you guys have fun out there. Good luck. I mean, they must be having fun playing some of these comms as well. But what's in the suitcase? What do you think? His strats. Yeah? It, All of them? <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's like the, the nuclear football he carries around. He has it's it. Aspas, just in case. 
<laughs> I don't think they'll need him. I don't think they'll uh. need him. Uh, because with QC, QCK coming in, I feel like he's adopted the way of Loud very nicely. I mean, we have a quote from him as well. He was uh, talking a little bit about how he felt about Gen G. He said, I know that Gen G is one that's been showing a good game. They qualify by winning against a very strong team. This is a team that I'm looking at as a threat. The thing is, the QCK kind of adopted the Loud way, but it's not the Loud with Os Boss way. He's not Os Boss. He doesn't play the Jet every map. He's not an incredible, perfect dive player in the same way Ospus was. Mm. He's instead flexing around, playing the Phoenix. He's fitting into Sadok's system. And for that reason, this does feel like a very different Loud than the one we talked about last year. Yeah, exactly. I think that this is another reason that makes Loud the team that, you know, a lot of people support and love. It's the fact that if you change this piece, as you can see, a new version, but it is still a version that works. And they're not just fixated into, for example, Paper Rex being crazy, just playing the, the crazy comms, being extra aggressive. No, with Loud, you can see very different iterations and they still make it work. So it makes it in time difficult to adapt and play against them. Yeah, Loud, very familiar team here on the global stage. But today, Kukuka, they're going to go up against what I would say epitomizes the surprise element we've seen in yeah. the regional leagues. Uh, how did Gen G get here? Well, basically, they beat DRX to qualify here. And it's been a very and long who time. Who did they beat in the, the finals? Just some small team, right? Uh, yeah, just a small team. You might, you might know it. Uh, something about paper? Oh. Right, paper and them, dinosaurs. Paper, dinosaur, yeah, paper, that paper, paper people, rise up. Paper people, rise up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, Gen but, G, I mean, uh, exactly that they made it here after what only being shown at Lockin last year. Yeah, exactly. So that is the, that is the thing. First of all, we were surprised uh, when you look at the global news and you're like, oh my god, DRX is not making it. And when you dive into how and why Genji managed to make it here, how the individuals play uh, uh, within this roster, Lakia also back into this international stage that is going to welcome him with open arms. There is many reasons to believe that Genji is the threat, and especially after what we heard of Screambox that they're winning everything out yeah. here. It is a team to Allegedly, fear. the streets have spoken and Genji no. hasn't lost Gen a scrim since coming to Spain. Which they is, said it themselves, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah. said it themselves. Yeah. Reliable narrator, <laughs> myself. But <laughs> it, it is possible that they have because they were so good in Pacific. If I were to define yeah. the way this team plays, it's just doing the basic stuff incredibly well. They're mostly playing old mm. default comps, the yeah. good honest Valor and stuff, but they execute on it incredibly well. Yeah. Their synergy is great. They're very very good at adapting. And then they also just have players who, what, three of their five players seemed like they were having life <laughs> tournaments in kickoff. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, one yeah, of those of players uh, is the ultimate yeah. rookie, I feel like, coming into yes. this. And uh, let's send it back over to Mika Fabs, who's with Karen. Hey, Karen, can we play for a quick question? Pacific's golden rookie. So this is your first Masters event. This is your first global event. How do you feel going up against the former world champions in Loud? Um, I wasn't playing when they won champs. Oh! <laughs> you gotta love that answer. You gotta love that answer. I wasn't playing when they won champs. I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> he's Man, not wrong. If they win after saying that. That's crazy. I mean, it is ridiculous oh, how great. good this guy is. Let me tell you, they would not be here if it were not for Karen. Their qualifying match against DRX, very close game. And then mm -hmm. this guy on Lotus won like four or five clutches in one game, continually stole yeah. away rounds from their opponent. It's his first year playing Pro Valorant at mm -hmm. this level. It's his first tier one team. And he was out there dunking on the very <laughs> best of Pacific. I think that what it's also important to remark is the way that they play. Uh, you were mentioning, Mimi, the standard compositions and actually a very standardized um, uh, and different way from what it's usually played in Pacific. And when we think about, you know, the DR, it's probably the perfection version of DRX that they've been trying to achieve for years, but actually couldn't, didn't make it. This TNG <laughs> has done it. And the fact that they can win against Paper X, remember the Paper X that, you know, they might sound crazy, they might run this funky things, but they always make it far and deep into tournaments. Do not forget about that. So if they are able to interpone, to just to just be better with playing standard, they, it means that they master what they do. Yeah, my question is, where does Karen uh, compare to the other rookies, because there's some great records. We just saw Narrate Mimi. Do you think he's going to be up there uh, in that kind of caliber? I absolutely do think he is. I think that the performance he showed in Pacific looked as good as Narrate. The thing is, how do you rate between those two international leagues? Because I think we have seen the level of Pacific to some extent
extent. Not up to what it was last year. Pair, P Paper X not playing to the same level. They've said it themselves. DRX not even making it here. Whereas I think we saw a lot of teams leveling up in EMEA. But I don't think that means he's going to come to an international event and not play well. I think he can keep this up. The question is, if it's at the same utterly ludicrous level that it was in their last two series in Pacific, I think that's a lot harder to achieve. But honestly, I don't think that we cannot, you know, expect him to do uh, super well. Also because of the rest of the players that he has on the team. You have the Munchin. Uh, you, you, you have the like, you have texture. I, I mean, mean, texture finally on a team where he can just yeah. play it, uh, the role he wants to play. He's just on jet and he's great. Yeah, exactly. So it is very simple to, even if today he doesn't have the performance of a lifetime, I think that we have to be fair with them and do not expect every rookie's uh, debut on a big stage to be like an race. I expect every rookie's debut okay. on a big stage to be like Nareen. Well, yeah, me too. I expected it's him me. not to lie I, to me, and he I did. Agree. So. I, I mean, uh, we talk about rookies, right? I mean, at least with the uh, players like Nareen, he played in Americas. You know, we had in tier uh, two. Yeah. yeah, but Minibu again coming through tier two. But uh, Karen, officials-wise, only has 17 officials <laughs> ever. Sadak has 46 global games. Not just, just like global. just globally. And it's he's time he's time global. Simon and Mary. Yes. Like. So this is insanity, the kind of rookie going up against, you know, the old guy uh, we're mm. talking about. But is this gonna be the one that settles this? So if if Sadak wins today, are we still believing, you know, the old guard, they're here? Uh, or if Gen G wins, is it time? Maybe time's moving on? I think yeah. we also need to think about about solos. Yeah, I, I like it. I think that you know we've we were mentioning all the upsets and surprises that we had throughout the year. This could be a major one, probably uh, one that is not in many people's um, uh, votes for this match. But I think that we also need to think about about what I was saying. Solo joining the team, uh, having that experience, and maybe changing things up and giving this team a different identity. Sure. We, we we have to be fair and talk about all the coaches that we think make the difference. And I think after seeing them today on stage, maybe we can draw some conclusions conclusions about it. To answer your question though, Sue, I, I think that I haven't moved on, but I think the world <laughs> has moved on. Valorant yeah. has moved past mm -hmm. the old guard, the old teams. That's why so many of them didn't make it here. The teams, though, that are still here with those IGLs who have been here since day one, who have been grinding, that's the proof of the pudding that those are the cream of the crop, which Shadok has already proved in event after event. However, that's not to say that if Gen G plays great today, that's not more faith that there is so much talent out there in younger players, because I mean, how many how many times do we have to see that? We, we've seen it with Casey. We've seen it with this team domestically. We've seen it with like half the teams here having rookies debuting. I mean, the interesting thing is, you know, we talk about how Karen wasn't there uh, when Loud won the championship. And, but if, if, we, if we want to cast our eyes back to old, not just old guard, but like old, old guard, Lakia was there. Yeah. Lakia was here from the beginning. Uh, Kukuga, He's so the, experience. the oldest guard. Yeah, but are yeah. we counting him as like the old guard or are we counting him as a uh, new blood? I think that it also says a lot about him that he is able to adapt into, you know, newer times and just playing with the youth, right? So uh, I, I don't count him as, as as old guard. I count him as old guard. <laughs> he was there before Sadak was there, I feel like. Yeah. No, he, he actually was. Yeah. <laughs> he was there before Mimi was born. No, honestly, when the, la quite. the last <laughs> time we saw Laki at a global event, DRX was still Vision Strikers. I'm not, that's yeah. not even like a troll. Like, that's just what it was. Yeah. yeah. And they, they also didn't qualify to a global <laughs> all the way times. back then. That was when Laki was on new turn. I mean, so much has changed yeah. since this guy last showed at a global. Yeah, and what do we expect? expecting from him then? Are we expecting him to come out and have that experience and have, have a stable performance perhaps? Consistency. That, yep. That's it. Yeah. Like you say, Lakia, Lakia is a steady player. He's always good at the initiator. He has mm -hmm. good initiator utility. He sets up his teammates well. Yep. He also brings the level of experience that I think will help to kind of keep the rookie stable out there. Totally. For, for those of them that this is like their biggest match, their biggest debut. Yeah, and I think we have to dwell a bit more into that initiation. We know um, uh, from, you know, what the teams have been playing and how the meta is reshaping that initiation just because of there's less and less every time, how important it is, that what you do with the information, how you gather the information, and I think that having someone as, like Lakia with all that experience is probably what this team needed and probably one of the keys to their success. I do want to talk about Loud again for a second, and I want to I want to just take my moment to go crazy about Les, because for right, my money, me, coming okay. into this tournament, he looks like the best player in the world. Like, just straight up. I think so he Les, looks like 2023? the best. Yes, they are building their comps on Loud in a way where he gets to play the role he's comfortable with. Every single map, the guy is playing Viper and he is odds out the best Viper that we have in Valorant. The guy's mechanics and aim are absolutely sublime. You, you don't need me to tell you that. Watch any game the guy has played before. His timings he chooses on lurks are ridiculous. Yes. This team lost Boss 
And that's, everyone wants to have us oh, on their team. But what we get instead is people to see how good Les has always been now that he's the real star of the show. We can draw a comparison between what Les is doing with Viper and at the beginning of the game when everybody was playing Jet. I mean, you at least had like one dedicated Jet player. How good and how fast they were escalating and how uh, uh, fierce the competition was to see who's going to be the best Jets. I think that for Viper, uh, Les it's very difficult for him to have a competition because there is no other player that only plays Viper on every single match. No, I'm not just saying he's the best Viper. The best player. The best player in the entire world. Yep, he was my number one. Yeah, I had him uh, up there last Did year. Did you forget Zekin again? No, no he's I, last time. Last okay. number one. Uh, I mean, I'm actually fine with that, but I do think we should quickly address because losing Aspaz, as you said, is a big deal. And we talk about how, you know, lack here is bad, what we expect, but surely QCK is under the most pressure ever from the fans, from the expectations, because he's got to replace Aspaz. See, you, you think he would be, yeah. but I, I really don't think he is. I think Loud is set up in a way where they're intentionally moving his role to something that makes sense for him. Mm -hmm. And I think that with the experience of the rest of this Loud team, they are the the type of team who will do a good job at, at yeah. shrouding him from that scrutiny, not making him feel like he has to fill in for Ostras. Sure, that might be the case for the community. There's definitely going to be fans who are putting that yeah. pressure on him. Don't open Twitter. It's not that hard. And, and and not only that, again, I think that we need to be fair. The, the fact that Q, uh, QCK is not having probably the Aspas performance, can we just remember for a second that Aspas is Aspas? Like, no other player is going to be on that He's not less. He's <laughs> Because less is more. But it, seriously, if after, I think that this tournament could be literally like eye opening for many people and probably big in his own development because we cannot expect someone to just arrive in here and be Aspas number two. You don't need that. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's why Loud have reset themselves. That's why they're a new Loud. Loud was Loud bef before Aspas, back when it was a different team, mm -hmm. but now they're back to it again. They actually never were Loud without Aspas, but it was Sadak, but it's but it was Sadak. Loud. And it was kind of okay. Loud. But they were but, Loud, but they weren't Loud. Okay, we have Loud. We have some old guard. We also have the old, old Guard but we don't have in, the guard. In Lakia, we don't, have, we don't have the guard, but we do have map select. So let's find out where our teams will be headed for this best of three. All right, welcome to match two, map select presented by Omen. Um, we will go ahead and jump in. Gen G, you are the higher seed. Would you like team A or team B? Uh, we team B. Team B. So loud, you will be team A, and we will start with your first ban. We ban Lotus. Lotus, your ban. Yeah, we ban Sunset. Sunset. And map number one from Loud. Icebox. Icebox. Side on Icebox. And we attack. Attack. And then map number two from Genji. We pick Breeze. Breeze. Side on Breeze. Attack. Attack. Okay, next set of bands, starting with Loud, you have Ascent, Bind, and Split. Uh, split. Split. Your band, you have Ascent and Bind. Band bind. Band bind, okay. So we will play map number three as ascent, loud side on ascent. Defense. All right. Good luck to you both. Thank you.
Genji's master's debut, but they have to take on the former world champions in Loud. But hey, this is how they got here by pulling off upsets. But the question is, can they do it again? It's going to be tough. My question here in this match that we're waiting to be answered is how good is Genji's prep? Can they figure out a way to crack this Phoenix breach stuff that Loud has been pulling out? They are playing a style that no one else in the world is doing right now. And I think this is really going to be a test for this Genji team on how well they can come up with the game. Yeah, exactly. And talking about the game plan, I think that we need to go back to that map veto, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Because, uh, you know, I was very surprised. And I think Genji was just as surprised when they saw Loud finding something else that wasn't Breeze. And of course, they needed to take a minute to digest what is it going to be uh, the plan. Not only did they decide to find something uh, different, I think that if this was a bait and that Breeze had always been ready, Genji just bit right into it. I think it is really interesting to see Loud uh, leaving that open, going into that one. A lot of teams, I wonder what Leo's going to be playing. Probably Viper. <laughs> Very oh, thank you, surprising. God, yeah, thank you're you. really welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I think it is really interesting to see them go into this map that can a lot of times be more flippy. It, it can a lot of times be one that is one more of gunfight, individual performances. But but let's rewind and, and talk yeah. about Icebox, our first map in this series. I think the comp head ahead here is really interesting. Loud play the Harbor Viper that they have played for a long, long time. But Genji are going into it with a Gecko KO composition, which I think could actually play up against that really nicely. Those flash mm -hmm. combos, I think, yes. are better than with that, the, say, the Reina Gecko that we saw in that first matchup. It, it's a comp that you can kind of flood through these walls, fight forward on your defense, and mm -hmm. Loud doesn't play against that a whole ton in Americas. Yeah, we also got to mention that this is the first time we're seeing Loud playing Icebox on the global stage once again since uh, the heartbreak they had uh, to deal course, with the incident. in <laughs> Brazil. So the Kukuka, incident. Uh, yeah, I need to see them come out of it here. More confidence and not, uh, not to throw away I your lead. lead. I yeah. see. That's how, that's how I'm going to call the incident. But I think that this is probably the best uh, testing ground, the best, you know, if you want to turn things around in an international stage, this is the moment to do it. This is the way that you do it. It has to happen on Icebox. And to go back into the compositions, I think that that is going to be a very, very big clash. And it's going to come down to a lot of the preparation. And it, it's going to be like the match that we previously had into how to read onto the opponent and adapt bit by bit. Because, of course, you're going to have your ideas and they're not going to allow line with what you see on the server. Yeah, and for Gen G, you know, they have to come out here and prove that they are the number one seed yeah. from Pacifics. You know, DRX didn't even make it here. So uh, for me, again, I'm looking towards them and seeing maybe a closer and more competitive result. Yeah, absolutely. And and for Loud, I mean, we talked about this is a team that deals with pressure well because of the experience. But I think they definitely will want to prove themselves that getting losing that final to Sentinels oh. was just an upset, that they still are the kings of the region. They've ha never had a moment beat back in Brazil or once it came together into the Americas League where Loud wasn't the best team coming from their home region. This is a rarity for this squad. Yeah, exactly. They have a lot to prove, not only today, but throughout the rest of the tournament. They know that the world is watching, but we also know that uh, most of the teams, by getting the, those reps into kickoff, they actually developed a lot, lot more into how to read their opponents and how to overcome every single uh, problem that they see on the stage. Now, I don't know if Loud has had enough. In my opinion, I think they need a bit. They needed a bit more. But this is Loud we're talking about. I mean, we've spoken a lot about uh, Sadak and Les, but they still got Tui's there. They still got Kawa there. These players, they don't really crumble under pressure. I've made the mistake a lot of times of, of doubting this Loud team. Yes. Every time you doubt them, seemingly they, they come out no matter the roster, no matter who's me. on Every time it. I doubt them, I was like, when did I doubt them? I think everyone has made the mistake at least once in their life. You know? Not me. Oh, not you? No, You've no, never no. doubted like... Who can tell you, when they were playing against Fnatic, I literally went and take a shower, and, and then suddenly Fnatic just won. Well, let's uh, <laughs> let's talk about this agent select here. You guys have mentioned it already, yes. and this is what we're going to see. Yeah, exactly. Um, but when we were talking about Loud, no, still having the Sova that probably has lost a little bit of his effect, I think that maybe when you combat, uh, when you combo it with the Harbor, you can have a little bit more of that sectioning and actually getting the exact information that you want. But I am a huge fan of Gecko, and especially uh, with Ko here, I think it can have the right edge onto how to uh, Genji can win this map. On this attacking side, Genji is going to be really willing to 
fight forward, especially on their B hits, flashing through, taking space in Snowman. I'm looking to see how well Loud can contain that aggression and play up against these flash combos because their strength does come into those light rounds, into the retakes when you have this super oppressive double controller utility to work back in. Yeah, and also we don't know what we're going to get on Breeze either. So uh, I can't wait to jump into this map. We talked about the old guard, uh, the new guard. Uh, let's, uh, let's send it over to some new kids on the vlog, eh? How do you guys feel about Pansy and Hypo? Oh, it feels good to have you back, Michael. How are you doing? Yeah, it's good to be back. Yeah, missed yeah. it? Short little stint vacation. Uh, love that. Love that yeah. view. But you have a great matchup to come back to here. <sighs> what um, a delight to start yeah. on Icebox as well. I mean, some really interesting points from the desk. Uh, for me, this composition it is okay. such a beautiful head-to-head. -head. And it's yeah. part of you down, down to what we saw from Texture, obviously, regionally, yep. and, and how this is kind of just designed to, to counter 2 uh utility <laughs> and put <laughs> Texture in that danger zone. How fun to see him really under the microscope here, but we have to kind of talk bigger picture a little bit. It'd, it'd be a miss. A lot of people Absolutely. at home have been rating Gen G. The stocks Pundits, are high. Yeah. Talent, analysts backstage. I mean, everyone's been talking them up. Now, it's been quite a few people's first and last mistake to doubt loud in the past. Uh, am I wrong to still put so much faith in Loud here? I don't know where I'm, I see I'm, I'm kind of with you. I, I, I haven't bought him fully to Gen G, but I think this matchup is the one that could potentially validate a lot of that hype. If they can come out here, even, I mean, dare I say, in a loss, put up a good performance. Mm. No, I, I think you're right. I think it is just kind of how do we, how do they look? What does Gen G look like on that international stage? Which is what this is all about. Does it translate well? Have they got what they need? We know that Loud can do that. They've got you know, the previous reps. So there's a little tick in that box for me. But beyond that, we wait and see how they look. Because it's not like they've been flawless throughout their regular season. A lot of doubts have crept into people's minds. But we digress. As the round does begin, of course, that will mean that Gen G are on the attack. Loud on the defending side. And actually, we've got a triple walk up middle. That's going to be Munchkin's duty to try and deal with it, at least note it early enough. But the plant's going to come through. The attention is there from mid as well. So Kalanzine doing well to dismantle Munchkin and open up the options of pinching the site. But I like what Genji are doing, focusing a little bit of that pressure towards CT. Yeah, taking some space elsewhere, getting themselves set up ahead of... Now coming back through, but Sadak oh. found two here for three onto Texture. And actually, oh, potentially no. getting a third, but Karen there to shut it down. Less with a response, but the fuse already coming through here, Lauren. <laughs> the beautiful cleanup from Loud. And the blink of an eye, Genji unable to really convert that space into anything, any sort of security there over the site. And you've got to say, Sadak was the big proponent of that, right? The one who kind of cracked back through, dealt with that site pressure. It felt like he was really just lucky at kind of taking that CT space in the end. He kind of fell a little short when it was only him doing it. And as I said, you lose so much of the presence on the site itself. But again, explosive start for Loud here. That's a nice way to shake off any sort of doubts. You're like, All right, we've got a, got a good little beginning. Buy back here, though, for Gen G coming in on the Stingers. Yeah, interesting to see what the plan's going to be. Well, I'm just going to run it down towards a site here. Stacked up outside. Some bodies in position here for Loud. Who is it? We've got what, two E's just with the Ghost. Um, Counting does have the Bulldog, so there's a little bit of backbone to it. And less as well, so actually pretty well equipped for this. But those Stingers could be a bit of a surprise coming out from this. Once they get into Maze, yeah. Yeah, I want to see how close they can get until the penny drops, right? And it's going to be about now. Texture going to note it, one for one. Trade out, less on the back line. Dealing with luck here, but now this is the problem, right? Can they still control this? Can Genji break into securing this deeper part of site? There's so many bodies here. I mean, the fact that actually they've been able to maintain oh. control, too, he's going to find one with a ghost. ETL will fall, and there's two left to find here. So unfortunately, uh, well, Munchkin does find one at range there. I was going to say, now that it actually slows down, Genji in a tricky position. Karen has actually got himself a Bulldog here. And he's been one of the players to watch, right? I know a lot of people talk about texture, but Karen's mechanical capabilities off the charts. Not going to get it this time, though. Sadak again, just kind of adding that little full stop to the round. No threats in the end. They do recover the Bulldogs that were maybe brought into question, but they're fine. They're back in hand, and they weather the storm. And Gen G, that Stinger Bite, where, where'd you rate it on this? Uh, I mean, again, if, if they're able to convert that into getting a little deeper on site here, once once this utility kind of fades out, and uh, now have these open sight lines, down. that's where the Stingers then become a little more difficult. Once you're still stuck ahead of site, nobody's in nest, nobody can really press it towards spawn or towards heaven. Uh, stingers feel a little flat at that point. Yeah, they fall short. Now we're going to have the Sheriff round coming out. Um, again, beyond this, I'm, I'm just looking for the game to almost settle in. The tempo is very high right now, very brawly. They're both willing to challenge. Uh, I want to see if Genji do temper pace at all or if they continue along this sort of trajectory. 
this round not really going to be the highest indicator of it, but it's a good time to test, isn't it? You look across, see what Meteor's up to, see what he's finding out, what can he maybe derive from these sort of setups that Loud are playing? Can they pull these rotations? Where's the space? Kalzine maybe spotted two or three members, Genji, there. Happy to give up the spate, but Sanak actually almost catching the cross back here, so Loud with a very good read on Genji's reposition here. Meteor didn't find anything on the other end. A very, very lax hold towards B, putting QCK in a position here, but delivers on the first. Munchkin will fall. Yeah, he's, he's not backing away yet. He's no. still good for another. Yeah, decides can't fall away from yellow. That's not particularly a problem. He's still got the KJ utility to support him. You've still got Sadak controlling middle. The one thing I'll say is that Meteor's got some good info here. This might have to then be an adjustment for the round following, that if they've noticed the deep setup coming out from the KJ, rather than maybe keeping more of an attentive look towards tunnel. Any more damage to be had here? Lakia with a good attempt. No connection. Now just carry on. 1v4. Uh, Spike could not be further away and comfy for less. A clean start here for Loud, a 3-0 scoreline. Genji toying with a little bit of investment here to maybe try and catch them off guard. Any ults nearby? Nothing really on the brink for Genji. A couple of ultimates on the brink, though, for Lao. Kao and mm. one off the Hunter's Fury. Lovely. The lockdown next in line after that. We need to see a response here from Genji, though, because the credit's starting to stack on the side of Loud. Wow. Themselves very comfortable. QCK looking like he wants to go for the operator, too. Kind of considering the options. I mean, he was up to 7K. He, he has every right to. Fancy his chances, but uh, again, very different setup. Hard to get a bit of a beat on what Loud are up to, and it looks like Munchkin right off the rip wants to take space. Sadak has to respond, respect that he can't do this alone, because again, look at where they were pressured, where they were looking at the start. Sadak just waiting. He's got the support now. Calling Kowenzin. Two E's as well towards CT. So they've responded. I don't think that knife was going to really locate much. Clearing close, so they know that yellow is the next step. Yeah, not a massive tail on the back of that. He's still going to take the space here. Loud, happy to concede. Mm. It really seems like there's any pressure point here for Genji to try and exploit. No, I'm looking for that late mid presence, right? Meteor maybe starting to drift that way, but Zadak will be watching it. Whether or not he can win the fight, yet to be seen. Looks like the deep flash is being set up. Anyone going to try and utilize that? There's the high flash going in, and Sadek does find Lackey, but that's not the mid lurk. Texture breakthrough towards CT, and he looks to secure some space. But again, remember, roll your mind back. The pressure on the site was too much before for Genji to handle. And once again, from a similar position, less punishing. It was Sadek before, it's less now. And his texture with a world of trouble. Less out on top, and this again, Loud have lovely positioning on this side hold. A great awareness from Loud to understand how Genji are going to approach versus this composition. Talked about the possibilities behind Munchkin and Lakia to set up texture. You see, Loud just concede all this space. They anticipate exactly what's going to happen. Sadak actually shutting down Meteor at the perfect time as well. This position is going to be the death. I mean, even that didn't even catch that. The recon pinging just behind the wall, anticipating mm -hmm. Genji had stacked up, ready to challenge Two E's utility. Did they note the operator? I don't know if that. I don't think I heard it rattle because it was QCK mostly holding towards A solo. So I don't know if they've quite got that. Maybe understanding the possibility, but see if they're fully aware of it now. Uh, time to shine. QCK. Five potential victims. So Sting is again happy to run this. And the right read from Lao. They have the three players here. There's the flash that forced him away. That was a kill and a half if he got the chance. But lovely sight pressure. This is lovely. For, that's much better from Gen G. Look at how comprehensive that take was. It's forced them into a retake. It's taken away the operator. This is very nice. Up to a few around the lockdown available here for Lao, though, if they choose to invest. And actually, weapons haven't been recovered. So these stingers need to tuck into sight here. Still find value. Two weeks caught off guard here, will fall. Love that from Texture, staying a little bit deeper, willing to put his life on the line, and they're just willing to brawl it. Willing to fight it out. Sadak trying to take the space back, but there's still so many players. This was outstanding by Genji, really turning the screws on that side take. They want Sadak dead. Trying to get out with the operator, but he's hunted down. Texture close by. Can he keep hold of this? Sadak desperate to. Trying to leave a little note for them on the way out, but. Yeah, it looks like he's made it away for now. I'm just keep eyes on this, because that is a prized possession, and Munchkin's got it out of his cold, dead hands. Now, Mike, that sight take, that pressure, there was no safety there yeah, for Lau. I mean, you can see the value from the utility. I mean, both players force off these early angles. Nothing really from the operator, no pressure on an early angle. And straight away, Texan and Karen. 
find kills. And earlier on, we see this was the intention with that earlier Stinger purchase, but mm. this time around, able to find the value on the way in. Yeah. And Loud have to respect it. Yeah, that was really and so quite with special a, to watch. With a, with a response there in, in terms of a kill to trade back for Loud, they have tools, they have the Hunter's Fury, the lockdown to come back into that, but didn't seem feasible for them. Well, they found something that worked. Might be running it again. That was a Mastercraft, Mastercard Thrifty too, in case you missed it. That was still those Stingers, those Sheriffs, and now with a little bit of the ults behind it, they should be able to clear sight very comfortably. Gen G showing us what they can do here. Obviously known for the individuals, but this execution works well. Now we see Loud with numbers, though. This could be the difference. There's the lockdown. There's the counter utility. They're starting to build back in and force them away with the spike planted. How do they deal with the back line, though? So what did Loud get done whilst this lockdown's going through? The Hunter's Fury posted as well. QCK on the flank, found by Texture. Beautiful headshot here, and now seemingly just get nothing but space. Look at the HP bars here for Gen.G, but Les will remove Lakia. Good shot, but they're still not on the spike. No. The defuse still not started. There are problems here for Loud. Zadak with the first tap, but it's traded. Again, still numbers sitting well enough for Gen G. They've got to break that back line. Kalanzine desperately trying to do so. Texture, he's on it, and he's absolutely belting in this game so far. I, I've got to so say active. It. He came all the way back through there and found yes. a kill in mid. Wow. Closes out the 3K on site. Kalanzine did for a moment slip the net there unnoted, but couldn't find another kill. I said it was crucial, really, what Loud could achieve yes. in that time of the lockdown. But it, it, it wasn't anything. No safety here. Too. He's not even really able to secure a half defuse or, or anything with the Cove. Mm. Early timeout called here from Loud. Probably the right choice because, I mean, they've been presented something that they don't have a solution to yet. And that was with I mean, a thrifty and, Fury a, yeah. and a lockdown. Yeah. That was meant to be the one where you think, oh, okay, well, the last one they caught off guard, maybe didn't have the opportunity to use all that util. Okay, well, this time they're still on the full buy and they've got everything they need. That still worked out just as well. So credit where it's due. And starting to see texture warming up here. That's yeah. another tick in the box. And I, I, I don't believe this time I was really to make many adjustments this early on, especially with this scoreline, maybe to just quell any sort of momentum Genji are going to get off that thrifty mm. and a fast hit. Definitely keep our eyes on uh, what the response is if Genji decide to continue with this pace, because now, obviously, Bladestorm invested. There's the pit available, a lockdown of their own in the hands of Meteor Munchkin, one off the Null Command as well. So definitely tools to continue with that sort of pace and seemingly get our sight for free off the back of the lockdown and secure with the pit. Now, I'd have to have a bit of awareness here. Well, they want to dig a little deep. Obviously, QCK now no operator to play with. A little bit of a broken buy, actually, if you look at Cow and Zine. Yeah, on top of that. Two players be able to get that first. Two, he's just brought down to 600 as well. And they looked like Genji were considering readdressing that B site, but back to what worked. And a more proactive beginning on the B side of the map as well for Loud, already going to post up QCK and drift back over. So maybe a little bit of a different look, but Genji have tools now. They have that lockdown for themselves. So once again, should allow safe passage towards the site. That's the response there, yeah. Less going to put out the pit to try and prevent any sort of value on site. Can he get back into the yeah, look Texture. Texture, look at the challenge! Look at that guy! Oh, my word, Kalanzine. That's a little bit of an upset for him, but he took down Texture at the very least. I guess you're going to have to get what you're given at that point, but Lakia didn't relent. He didn't fall away, and he still got two. And now into a 2v3. Numbers favorable to Genji, and that post plant again, brutal to break. What can Tui's and QCK do? Luckily, yes, QCK did get a rifle now, so maybe a little better equipped. But that back line, it's always that last sentence in this Icebox chapter. How do you get around it? Look at the util again. QCK, with a glimpse towards the spike, gets warded off. Meteor, willing to live close by. Again, the utility poured in. Meteor getting closer, just ensuring it. He doesn't want to even let it go to chance. Well, lose his life, but the time's already lost. And again, Gen G showing off a little now. Texture. With a hero play here to shut down any sort of re-aggression from Loud as soon as that lockdown is I think it's actually a second ahead of it as well. Mm. So he's catching maybe a couple of people with their backs turned. We you know here, yeah, Karen's here. That's unfortunate. To obviously lose less in that situation because he did post the pit. I, I was curious whether or not he had the timing to get back into that to maintain, but... <laughs> oh, they're loving it. One more round to Oof. tie things up. And even with that broken purchase previously, now they able to maintain rifles here. Feels almost ridiculous that they can get a buyout, right? It just felt 
so out of kilter. Texture catching a stray there. Mm. It's the first time we're starting to see Gen G re-explore a little, already show something towards B. It's, it's not a great deal yet, but the pace feels different already. So Loud knows something has changed. It's just what's changed. See the pings here. They're also going to hear QCK fall back from B main here. And you can see Gen G stacking up behind this, leaving Meteor the solo lurk. So QCK will be called upon here. This is a lot to handle. And he takes the scalp of one. Caron gone. He's going to fall back safely. Probably the right choice here, but they did lose less on the other side of the map, so almost trade out here, right? You've got less gone, Karen gone, but now where do they go? Genji have a little bit of the run of the map here. They can try and pull those rotations, and a lot of faith being left in QCK because they're going back towards A. And now with a decent read on this, on the back of that information, and Karen Zine's Aldrone, but... Are 35. they expecting everybody? Yeah, it's a very late hit here, too. He's throwing up another wall, but the null command will be the catalyst here. Genji going to try and brute force their way on here. Texture to lead the charge. And Cowan's in so blind. Again, these side takes between Larkia's flash, between the flash coming out from Munchkin. It is just gorgeous to witness. So well crafted that even in those final seconds of the round, when it was late, it still looks comfortable. This asks a lot of QCK. He started well, he's going to have to end even better. The third. Oh, yes. Oh, Whoa. my word. I he was almost he on for the adjustment yeah, there. Yeah, I thought he might have that, but Meteor there, safe pair of hands. And Gen G looking like the real deal here, Mike. I mean, over to, able to overcome Loud in a situation where, like I said, they, they actually timed that perfectly with the Owl drone. Only spotting Meteor, but not over rotating. And uh, this is something that I uh, can notice, especially in the secret matchup regionally. Uh, Genji really struggled with some of these later round hits where, you know, they don't win out on the initial plan. The perfect example Sir, here nice! of something maybe they've cleaned up oh, yeah. in the downtime. Uh, they're happy with it. PCK trying to get in their faces, though. Oh, oh. dear. Uh, you feel a bit silly Did now, you don't you? There? Yeah. The it awareness. Like? Obviously, the knife has pinged him, so diligent by Genji, but Meteor. A very deep position already. Mm. All the way up to Boiler here. Oh, it's not what Completely you wanted try, there. though. Yeah, no support, no flash, no, no, nothing. And there's Meteor striking as well. They've just found layers to this. They found availability, right? They're starting to really turn the screws. Sight still. Oh. oh, my word. A little bit of damage, yes. Don't get me wrong. It is a 1v3, but you look at the HP. Look at what Les is working with. Always oh, barely breathing. A wheeze his way out of this round, probably. Texture, though, he fancies his chances. Deeper angle, tricky to clip. Diligent from Les. Doesn't matter, though, does it? Gen G tipping the scales now into their hands. Five now to the good. And Loud haven't had an answer. And I love seeing this kind of little bit of a look back towards you know, testing middle a little bit here. Didn't do it instantly after learning of that space that Meteor garnered way earlier in this game. And now starting to flex into it into round nine, starting to really punish the stack that they had to put towards eight. But still not able to break Genji's approach. And just coming back to uh, what we did see regionally, it, it was on the attacking side where Genji looked a little lost for you know any sort of mid-round ideas, how to really pivot out of tricky situations here. I'm mean, not even really seeing what their win condition was, which was Munchkin kind of dominating late rounds on solo efforts, Texture doing the same thing in the early round. A little bit concerning here that Genji have relatively easily taken total control for the first half of Icebox here. It's only one round separating them though. Deep flash. Trying to work off the back of it, Texture. Texture quarter, yeah. Yeah, a little, little unfortunate, and we've seen that position do well. Yeah, Loud still seem to have such a good read on this B take. But anywhere else, if they go away, they're screwed. Yeah, Loud, just with a quick reminder of who they are here. The Munchkin, rough position. Does at least have time on his side, but he's got a lot of targets to handle. Go goes up. Lovely adjustment, but now there's problems. Nine HP and a bit of a dream, and that is not where you wanted nah. it to go. Still got to do more here. Pressure up close and personal. QCK going to close out the round with a defuse coming in from two E's, but again, loud problems weren't on B. It was that A take that we saw Genji running against them that worked. It's similar to before, where we see them obviously concede this space. They're, they're happy to have somebody watching the backside of the Viper Wall, but they anticipate all of this aggression all the way towards Snowman. Less actually the one to shut it down, seal the deal on that control. But Genji already built up a bit of a bankroll with that string of rounds. Comfortable in the purchase. 
just about getting back towards some of these key ultimates coming online. On the side of Loud, Kaunzin and Tuis, who have theirs available. Operator back in the hands of QCK as well. Curious what he can get done now. Okay, well, it's been noted early, and it's a 3-2 split for now, right? So they're going to try and keep touch on both sides of the map. But Sadak, are you ready for this? Absolutely not. Karen was holding this. We've seen a couple of rounds of them holding deep like this. It got checked on maybe once, but it's not every round. So a little bit of variety, catching Loud out once again, opening up that opportunity towards A. QCK, you look at the backfield, this, the timing is everything, though. He's got support, two, three players all looking towards middle. This is massive and a great shot from him. He needs to play this out. He needed more than that, but luckily for him, there was support, but Caron again still there. Still getting the favorable trade, still getting the spike back to hand, and it's just less now. They have no idea where he is fully, right? They're going to lose track of that, but with 50 seconds, what does less do? I'm curious now of whether or not he's even caught a step. Knows that obviously the turret was removed previously. Well, not they have a read on where Meteor's utility is going to be, I guess, by default. He'll be here to hear the plant at least. He's guessed correctly. But it's just... Oh, my word! Oh! Caron! This guy is impressing me. You got Texture kind of the headliner, right? The guy towards the top of it. Yeah, absolutely ripping open some of these rounds. But Caron mechanically looking sharp to close. So, again... Very impressed with Gen G here. Very impressed. And I'm curious if, if this is kind of something that, that Loud want to drill with. Sadak to be the one to force the issue all the way out of B. Whether or not it's just that the turret's there, they anticipate that the, the, the heavier lean for Gen G is outside A here, and Sadak's going to maybe have a 1v1. Or maybe somebody lurking up towards spawn ramp. But shut down so quickly that it gives Gen G so many options with the Killjoy falling first. Just checking if anyone's getting up close. Not going to be rewarded for that, but again, kind of Genji slipping into more of a default, right? Maybe expecting the Loud to be going exploring, which they've been rewarded by in the last couple of rounds. That mid presence, yeah, that yeah. lurk up B. This, this is they, they've they've truly got that kind of um, I, I'd say understanding of the tempo yeah, that yeah, Loud definitely. wants to do. So. Almost trying to bait it out here with Lackey posturing a little bit with the Odin, but Loud not biting. Obviously, less down on the stinger, so whether or not you see any sort of aggression here or wait to maybe retrieve a weapon off a trade or something like that. The knife going to give things away. Coming up on 45 seconds left here for Gen G, but their sights set towards eight. Four play stack. High flash goes in. Oh, come on, going to come out here. Yep. That's going to be ready to go. So again, we, we were crediting and complimenting these late round hits. Loud have numbers, but do they have the ability to stop the roll from Gen G? Already, sight is theirs. It's so comprehensive from Gen G. Yeah, Viper's pit too. What are you going to do against this? So many tools there. Hang on, Karen just got wall banged. The, vibe, the pit's down. Oh my Lockdown's going to expire here, and actually the regress here on Tui's and Cowan Zine's ultimate. Texture, hold on. Hold on, still in a good position. Oh, the what? try fight from Sadak. Ridiculous. This is how loud the lockdown. Is. Okay, and there it is. Genji forced to respect it. Have to drift away. Still trying to keep eyes towards the spike. Where is this? Great shot towards Tui's. Wants the farm. Gets the farm. The lockdown. He got detained. Oh, no. He just jumped a touch forward. Munchkin now. Forced to go in here. Has to hold it together. He can't do it. Loud fighting back in the last round of the first half. Barely closing this up. What a ridiculous back and forth for the final round of this half. So many ultimates in play. The pendulum really swinging. And such a crucial kill to shut down the Viper's pit. That's the stranglehold that Genji had, Lauren. And set that drive by is ridiculous from Sadak. It, it just felt inhuman. Uh, you know, Loud will give you a couple of those, I think, but I think credit where it's due, that five round run that Genji went on was masterful. Outstanding. Let's see what the desk thinks of this.
Oh, I'm so happy. Icebox is back. What a start. That wasn't a great half of Valorant, but it's time to jump into our HyperX reflex of the moment of the day. And this one goes to Texture. Yeah, exactly. I think that this is probably the, the, the moment where we see Genji back into the game after Lau gets all those rounds. And it's Texture getting all these kills and doing so in a couple of rounds in a row, actually being, being that determining piece into, hey, guys, I cannot go alone. I need you to follow right after me because they're very well positioned. But if they, if we all Overwhelm them. We can make it. We can make it through. Texture and Caron, both these players who were great in Pacific, showed up here in the first half. But I think what made it for Gen G was that flash combo and how they built those eggs. Mm -hmm. The KO Gecko combo, especially when going A, was excellent. And Loud was always forced to play into retake. But towards the end of that first half, Loud's retakes really started to step things up. In particular, some of these rounds where they're kind of intentionally playing back, waiting till they hear that flash combo, and then instantly swinging forward to flash. It was really great adaptation by Loud to bring a half 6-6 six to six that really seemed like it was going to be dominant for Gen G. Yeah, exactly. And now thinking about, about the switch, like how is this going to look from the from the defense? I want to see Texture just jumping up on them. I want to find that balance that I've seen from them in many other maps, uh, uh, just knowing when to aggress and knowing when to give the space. I feel like there was a bit of overheating coming from Loud in some of these rounds just because they wanted to show they're the better team, they have the upper hand, and I think that calming things down probably gave Gen G some advantage. Here. Yeah, loud on this attack side when they're playing the Harbor Viper, they're really good at kind of playing the mid round a little bit, using the Cascades to take extremities mm. and then having these powerful late round sight hits. But again, this is going to be about the retakes. The Gecko KO comp is really strong at that. Genji honestly should be favored here. Yeah, I don't know about you guys. I smell a little upset coming up. But let's jump into uh, back into the second half and see if it, if we are indeed going to get an upset. Yeah, Sue, I completely agree. Smooth on that one. It uh, stinks in here. <laughs> it stinks. You can smell it. The upset is in the air. Six to six. There is something in this game that we can't ignore. Genji coming out looking good. Backing up the words that they were happy to bring out that, hey, we weren't here when Genji, you know, when, when Loud were winning Chavio. None of that. None of that. So it's like, okay, we'll see. We'll see if it's actually there. If it's all just a little bit of hype talk. But for now, quick pace coming out from Loud. Making no secrets of this, but Texture, Lakia, they're all there, and they are all winning out these fights, leaving just Calentine and Texture. He's going in! <laughs> a Love smile on it. his face as well. Love to see it. This guy is getting fired up. And this is a pistol round that's almost designed to take control back, get themselves back in term, it, it, sorry, in control of the tempo after that first half, but Loud absolutely shut out of B site. Bodies in place here from Gen G. And a good boost for them as well yep. to That's try and carry this across one. into the second half. Oh, that's huge. All the things that can go right have been, but this is quite audacious. Loud could punish this. Oh, or not! Or not! Apparently, Munchkin just gets away with murder. Eventually goes down to less. But he's just left a massacre on the ground by A. KG gonna be smiling about this one too, looking clean enough. Certainly not flawless at this point, but still. What can less do with this anymore? You can maybe claim pride's sake. He's being toyed with though. Tex is gonna back off from that one. He's not liking what he's seeing, but still, what a start here. Yes, yeah, Munchkin really putting up numbers versus Secret. They individually just looked absolutely phenomenal. Have another performance like that here uh, with that round two of the second half. Mm. <laughs> Already off to a good start in that regard. Unless he's going to be given a consolation here. Maybe. He's got to make sound to drop off here. That's, that's Karen to be the first, but once again, shut down here, Genji. Two rounds to kick off the second half. In early response here, you saw how quickly Genji were able to carry away once they did get control in the first. That was after Loud started 4-0. <laughs> You can't answer much better, can you? You have your probably, you know, well, your, your, your big name players, Texture already having a great start. Then, you know, you're pumping up Munchkin as well, starting to feel out the game. I mean, Munchkin's one away from his ult. Yeah. It's, it's right round three. there. Yeah. Wow, got to answer back here. He's going to get it. So the orb retrieved here outside eight. Job done. 
BSK had a chance there to swing on to Lakia, but respecting it. Careful. So contact found, and BSK actually dashes all the way out. Yeah, they're drifting across already, going to pull those rotations in. Once again, down to 55 HP, but obviously with the ultimate. Maybe a second chance at life here. They do decide to invest. Two Guardians, two Bulldogs. Next year with a scope in hand, so... A little bit hesitant here. Yeah, well, there's a pause here. I mean, they have successfully baited out the ultimate, but oh. Munskin still delivers. QCK will fall. And you know what? If he didn't just get that round he had one prior, I don't think he's swinging that on the HP, but he just delivers it again. Carry on on the back lines. Great oh, shot towards Sadak. And they've just capitulated. They, they've they've faltered, which is very anti-loud. And they pick it up here. Munchkin is still down low. Kalantin's going to find Meteor, but no, Munchkin's still going to hold that line just perfectly. 15 HP, still Falls delivering. Away. He's still holding. He's buying time for this flank. Look where Texture is. Look at the minimap right now. Come back to watch him, Munchkin. If he can buy a couple more seconds, precious time, that's perfect. So he's going to tuck himself in, make him try and hunt him they get down. They spotted. They spotted the rifle. He's cleared, but there's Texture. One that's what it was all about, trying to buy time for him. But now the position's noted. But 13 seconds, this puts two. He's right under the gun. He's got to get that plant, or he's got to toy with the time and try and catch out Texture. But Texture's looking ice cold. He's looking like a killer. He's, he's moving in, closing in, and he's got it dead! Gen G off to a flying start in the second half. Beautifully done. Munchkin running down the clock. And actually, the kill comes through. It's traded out at the perfect time by Texture. To his just so many question marks after that. Tries to get the cove down, tries to bait out with the first tap of the spike, but. Munchkin, man. Like I said, 15 HP, still delivering. Digging his heels in here. That's a 3-0 start here. Loud back down to a broken purchase. Some pistols, a stinger. Two easy and ultimate to work with, but not much else really to pin your hopes to. At this point, unless, you know, Loud do rekindle a little bit here, that's rough. That's rough. That was ambitious and didn't work out. Um, now down to the three. This is when I start worrying about the larger picture of the map pool because we are walking into the unknown after uh, this. I didn't want it's to talk early. about it. Yeah, it's but... early, but it's looking like tens just around the corner. So it does make me worry about seeing Breeze. It does. So I'm sure the desk will you know, hit on that afterwards and we will, I'm sure, harp on about it. But this is certainly scary times for Loud and the fans as Gen G looking meticulous, <laughs> flawless in this. Double digits already here. Loud. I mean, very precarious in terms of their finances here as well, because they're going to buy back in here. Potentially, if they concede this, it's 11. Mm. Uh, this is a pivotal round in terms of the outcome of map one here. Sadax unable to really convert the damage through the wallbang there. But again, I don't think it really would have made too much of a difference. Gen G well equipped on both sides of the map. They're having fun. Every round just seems fun to them, which is, it, it sounds silly, but it makes such a difference. Yeah, and the, and the concern being coming into round 17, there aren't enough real playmakers in terms of the ultimates here to string together for Loud. They need to do some heavy lifting here to find their way into this. Yes, two is there, but feels a little flaky in a full 5v5 execute to throw that ultimate out. So early. Texas spotted out as well. I mean, look at look at how deep Genji are pushing now. Yep. They're so happy to, to continue this limit testing here and forcing loud. I mean, That's look at the fine. minimap now. There's there's no other options really. Too risky to go anywhere else. So. Well, loud are still considering. With 60 seconds on the clock, they're going to potentially re-explore mid or A. I just feel like I haven't seen loud so play like this in a long it's time. It's hesitant once again. Yeah. Noted in the first half. Which is bizarre. I, I, it could prove a nice little fake having Sadak do this to be, you know, the one to show. But you're leaving the rest of Loud, you know, QCK, uh, Tui's, to walk into A and just hope they succeed. There's still two players there. They haven't pulled these rotations. This That's is, a big kill, though. That is huge. But again, I'm looking at the two players on A. Now, less court texture. That's the one that mattered. There is still a man close by. That being Lakia, can he do any damage? Can he be the man? No, not this round, not now. QCK with a quick beheading and looking to dominate, looking to control this site, make sure it was worth it. A long played fate coming out from Loud. Very valuable and very well handled. It's just Meteor now, position is noted. And Loud looking like they clawed one back here. 
I was going to say, need to, need to keep it clean here. I don't want to see Meteor getting any other consolation. Mm -hmm. A must win round for Loud, and they deliver. Containing four rifles, a little bit better in terms of the progress towards these ultimates now. A crucial kill from Sadak and Kowanzine to remain outside B site here. Try and catch a rotation. It just so happened at pretty much exactly the same time. Yeah. The other half of Loud did find success on A as well, catching, I believe it was Texture to full first, and Akia second on the chopping block. Operator back out for Texture here, Blade Storm in hand, but I said with that round victory, actually Loud now with the upper hand in terms of this ult cycle. Nothing available just yet, but look towards the Hunter's Fury, obviously the pit and the lockdown in this composition. All within touching distance. Well, the mid walk will have limited success, at least initially, because of the turrets. That should alert Lau that there was an attempt, but no one particularly fussed by it just yet. Still very focused on this approach. Again, these 3 2 splits. Last time it was more kind of 4 1, Sadak being the one to pressure towards A. And look at the pull of rotations. Four players in response. This could be quite, you know, the, the masterclass if Sada can keep calling these fakes that are pulling oh. the rotations. Lucky his timing was just out of this world. QTK caught unawares. But. Kowenzine's there to back it up, so still going to keep players close by. But now Loud needs to strike, right? They need to yep. kind of find that timing to hit B here. They do. Caron is holding. They need to capitalize because Munchkin's slowly edging, making his way to, through mid, under tube. Plant will come doing. I don't think Karen can deny. Oh, nearly catches Sadak on a retreat, though. Okay. They got do, what they wanted. We do have a late Hunter's Fury here, though, so whether there's any backline awareness or Munchkin's going to be the one to potentially try and shut that down. I should invested, but not gonna find it. yeah, not going to find anything on the back of that. No. So now we wait and see. Does that pressure start mounting? Can Gen G break the back line? They've already pulled Munchkin back through towards a standardized approach. This is now going to get scary, right? There's the Hunter's Fury going to be drawn out from the tap of the spike. Spray from Tui's is good. Follow up is better. They're holding on to this. Munchkin going down and Tui's exceptional work there. Loud finding life finally. And a couple of those and potential to break the funds of Jedi. Actually, even looking at it here, Cameron's down at 2350. Uh, maybe that's why we see the timeout here. Mm. You have to string something together, but really well coordinated here. It's One QCK, uh, heartbreaking to ever see a death like that. He's just a split second away from maybe slipping into a more dangerous position. But the overall picture, it's loud achieving great success on these kind of fakes to an extent. I say fakes, but it's just kind of showing presence on the other side of the map. I mean, yeah, I mean the it's, just, it's, it's, just a wide, it's a widespread default that they are finding value on both extremities. But it is so widespread and it does make me slow enough. For now, it's working, so I'm not going to doubt it, right? It's silly to doubt something that is proving fruitful. But as said, when you saw QCK catching some really bad timing, fortunately, Kalanzine was there. But it's quite precarious. They're willing to make these risks, which is working out for them really well here. Forcing the timeout from Gen G. The gap getting close enough, they thought, okay, okay let's let's pump the brakes a little here. We don't want that momentum. Almost a response to what we saw from an earlier timeout from Loud. So very symmetrical in that matter. So we kind of check in on the alt. Almost again, very symmetrical in that regard. Both very close by. So this isn't just back in Loud's control. I think these have been some quite precarious rounds they've run. Obviously, Lao being as good as they are, they make them work. Exceptionally the, done. The, now yeah. we're into the meat of it, though. The concern being, if you have somebody that's going to deliver for Gen G, uh, I guess across the map, and from an individual standpoint, players like Texture, yep. like Munchkin, potentially right. even Karen in these situations. I mean, it was called upon in the previous round, but not much of a chance to really stop that plant from going down. That's when it, it, it feels a little uneasy. Ooh, late switch as well. Just about, yeah. So Texture going to go for the Operator solo in our A, it looks like. Oh, uh, yeah, very, very early indication here of some aggression on the side of Gen.G. Loud have to respect it now. I think initially they were going to throw a little bit of U2 out. <laughs> Texture. Able to control that op shot. Could have been rewarded wrong. Karen. How did he get seen there? Uh, not entirely sure, but both snake bites used, and now it doesn't really have the security to play up close and personal. As Loud looked to re-aggress, but will shut down the Owl Drone. So question mark still here. Audacious from Munchkin to be the one to go back in. No oh, way. come on. That's filthy. Backbreaking for Loud as well, just to lose out to that judge. They've got the upgrades they wanted to. Karen Car was willing to die for that. That's fine. He'll take that every day of the week. You guys lock it down afterwards. I've done the damage. Less than QCK now in that position at yellow could be the end of the Munchkin. 
still holding on to this one. QCK gonna try and check close, loses out. And less now, there's so much and so little opportunity. Uh, this is so bizarre. I, I think at some point Karen spotted whether or not they don't see he's got a judge, I think is the issue. Mm. Uh, the knife obviously removes the Aldrone and immediately Gen G re -aggress. They post up close once again. You see here, just under the minimap, obviously the suppress onto Cow and Zine. Loud just caught off guard a little bit here. But a nice gambit, right? A nice little just, okay. Sure. Get the judge, play up close, see what we can do, right? And, and you're willing to give it a run. We're back into a more traditional looking yeah, round, it seems. Way. I think apart from QCK, but he does have his ult, so that's not a problem. But a brawl looking to break out. Lackey, the first one forward, finds the scalp of two. He's looking for the fob. He's going to get at least Whoa. attempted it. But backups arrived. Caron, Munchkin, all here. Dizzy goes out. Lackey is still buying time. Stanak still putting up numbers, though. Body starting to drop here. Can he do any more damage? Lackey is holding his nerve. I don't know how he's still doing this. Oh, less lovely work from him. But look, you can see the crunch, right? Texture is on the way. Meteor, how long do you hold here? How long are you going to stay Look at the fight from Texture. He's on the way, but... He's already on the outside of this lockdown. Oh, my word, Meteor. Scary to me. A uh, little hello? bit curious. Yeah, don't know what the game plan was there. Mike, did I miss something? A little bit curious. There, there is a space in that, so he had a chance to at least, I don't know, take a 50-50 back up into the corner there. Better than a zero. <laughs> Because then Tex is completely caught off guard. Yeah, that was... Scratching my head a little bit over that one, but uh, I mean, maybe just a little frantic, maybe expecting Loud to push up and maybe, <laughs> I guess, lack a little complacency. But after the start of this round, where Genji time and time again have shown they're happy to be aggressive yeah. on A. Yeah, 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 left scratching their head as well. Maybe we missed something, maybe so did Genji at that point. I mean, I, mean I, I did touch on this initially, the plans for Genji, uh, talking back to some of these series that we saw recently, okay. yeah, the yeah, initial yeah. plan, and things kind of just go in really skew if after that falls apart. They're not really knowing what to do, not really having any direction when, you know, there's sort of a little bit of chaos or there's some yes. questions to yes. answer mid-round and uh, a reaction is really required, required from yeah. them. But yeah, uh, I'm not sure. I, I, it's, it's, uh, and funny enough, it's a timeout from Loud here. Um, maybe to let him just... Uh, take stock of things, yeah. We're yeah. obviously getting towards the end of this Gen, Gen G up on 11 rounds, but... Look at the string of rounds, though. It has yeah. been the two back-to-back -back for Loud with those lovely kind of, you know, wider defaults, you know, more exploratory towards A as well. One right back into it, and then the answer just then, there was as a very uncharacteristic round, kind of caught us all off guard. But we refocus and we look towards what we're seeing, and Genji's money has suffered. Yeah, I mean, two Guardians and a Panda has come into this, but look at what the old cycle is potentially going to be in the next round for them. Snowball. Yeah. Lots of things at their disposal. Less than two E's ultimates on the other side. QCK, an operator back in hand once again. Did he have to continue? I mean, it's 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 four deep here on a side. Yeah. Now going to try and make a quick decision on the back of that. Oh. <laughs> Shots. Les absolutely decapitates Lackier. Les is pretty decent at this game, isn't he? Texture going to swing on it as well. Yep. Oh, the bait in though. They tried to play him in off it, but it looked like Lauda was starting to really get that read. Starting to feel a bit more comfortable, seeing a little bit of that diligence kicking back into place. Meteor and Munchkin just trying to make anything happen, and Les is having none of it really, yeah. just free farming now. He's already got his ult. Oh, the moves, not gonna happen there, Munchkin. Really, really well handled anti-eco here, and that's the sort of composure we expect from Loud to punish these sort of plays. Keep Gen G in check. I mean, to say that though, 11-10 the scoreline still need to tie things up. Blade Storm out of the equation, but these big ultimates still available for Gen G. Lockdown, no command, and the pit. They are looming, right? There is that slight worry. It's just kind of hanging over the head. I mean, I, yeah, I'm worried because we're already at this scoreline here. When do they to pull be the trigger? honest, with, with how Genji have performed, the nature of some of these round victories, mm. it's been really telling. They were the ones really that set the precedent at the start of this map, and True. in my eyes, have continued. I agree. Now, operators come out for QCK this time. Looking to maybe work off the back of that Al drone, clearing the space towards B. We do see there is a player tucked in by Yellow, and. Massive rotations, actually. Four players being called back in towards B. Maybe just off the back of a lack of 
any audio cues, any presence towards A, maybe putting stock in this now after falling My foul flash. for those A presence plays. But already you can see that flash coming in and the fight starts. Karen with a fantastic double, finding less, finding Kowenzin, and they are running. Yeah, texture. The anchor over towards A, so Sadak. Ooh. Ooh, you seen him? Does catch a glimpse. But a crucial 1v1 here. Does he go again? Texture, you can see him. He was considering it for a second, but he thinks better of it, right? Play safe, play your life. The double pump. Wait, yeah, two is just pipe. completely look, look, look fake at, this out with that utility. Look at that spike running. That's so good. And the lockdown. Oh, and, and Jor, if Sadak feels devastating. like he's being a galaxy brain, get into middle if you feel like he could, but he's going to back up his boys, get back towards the site. They're going to get a plan out. They don't know the level of success they've had, but they could not have asked left. for a better outcome, making the impossible possible. And now how deep does QCK go here? Oh, that's perfect. Meteor's out of there. Fair now. 3v3. Ridiculous. Munchkin still got ult, still got knife. Not much utility outside of that, though. Where do they find that success? Yeah, no UCK at yellow here. No flash to really open things up here. So it's going to be a dry gunfight on the way back through. Munchkin drifting pretty deep here. Here we go. This is a scary time. Spot him for a second. A pixel out of place. But he's, he's worried about the fuse texture. Punishing QCK. I thought he saw him, but maybe it was just a stray shot. Dewey's now getting paranoid, getting pulled in. And maybe Texture going to close that gap. He's trying to. Zanak in the same sort of position. And now Dewey's. Oh, he's overwhelmed. Gen G. This time is down to the wire. Oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> no way. And again, it's a little chaotic there because I don't think the communication is clear on whether or not the diffuse is being stuck. No, they had no idea. If Both like... individual players from Loud, I think, spot out two members of Gen G, but they're just charging to it. Maybe they think they had the timing down yeah. and they just need to get bodies off the spike. But this kill on the Sadak here almost seals the deal with two he's spamming so much. 0.26 will get Gen G to map point here. Oh, wow. That is a kick to the guts for Loud, though, isn't it? Feeling winded after that one, after calling the perfect rotation. That felt done. Yeah. But Loud had done there. everything they needed to. He's going walkabouts and Sadak. He's missed his timing to catch this. It will eventually show, sure, but by now. That's... Space gone. Oh, the, oh this scares me. Mm, this yes. scares me. Look who's lurking, look who's waiting. Texture could be in for a blinding round. Bear in mind, he could get played in Belakia here as well. There is that opportunity. Uh, this, this is rough because the pings are coming out. You can see on the minimap here, Nest and Pipes have been pinged. No idea about Texture. Uh, oh, my he God. Wait? Does he keep his cool? He just hard cleared under on the wrong side. Oh, my God. They line up. And he almost knocked him down. Belakia swings in at that last minute. Punishing Kalanzine. This is looking like Loud is on the ropes of map one here. Opportunity dwindling. Less than two. He's going to have to dig deep now. Yeah, he had detained. Up on pipes here, it's less. Oh. Left standard, but Lackia will fall now. They need more. It, that can't be enough. It needs to be more. A 2v3. Spike still in the hands of Tui's. And Les trying to control the site. Does have the pip. Obviously, the old command going to re oh. remove that. Me will fall here. Les going to get another one. No he way. has indeed. No oh, my way. God. Les. <laughs> what an absolute beast. When Loud needed him, he was there. And Gen G just seemingly no awareness that he was going to stay tucked into that corner. I thought that was going to be Texture's moment, right? You're looking at that round, you run it back, you look at the minimap, surely gets to bail out from Larkia coming in. Less. What is He's that? He's just so clean. I mean, even here to react to Munchkin, like, throwing his life as well. oh. on the line. God tier. God tier. Gen G to pump the brakes a little bit after a heartbreaking round loss. And that will break the bank as well. Ultimate's invested. Karen still with the pit, but I feel like Loud come out of that gleaming. <sighs> Definitely with the upper hand here. A pit of their own, one away from the lockdown, two off the Hunter's Fury as well. And a shot to the heart of Genji, who probably felt like they were closing out map one there, Lauren. Oh, man. Yeah, you, oh, come on, you're feeling that, right? Like, you, as said, you look at that mini-map, you play that back in your mind, you think, how does that play out? You're putting Genji up there, right? Yeah, that's, anyone would. But then there's one man less standing Absolute there. Absolute superstar. Talent. What a talent. And that is a, again, when you talk about value of kills, Les has got 25 kills. He is currently leading by a country mile.
the value of those kills just then have kept Loud alive in map one. In the value of round 23 alone, sorry. And he's broken the money. Yeah. Money's in tatters for Gen G. It's never stopped them before, but in a moment like this, there's still those nerves now. Sadak, if he can sniff this out early on, Turret's going to go out. Uh, yeah, Sadak immediately up, bolting away. Something. Yeah, exactly. He can feel it. And Sadak's calls, I've got to say, have been quite nice. This, especially on this half, I've been liking what I've been seeing. How much info does he get? Okay, a little, a little bit of info. Not going to have the that, full weight behind That should it, but be it should the green be light. Absolutely is. U utility invested now. A site up for grabs. QCK happy to take this space away. Meteor, will he get a chance to find anything here? But. He's only got a Guardian, oh, he's found one! Massive, massive work, and now they're halted. The rotations are going to be in. Loud might have dropped the ball at the final hurdle, but Meteor getting a little too ahead of himself, still want to do more. 50 seconds, there's time for rotations. Texture, the only one actually in a position to catch this. Doesn't overcommit, but it's a little bit of a fake. It's pulled Lakia. Is it potentially going to pull Karen as well? They spotted the cross, but Loud immediately drift back towards A. Because and they, look at the map now. They've been conditioned to respond to this. This is what Loud was doing during those string arounds. So now it's all on Munchkin. He's trying to play ahead. Uh, this is so brave, so bold. He's going to take one, two. Oh, I thought a third That's could have huge, happened. though. But it's massive. Right the site is open, though. And with less still alive, there is always going to be a chance. And he has a pit to play with here. One snake bite left. Two he's commits to the plant. Plants in, first fight, he's got it. The drop down, did he spot it? It doesn't matter, Tui's is there. And now just carry on. This guy has to step up. He's got to try and do something, but so much against him. And look at the reposition from Les. So hard to find, and Tui's going to try and play his life. But Karen takes it away. 1v1. One one. He knows where he is, but what are you going to do Les about is wrapping it? heaven. He's playing so him. much time. But can he get a safe defuse here? I don't think he can actually get an angle Can he on span this. it? Can he stop this? Because Karen ain't stopping. He's going. No way! It's going to be 13, and it is! Gen G steal away the 13th round. Heartbreak for the hero, Les, having to watch that slip away. Karen, the rookie, Ice closing cold. out with a Red Bull clutch versus none other than Les. What a ridiculous way for this map one to conclude. <laughs> but the penny drops just too late here. Bloody hell. What a, what a map one. What that a map one. That was ridiculous. Come on, this has been unbelievable. I've got to have the death thoughts. I've got to have map two. Let's get out of here. Excuse me, would you mind taking a picture of us? Oh, no problem. Thanks. Ooh. Yes, problem. You need Verizon. Trade in that old thing and get a new iPhone 15 Pro with tons of storage so you can take all the pics. So many selfies. A preposterous amount of panos! That means panoramic. And as many portraits of me as your heart desires. How about none? None. None, yeah, none feels right. Trade in any iPhone in any condition and get iPhone 15 Pro and iPad and Apple Watch SE all on us, only on Verizon. Red Bull gives you wings. My head in my hands, listen up, says my teacher. In front of the class, he says, if you're not a believer. I love you, I want to stand on you, but a shape up and pay your dues. I love you. I'll be on a flight soon We'll be in the same room Got a note on this public end But how do you do? Better get it in my own medicine for you Never gonna make them think or stand Wishing me closer to 
of ember Give me a breath Like the fire so remember Help me with some translation. Solo, congratulations on that first map win. And now, up next is going to be Breeze. And uh, at Pacific, we know that this is a map that you guys beat Paper Rex on, but it can also be 50 50 for you guys. What's your plan? 어 일단 첫 번째 세트 승리 도착 축하드리고요. 이제 다음 세트가 브리즈인데 사실 젠지가 페렉을 상대로 브리즈에서 승리를 거두기도 했지만 어떻게 보면은 반반 갈 수도 있잖아요. 어 어떠한 계획이신가요? 어 저희가 조금 브리즈가 부족했던 부분이 많아서 저희가 마스터즈 오기 전에 준비를 좀 많이 해가지고 네 조금 그런 부분에 있어서 저희가 자신이 있어서 픽을 했기 때문에 네 자신은 있습니다. 네. So uh, before coming into Madrid in Pacific, we saw a lot of uh, points where our breeze was lacking. So we tried really hard. We, did, we put in so many hours to uh, fix those and really add on to our breeze. And I think we're, we made the breeze stronger. So we're extremely confident. So all I can tell you is that we're feeling confident. Ooh, well, after that map and after that, a little bit of a teaser. Cannot wait to see this one. Let's see if Genji can close this out. Oh, I can't wait to see it either. Genji, Genji, Genji. Welcome oh. to Masters. What a statement they made here, uh, Mimi and Kukuka. You just can't help but love this team already. Yeah, I mean, they played incredible. You, you see it in all of these reactions, just how much it meant to them. But, but for the squad, it really seemed like they were in control for the first part. But then the yeah. last seven or so rounds of the game, Loud stepped up. Les was out there dropping almost 30. Sadak seemingly couldn't make a wrong call. But Genji still prevailed through that. One two critical 1v1 rounds yep. and pulled it off. Yeah, exactly. And actually for being a first map, a first map in a, in a match here at Masters Madrid, I think it's crazy the amount of overcook and overthinking that has been going into some of these rounds. Uh, we know and expect that Gen G is going to be, was going to be a little bit more aggressive from the defense and actually seeing Loud adapt onto it, as you're saying, like the duel of the minds. Some rounds being crazy just because of it, because of taking it, not the extra mile, but the extra 3,000 miles. These teams were so closely matched that it really came yeah. down to the little things. There, there's two rounds where Loud plant the spike, go for a reflank, but it's just not planted in quite the right position yep. to, to win because of it. It really came down to and what a way to close it. And yeah, I mean that clutch yeah. beating less in that situation to end the match is is ridiculous. There is just something about loud on Icebox. It just feels unlucky uh, at this point. But let's take a look uh, at Texture and QCK because mm -hmm. we were very very hype about both of these players coming into this. Kakuka, what did you yeah. make of uh, their performances? Uh, I think that uh, QCK struggled a lot on the attack. He was not finding the impact that you would expect from a jet coming onto Icebox, knowing the support that it was uh, coming with it. And I think that Loud had to help in, in that regard. I think he went zero and four in those first duels, just on the attack. On the other side for Texture, I think that he was one of the pivotal and key uh, parts to making them get into the game and actually find that success later in the game. Yeah, and I agree with you. I, I don't think this was the best map for Quick, but for the other side, I mean, Texture was ridiculous. Yeah. I think both the guys who are big question marks for Genji showed up. We saw Kara 
run being clutch. We just talked but about that's that. A, very with Genji, the clutches always go their way. Like, but, it but there was the question still of could they continue it against it's the true, best at true. an international yeah, event yeah. against the like best. Cloud. Uh, not this year, not this year. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think that they have proven that these players can still come compete at this level and still have that consistency uh, that they did show back in Pacific. Yeah, I mean, loud. they have a lot to do now for map two. But first, let's hear what STK has to say ahead of that map with Mika Fabs. Hey guys, Mika Fabs here once again, and I'm now with Coach Pew and Arthur to help me with some translation. Now, Coach Pew, we saw that um, Genji, that map was really, really close. So this roster is a bit of an unknown for a lot of people. So how did you guys prepare for this match? Então, como é que vocês fizeram para preparar com esse novo roster da Genji? Ah, eles foram um time que jogaram muitos jogos na região deles. Talvez o time que mais jogou no mundo no kickoff. Jogaram muitos mapas. Então, como acho que eles mudado na line up, a gente tem muito material deles para estudar. So overall, like they prepared with a lot of maps that they had, like even having like new players or not, that was not an issue for them. Awesome. Well, let's see if Loud can make a comeback in this one. Now they do have to make a comeback, but they've done it before. Let's not forget that this is a Loud that ended up winning uh, a trophy at Champs. But Kakuka, we don't know what they do on Breeze. Uh, what would you like to see on Breeze? I mean, nothing too crazy. Maybe a little bit of innovation or something that they may have picked up for other reasons. And I love that you mentioned in Champs because that is probably the last time that we saw them playing on that breeze. It's been a very hot minute. And as we were saying before, they have been banning this map constantly during kickoff. But we can also think that that was a strategy or maybe something that wasn't ready by the time. Yeah, we have Aegis Alert ready now. So let's take a look and see where we are going to go. And Mimi, what do you think of this? Loud is playing the default comp. Uh, it, it is interesting. They've been cooking on four out of their seven maps with the, the Phoenix breach stuff. But I think both on Icebox and here on Breeze, that doesn't really work. You do need that dive agent. And we've seen teams try out the Yoru like Gen G, which is yeah. new. And I want to talk more about that composition because it's Meteor of all players yeah. locking in the Yoru here. It's the only flashes they have. And honestly, I really like this comp, Bea. I, I love the fact that they're playing this double duelist. We know what the, uh, what the, what the, Sova, what the Yoru is capable of doing in this map. The support that is going to come on to Texture. I think that this is one of the most important duels. We know how comfortable they are also playing on that double controller. I think that the way, especially that now that they're starting on the defense, after they're up one map, if they have a strong start, if they manage to get those mind Euro games into um, the heads of Lao, this should be a 2-0. This is the map, Breeze, that is the aim check map, the, the mid-rounding check, where, where it'll go into the most chaos. So for me, I'm really looking at Loud needing to step up. We need more out of QCK as the sole jet on this team. We need to see the Sadak, who is pulling off the perfect calls towards the end of Breeze, or a Genji, who is looking incredibly hot right now, might have a big upset on their hands. And also think about it, Loud knew exactly that Genji might bit into this, but Genji is not scared. They're also bringing in something new. We were talking about how important the and this trap, the preparation coming into the match is, but for this one, it's not going to be that simple. Absolutely, and for Gen G, right? Like, this is a team where I think that element of surprise can help them out a lot. They tend to play a lot of default comps, a, mm. a lot of normal stuff. Them coming out and, and having new ideas for Madrid, I think is really good for a squad like this that has shown the fundamentals. I like them taking this extra step by trying yeah. to get ahead on the meta and come up with not necessarily an original comp, but something different from what they've shown before. I think it's funny because we say it's not original just based on what we say for a month. You know, it's like, it's been just a month, but I mean, a lot of teams month. play this Yoru comp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the reason wasn't even in the map for yeah. sure. Uh -huh. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't really. But if we go into think about how this first map went and how aggressive they were and the success that they were finding into bringing back that chaos that we were, have been mentioning during the day, I think that this is probably what they intend with this composition. Is not only being aggressive every round, it's planting the doubt in your opponent's mind that that might be happening. Think about the implications for Loud though, the team that yeah. has made seven international events in a row. They've had events where they haven't done well. They, they bombed out at Copenhagen. They went out early in Tokyo. It happens for them. But this is a team that has expectations when they go to international events to succeed, to beat everyone else, to be one of the best. That's the pressure that's on these players. And they're really on the precipice of being upset here. Yeah, it would definitely be an upset, but it also would play into the Gen G story, right? This is how yeah. they got here. They upset everybody. 
maybe Loud is uh, carrying on the NRG curse. I mean, an America's team has to lose to a Pacific team in the opening day. That's just tradition. Uh, so yeah, with NRG is. not being here, somebody else has to do it. But I want to give some credit to Solo because we want to talk about old mm. guards. When Lakia was here uh, and it, uh, at the last global event, Solo was his teammate. They played on the same team together. I forgot yeah. Solo was and, on and that now, team. That's yeah, crazy. So, uh, the fact that Solo is being able to kind of go from the playing career into a coach and also come up with all these cool things and uh, structure things that we've seen, we got to give him some credit. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. you absolutely do. Gen G, if there's one word to describe them, it has been discipline throughout mm -hmm. their run in Pacific. They're really good at, at kind of doing things right in the late round, at setting each other up well with utility, at playing the basics, the fundamentals, at a really high level. Sure, it sometimes descends into the clutches, into the badness, they can thrive there too. But I think that's the identity that Solo has instilled in this team. Yeah, exactly. But hey, this was just one map. I know that we're very surprised by the performance that we saw there at Pacific. But I, I think that going into the tournament, Genji is going to be able to learn a lot from their opponents. I think that from this icebox, even just today, after this day is over, they're going to have a lot to learn. And I don't think they're going to be the kind of team where Next team is going to beat Icebox into them and kind of dismantle them. I don't think they're the kind of team that is going to struggle with that. Well, earlier we asked you guys at home to vote in the MasterCard fan poll on which International League will win it all. I wonder if things might change. Hey, okay, let's after be honest. This game. Let's be honest, Sue. Everyone who voted Americas was you. Was no, part of Sentinels. No, was Sentinels. Everyone who voted Americas is Sentinels. The question is yeah. not in Portuguese. It's in English. It's all Sentinels well, fans. I am Spanish and I speak English. And you say <laughs> that that's it's true. Like, I mean, obviously, so Br Brazilian fans also do speak so English. You're some me, of no them. one from Heretics voted here because I feel like you're putting. I feel like you're putting some words in my mouth no. that I didn't really say. <laughs> all I'm, I'm gonna to say is the bus. I'm I, sorry, girl. I want to run this poll again tomorrow, depending on what happens later today, uh, and see. But uh, I'm gonna put a pin in that because the map is ready. We are uh, also ready to dive into Breeze and hand this over to your casters here. Pansy and Hype. Yeah, I don't really know what we're walking into, Mike, if I'm completely honest with you. We kind of theory We're free crafted. balling. We're yeah. free balling right here, to <laughs> be honest. Free balling, I <laughs> yeah. think, is actually the phrase. Yeah. Um, but no, genuinely, because we were kind of like theory crafting veto and kind of talking through options and what we thought might come out. Breeze was never in that conversation. No, no, it isn't. Uh, and to see Genji now pull out a, a little bit of a switch up as well yeah. is a massive concern for Lau because through all of the Phoenix and Breach and all of the, call it madness, call it overkicking, sure. whatever, we come out here with this composition of Breeze. <laughs> so that does actually bring into question whether or not it was left out here and you know what, what even happened with the veto. And uh, again, won't speculate until we do get an answer or something oh, course, in an interview, but was this a potential to see today for Loud, period? And if so, uh, yeah, I, look. What's the response to that? Yeah. Because if you look at the rest of the map all with QCK coming in here, and I mean, I was having this conversation the other day with GB, you make anybody play that much Phoenix, and they don't come out looking like the best duelists in the world. Sure. I'm sorry, they sure. just don't. So to, to come in here, and uh, it, sure, it could be a bit of a reassurance that we do see him on the jet. It's a bit more of a vanilla comp. Then maybe Loud dial back into, you know, where they're... Classic. Yeah. Loud. I, I, it, it does feel like they somewhat baited the veto, right? You know what I mean? Like you power down something for an entire season. Basically, well, I say entire season, it was kickoff. So let's, you know. Yeah, but see, and again, it's, yeah, it's no, weird because it feels like a small sample size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But for what it is, it was their perma takeaway. And then to adjust and leave it open as an option. You know, if you're Gen G, do you think, well, surely that's... But Breeze is such a... Uh, for me, it, it, it always becomes such a question mark on the day. Another yeah. team can simply just outfrag you and beat you on Breeze. Uh, unfortunately, that's that's just the way it happens sometimes. So to yeah. have it as kind of like a... Uh, maybe... Th that's why I'm hoping for Loud. It's, it's just something... It's something of a pocket pick. It, you, you're hoping so, right? Is your you're perma ban, so. Is your permaban your pocket pick? Oh, my brain hurts and I'm scared because I... I uh, if I'm going to be honest, uh, you know, I'll be transparent. First time for everything in esports. I suppose I thought it was going to go Loud's way, just because sure. you know, from yeah. what I'd seen, what I expected, I thought, okay, I'll, I'll put it there. Close game, but, but Loud's favour. For all intents and purposes, this should now be a 2-0, in, in, in Correct. my eyes. If we're going off don't, of don't, don't what Gen we've seen, Gen what we expect, I don't Gen know. Genji didn't look fantastic at this regionally. No. Uh, I mean, they, they struggle versus RRQ. Uh, and, and to come out now with a new composition, something a little bit quirky, which Loud have stood the test of time playing against teams like, you know, yep. international teams, the teams yep. that bring out Kerbals, your Fanatics, your Paper X's. 
Is this going to work? When you take map one in the nature that it did, <laughs> it might. I don't know. I don't, there's a lot of theory crafting, right? We can sit here and just kind of talk it around the houses. There is a little bit of delay, if you didn't notice, we are. There's not like a tech pause delay. Like they haven't done the. Oh, they haven't flown it. Yeah, they haven't flown a banner. Uh, yeah. I think they did that so on, that's a on short purpose. One. You know, um, that's a short one when they're not doing that. Yeah. Uh, which is a good thing. Uh, so sorry, watch parties. You'll have to actually say something to your chat for a little while. You know, get to work. You can just chill out afterwards once the game starts, like normal, sliggy. Um, but genuinely, well, that's who you were throwing shade. I was curious of who you were directing that. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta, gotta go. For Sliggy's speed. definitely drawing something right now. You reckon? He's yeah. on the map. Yeah, well, he sh should be. I just put just a chair on the string. All the dead footage we've got going on here. <laughs> I mean, for once, yeah. I didn't pass back on camera. Usually it was be... That, now that yeah. is because of producer Kevin. We've bribed him enough, and we just start swearing at the camera, so he knows better. Uh, but no, we love producer Kevin, um, one of our favourites. And now you've said that, there is a very high chance he'll just throw us on camera. So I'm yeah. going to sit down there'll so be a, there'll, be, there'll be a flash of us see ya. ahead see ya, of Kevin. the map starting. I do oh, see... The countdown's begun. I do see a clock oh. ticking down. Sorry for the delay, folks. It's us. Um, so since Mike's back, thought we'd uh, treat you again. But roll your mind back just a moment or two ago. Map one was mental. 13 to 11. I Genji. still can't believe that ending. What an end. <laughs> Less is clutch to the diffuse the round after. It was wild. So let's you know, hope we get a little bit of that. But no one knows because Breeze was loud's permaban. Genji didn't look fabulous, but the new comp, it's all unknown now. Loud on the attack, Genji on the defense. What the hell's going on, Dan? Sure. And really, for me, early on, we need to see some sort of comfort from loud because obviously there were a few hit and miss rounds, a few 50 50s that didn't go their way on map one. But coming into the question mark here on Breeze. Definitely want to see them composed mm. and in control here. And they're going to drift very quickly over towards B. No real confirmations, I mean, other than deep down halls, the whereabouts of Gen G, but with Munchkin and Karen posted up here, as I say that, Munchkin actually drifting out, but contact is found elsewhere. Yeah, look how quick Les has got to this as well. He was so deep by that point. By the time they got contact, he was just by the pillar anyway. Good trade out for Munchkin, can at least keep touch somewhat on this. But again, it's not like QCK is stopping. He's really trying to take a lot of space here. Meteor and him, very close by, but doesn't really make much odds. You're looking at the likes of Munchkin, you're then looking at two E's. It's kind of, you know, the fight on the fight, but who gets the timing on each other here? And actually, looking at this, Munchkin's got a lot of room. Finally oh. noted by two E's, good timing to turn. QCK not going to spot Meteor crossing and loud. Very comprehensive pistol there. And never really in doubt. The trade comes through and now they're able to just steamroll their way yeah. onto B site. See if we do see Genji toy with the idea of any purchases once again. Yeah, because they went for that Stinger bite, yeah. didn't they, before? Yeah, well, Stinger purchase and the Sheriff's to follow up as well. Let's clean up here from Cow and Zine. Maybe looking for, I mean, we don't say this often, but maybe looking for some early confidence boosters for Loud. So yes. often they ever really have to rely on those. But uh, hey, it's, I, I think seeing the teams that have come out to this, they, nice, there we go. <laughs> Not bad at all. Did actually take damage from that too, but yeah. seeing the kind of change of the guard, right? Yes, I, I'd say that Loud are one of the only remaining old gods here. There's very few who've been able to stand out. And yeah, of course there's roster changes to it, but still at least having you know, a core who's been to previous events. It's, it's a whole different world this year in Valorant. And I think a lot of teams know it. And right now, Genji showing us a great deal. Good little work from Les there unfazed by the pressure over towards pushing out and beat. And a little bit of attempt in middle. This is this round, somewhat of a throwaway, it feels like, as it is just kind of that uh, Marshall and two classics. That's it. QCK looking to explore, though. Hey, Les actually pulling a rotation here, we're not. Meteor and Nakia considering digging them out, not with the rotation coming through. So Karen will be called upon here. Sadak just turns oh. his head at the wrong moment, but two E's from the back lines. QCK with his deep position, punish lack his rotation. Meteor just going to try and get an orb. Constellation. We'll find a third from his death. There's some early progress towards it, but really much else for Genji really to work off of. QCK does catch a glimpse. And a 49 HP though. Did take the tag with the classic. The third on the round for him. Outlaw wins. Uh, but still, I mean, it's just like, in my mind, I, I don't know what I make of this yet. It's still so early. I'm still waiting for it to crumble. I think map one's left me reeling. I just, 
I'm nervous about this game, Michael. Yeah, I, I mean, I, already, I the, like I said, if, if, if you look at this veto, obviously, Breeze is surprised, yes, but like I said, I, I wasn't buying into it too much, but I still would have expected Loud to come out on top on Icebox. Just, just yeah. seeing regionally where, where Gen.G struggled and where you'd expect a team like Loud and what we know of Loud to really excel at. I mean, Loud losing out on clutches, Weird. right? Coming down That's to 1v1s weird. and then and then losing a map because of it. Yeah, it doesn't feel right, but a little bit of a different look here. Loud, straight up tube. Oh, subtlety to it. The Flash going to ring the dinner bell and everyone's in response. Actually, Sadak, the one to succeed there, taking down Meteor. That opens up the map. That causes such an issue. But Munchkin now on his own, basically. If they can hold this, make it a problem, Texture's going to have to bail him out big here, which maybe he does. It is Texture, and Les has his eyes away from the prize, and Texture with the punish. Oh, not headshot. quite there, but the headshot was. QCK living through that. And pressure elsewhere again. I'm really surprised they're drifting at these times, trying to find this you know, information or trying to take space. Karan's been noted, so it's no surprise he's here either. They know that he's going to be still around. That spike is still in spawn. This is what I mean. I don't know what to make of this map. Tui's going to go down, and now Sadak over one. What is, what is happening? I'll be honest, a really bizarre setup on both sides of the coin here. Genji, he said, drifting out in a number of different positions. Meteor gives his life up early, a, a rifle retained, but Loud unable to really convert that into any sort of snowball throughout that round. It seemed like a very, very strange round to watch back. Some damage done, but Gen.G retain. I mean, as, uh, as much as they need, Lackey is going to come yeah. into this with a Guardian, but it's about as even as you'd expect coming into round four here. That's how this started. Salak the closest at two off the Null Commander. Actually, Meteor, two off his as well with that early orb retrieval. And it just feels like, okay, previous round, loud, walk tube this time. All right, we'll do the same. Yeah, Gen.G, yeah, very quick to try and respond to it. QCK already top mid. Karanzine in, I was going to say, in yeah. a position to support him there, but Munchkin shuts it down. Yeah, and I was waiting to see if Tui's actually gets played in further on this, possibly, but as it stands, this is just scrappy fights. Meteor going to grab that one, but that felt like a 50-50. 5v3 now, Sadak less than two E's, with no real foothold in this map. Losing two towards middle gives them very little beyond it. They're going to have to re-clear Tube somewhat diligently. Walking into it late. Lies wide shut, and now Sadak, got to be careful, there's two players here. Again, individual fights. You're kind of banking on two E's, finding some value here, maybe catching a rotate after Sadak's taken contact. You've got to be looking at two E's. And yeah, well, it's lucky to go down, and now the round feels... <laughs> I don't know, this is feeling like it's all in the hands of Tui's, right? Like, how much more can one man do? A great deal, apparently. Tui's can do so much for them. Munchkin now in the undesirable position of having to deal with three, and, and his pressure up tube was everything. Less down at 14 HP, but a 1v3 nonetheless. 70 for Munchkin. Doesn't even look like he's really too interested in going for this. Oh, you look at Les's position, even if you just hold yeah. it, he'd be. He might even valuable. catch Les here. Oh, I'm surprised yeah. Les went that far. I kind of thought he'd just maybe hold down by Pillar. Maybe looking to remove the rifle from Munchkin. But again, these rounds feel scrappy. They don't feel as refined as I was hoping. <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, uh, again, obviously talking about where this lies in the map pool and the overlap of these two teams. No yeah. surprise, really, but you'd hope, really, with this being left as an option, potential to see it. That Loud will be well equipped, and at least here with a 3 1 scoreline, they're able to keep Genji in check. No nonsense from Meteor on the Yoru just yet. Ouch. Yeah, I mean, two E's just doing two E's things here. That was very nice. I mean, that, that's how you basically save a round that wasn't his his favorite or what? I think it was like Sadak who was stuck. I mean, yeah, yeah, they didn't really right? have control of anything else outside of where spawn barriers are, so. Yeah. Well, hero rifle left on Munchkin, that's it. The rest are down on Sheriff's light armor, I think, behind it. And Marshall, you got Meteor's ult, but you're not going to, you know, bring that out now, I feel. <laughs> Definitely not now. No, no, very little chance of that, actually. Um, clean work from QCK. And, uh, well, we're going to see the rifle shown off there. So Munchkin 
They're going to note his positioning. Not a surprise. I mean, this has been his site the entire time. That's not going to be a um, you know a head turner really. But it's going to, if anything, maybe force Lau to commit to this a little harder. The utility sent in towards A here, but no follow-up just yet. Now I'm happy to give QCK some time to explore a little deeper. You see the goal here for Genji to do a little bit of damage on the way in. Lucky you posted up close with a ghost, but yeah. Mm -hmm. so if Kaunzine sends the, the Owl drone out, going to be spot out very quickly. Munchkin, see on the X-ray here, trying to find a flank, but two he's posted up for it. Oh, uh, no God. way. That timing is ridiculous. Oh, oh, he went, it felt like they were pausing for this. Genuinely, and now can they get away with daylight robbery? No. Very well aware of the possibility of them pushing closer towards the entrance and is very precise towards the site here for Loud. Again, Munchin was really the only one coming in with a rifle for Gen G this round, so he was the only one expected to do a little more perhaps, but again the post plant very difficult to break. Not gonna have Ooh! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> get out of it, Munchkin! Come on now, you're not meant to be doing that. You're not meant to be doing that. It's not meant to even feel that close. A valiant attempt, but it's a round for loud that, regardless. That would have been one hell of an ace, though. I, my, my brain was in the next round. That man was trying to pop off. Ridiculous. <laughs> How close to the other? I mean, he oh, wasn't he far, far off. off. He was he not far, far off. off. Yeah, okay. a sigh of relief <laughs> for Loud to find their fourth. Loud rinse good. and repeat, though, Lauren. Yeah, and it, but look at this quick attention to middle. It's Larky who's aware. Oh, the drop of that is just perfect. Teed up for it. Caron smartly and rightly going to pressure the extremities, and he's actually going to be able to isolate the spike. That's gone down and it's in his hands, but he needs the rest of Gen.G to back him up, and then not. Less than QCK with effective trading, keeping them going in the right direction. It's going to be, again, Caron is your last line of defense, right? Like, he's the one holding that spike back. He knows where these remaining players are. They know where Sadak was because he was taken down earlier, and obviously QCK with the res. So now how do they approach this? I'm surprised that Munchkin's drifting this far away. And it's going to be Caron on the chopping block, right? Like, how does he handle this pressure? You've got presence from both sides. Does he commit towards one side of the fight? Does he try and just live in the corner? I mean, Caron, seemingly, I'm just looking at the minimap here. It looks like he has a decent read over this. Munchkin to find QCK. Beautiful. Sadak, 60 HP now, has to retrieve this spike. Still plenty of time to work with, though. I was worried the Munchkin might have left Caron out to try, but that's not the case at all. Caron held that spike down, kept them safe for the round, and Munchkin catching QCK just before that impact point. It's just some really bizarre round. Like I said, Breeze can be whoever frags harder on the day. And it, it, there's very little nuance to, to what we're seeing. Oh, that's okay, what he that's caught. That's what he caught. Because I was like, where did he just get that angle? Beautiful. Risky play as well to go all the way around top mid to that and hope that he didn't cross ahead of it. Yeah. But yeah, already what I've seen so far, Loud obviously trying to, to keep Gen G on red alert that somebody's going to constantly pressure up halls, be up towards get switch and. Way. Really caused some problems on A. Potentially opening up the rest of the map for them, but... Oh. Well, Lackey now posted up with a Guardian. Shut down QCK on that very mission. That's a bit naughty, that is. Oh, Munchkin, though, so overwhelmed. Less with a quick shot. And Texture now feeling quite vulnerable. There's a little bit of room that he's not safe, and you can see the response potentially as well. Meteor getting a bit closer. Lackey trying to apply a little bit of pressure, trying to give him a way out of dodge here. And Kalanzine was so blind, but it's too easy to punish Meteor. And middle is being won up by Loud until now. Can Texture change? Oh my God! He can't, Sadak! With just a pistol! Gonna put him to bed in a 1v2 now. Karen before did so well to isolate that spike, but I love this quick read from him. Yeah. Really smart and quick adjustment. But does he expect two E's? He does, Please. but two E's. Snappy adjustment, Loud stretching the lead. Third on the round for him with the Guardian. Loud coming in, definitely disadvantaged there. Yeah, Genji may be feeling a little rattled after that one. We'll see some investment thrown into it.
Loud, yeah, definitely looking like they're happy to just commit to gunfights and, and feeling confident that in terms of just, uh, I guess, the basic fundamentals that they're going to win out in some of these rounds. Does well, Genji have anything cooked up in terms of proactivity on the defense that, uh, you know, whether it be around Meteor or, or, yeah. or, or, or anyone else in that regard? It has been a, a quiet beginning between Texture, Carol, and Meteor. I, I've got to say credit for Carol there. One of the rounds was pretty much his gathering as well. You know, the nice little you know, catch of the cross as well. But um, I'll tell them a little bit quiet, not seeing those individuals finding that impact. Sure. I, I mean, also for Genji, this could just be damage control in the first half. Obviously, expecting this composition to be able to deliver and excel uh, when they are able to attack. But sure. But there's going to be a limit. That feels very risky, especially if. It's such a question mark with Loud not showing anything here. Well, that's thing. You, you can't come in with prep for Gen G, right? There's no, no, and if, there's if, no if, tape on Loud. If, if anything, Loud should be in uh, like the upper hand because there's so much tape on Gen G. They, right. they showed everything from the map pool, and yeah, we've seen a little change here. But the, the fact that Loud aren't really tried and tested from kickoff on Breeze themselves, you kind of then just bring that in as uh, well as blank canvas, really. Yeah, and and. I think Genji might have to learn on the fly, and I think this is a really good test of can they learn on the fly? Is there something they can maybe implement into this game, in, in this half specifically, to be able to try and get a grip on Loud here? Because I'm starting to get quite the firm upper hand, and this round feeling very uncomfortable as well for Genji, considering they are down to the sheriffs. I think there's a guardian there, yes, for Meteor. It's Karen actively playing this, going to play into the smoke. Yeah, there he's dead. Yeah, there it is. This is site control. They have rotations, but uh, again, this could be a plant pretty quickly. Wall dropped, and now away we go. Texture here. Already, you can note Meteor has drifted up closer as well. This is a tough angle for QCK, actually. He could be overwhelmed here, but fortunately, he's got the boys by his side, and it's comfortable for Loud. Look at this. No real threat whatsoever. Munchkin. Oh, steer, he's got a trip in front of him. Oh. Uh, nobody saw. We didn't see that. Are going to kill, though? No. It's going to be a flawless coming through here. They're allowed to find their sixth. Feeling very comfortable in terms of the pace of Breeze so far. And Genji not really taking the fight to them in the majority of these rounds. I mean, the pink didn't even come through there. He's dead before the Aldo had even revealed his position. They're yeah, going to need to see a switch up. Maybe, maybe in this round, yeah, exactly. Ultimates available here. Decent Operator purchase. back in hand of texture. Well, he's going for it, right? He's, if he's willing to stick on this, he's in a bit of danger. Flash will catch, but he's going to be able to retake the angle there, and they are falling off. So now look at where they're starting to commit. Look at the difference. Look at Munchkin. Munchkin is just, just charging. Full W. Key. He's going to get hurt. They haven't turned. Well, it got uh, pinged down on the minimap. Yeah, OK. Oh, it's, it's labored, but a one-for-one -one trade. Well, I don't know what Genji are up to as well. This allows texture room. That's nice. That's the spike. That's, spike that's huge. Noted, yeah. That's huge. Win out in middle, though. So varying wins on varying fronts. No one's finding comfort. The spike's back in hand. And now texture trying to control A, but they've lost middle. So you can already see that Caron's gone down because there was no structure to support. Larkin playing ahead here. Nowhere to fall back to. What is going on? Really this uncomfortable viewing, yeah. Allowed able to just pick Genji apart across the map. This sort of play style not suiting them here on Breeze. Aye. Not got anything to set Meteor or Texture in motion on the defensive side here. Munchkin, like I said, was on a mission from the get-go. He was not slowing down. Desperate to look for a flank and commit to it. But by the way you said it then, desperate, it felt. Very desperate, didn't feel well thought out. And again, all of them trying to make these individual plays to try and maybe you know, get something in favor, but there's no trades coming off it. There's no space going to be taken off the back of it that's favorable. They're, 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 they look really lost here. And I'm, maybe they don't want to hit another timeout, but they've got to do something. Look to a different site now. First time we're really seeing this B-side tested, no look towards middle from Loud, so this is going to be quite all in if they continue along this path. Already mid can be taken by Gen G, so hard to fall back away from, but they are. So now do they punish rotations? If this, if you're Loud, you're looking to maybe catch one in middle, you're looking for players out of position, and Texture may be one of them. Sheriff could sing here, though. It's just not going to hold, no hold tune at this point. And they fall away towards A, and they're just being drawn around the map. It's similar to what we saw Loud try and do on Icebox. Yeah. 
So presence one side and very quickly try and catch rotations or even get ahead of rotations. We'll drift slowly back into a little bit of control here towards bottom mid. Less punishing on the other side, though. Finally finds that pick onto Meteor. How did he get spotted there? No, I thought maybe Lackey had spotted a rifle barrel, but... Oh, Sadak, probably the easier target, the most down a little lower, the spam. Uh, it works. Was that completely through the smoke? I think it was. Okay, now it's getting scary because it's 20 seconds and QCK goes into bailout mode and you've got to keep going. It's 19 seconds and they've got the spike. It's Texture playing bodyguard duty, trying to keep it safe. Pressure from the left, pressure from the right. Cowan's going to take down Texture and his game on towards the side. Spike left. should go down uncontested. And what can Munchkin do now? There was a little bit of hope there. There was a heartbeat, a new lease of life, and that has been put down. Less. Keeps things going loud. Fully in control here. Genji looking un, 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 unprepared here. Yeah. To be honest, it, it, compared it, to it, map one, there, there's just days. there's 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 not enough coordination here to really no. put either of the, the I mean the, the power players here. This composition, texture, meteor, in a position to really deliver. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Lackey can only really do so much on us over here to put his duelist in, you know. An opportunity, a scenario sure, to sure. really find anything, but we're, we're not even seeing Genji rely on that. No. Uh, to be honest, it's it just feels so. It's so dry, low. individual, laboured fights across the map, and now the, I mean, I said it before, they're completely dissecting them. Oh, they'll lap it up. Tag, okay. Yeah, tag and count Zin. Extra, got to note some of this utility potentially, so that could tee them up for some success. But they are getting close towards that B site. Munchkin's position, dependent on the judge, would have support from Caron, but he's trying to get a little anxious about this. Munchkin, oh dear, oh dear, oh, it's absolutely atrocious. Exactly. He's not going to be happy about that. Again, individual fight here, and numbers starting to really favor loud. Four standing, make it back to five. Texture going to catch, I think, through the wall, potentially. Just off the res, yeah, standing back on his feet for a second, but immediately shut down. QCK with this position, yeah, he's feeling himself. He wants to get, get ahead. Uh, maybe didn't need to do that. Could have been patient. Deciding he wanted to try and make a bit of a difference. Oh, it's going to go in now. Know how much of the spike that covers. Kalanzine, though, going to feel the scrutiny here. Oh, oh, stunning. Spotting a pixel out of the place, and that's texture dead. Kalanzine looking for fault, not going to get it. Meteor with the trade, but it's a little late. But now a 2v2. Tap on the spike and the spray. Not going to get what they want here. Not again. It's still going. Not again. Not again. Oh, oh, there it is. Tui's this time going to make sure it doesn't go the wrong way for them. Last round before the uh, this is heartbreaking for Munchkin. The, the consideration from Loud. The null command comes through, removes the poison orb. Basically negates any possibility for Munchkin to find value with the judge up close and personal there. On the brink of a 10-2 half hit. Gone. Yeah, this this feels like this map pick is a complete and utter shock. Really, that Loud was so prepared for it. Keep in mind, this is Genji's pick. <laughs> Loud, pretty good on their permaban. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's just, yeah. it's really bizarre. Like I said, this could have been uh, the intention of Genji to uh, play damage Catch control in the more. first half and, yeah. uh, and then really try and run away with this composition in the second. But need it's, it's a tall order to work back from two rounds. I don't think two's enough. You know, I just don't think it is. I, I Prove me wrong, I'd love Tens it. Tens all <laughs> Thought he might fancy a go of it there. He opted against it in the end. He's maybe going to hear some of these rotations. I think he is. So he's really quite poised in the right place. Oh, he's going to get cleared here. Oh, from quite far away. So he is on his own. Ah, lovely from Texture, that's what they needed. Get him a third and maybe there's a little bit of hope, a little bit of something. You have to see a great deal on that second half, but for now, finally seeing Loud with a disadvantage of numbers. Players in the right place as well. Spike still heading towards that A site. You can see them waiting patiently, carry on one of them. Divide gonna come in. Oh, Cowanzine, the combo with that is just rotten to handle. 
Texture still trying to be pivotal to the outcome because Loud are clawing this one back. He's definitely a 3v3 now and he's just out of it and Let's gonna lap that up. How are flipping this? I don't know, but Meteor just right up in between them now, surrounded on both fronts. Tries to take a fair fight, but there's nothing fair about that. Munchkin now just too late to the party. Tries and actually might do a little bit of chip damage to Dewey's here if he doesn't get himself out of danger. And Dewey's taking a lot of damage from both this. Of them. That's a little surprising as Munchkin now, ready for a dead set. He gives them the tiniest of margins. Three rounds, Mike. I don't know if it's enough. They'll have to have something crazy to execute here in the second half, but they said the margin is so small for error. It's a team like Loud who just look, uh, I mean, they've come out of map one looking pissed off. Yeah, they do. Like they're happy to just dig their heels and commit to these engagements. Nothing really too special or, or much no. flair to Loud's gameplay. Simplistic. Either very simplistic. Okay. It's what you'd drill. expect with this composition coming out. Yeah, very vintage, classic, good spacing, good executes. Nice pull of rotations. But as I said, nothing that's going to change the world. But three rounds. That is a lot to pull back from. They're going to have to really pull this one forward into that second half. We'll go to the desk. Thank you very much, Pansy and Hypog. Loud, they've not played this map the entire kickoff, and Genji, they picked it against Mimi. Do you think they walked into a trap, perhaps? I, I mean, I think they walked into the aim test map, and thus far, they have not passed the aim check. Loud's players have been looking so good individually, and I mean, I, I think they were clearly spending some time practicing this one. They are applying the default comp. They're doing the boring stuff, but, but the protocols looked good. Everything you expect from this Loud squad, they were showing on first. Yeah, exactly, and on the other side, we saw a Gen G that was over pushing time and time again. How As many saying, times did Munchkin it. just sprint down B main like a, a, a psychopath? Yeah, exactly, time and time again and the duos are so isolated one from the other allowed had to do minimum work to get the the the, the entire map under control I saw no apparent impact from the Euro. I don't know about you guys, but you know, in EMEA, it's a force to be reckoned with. Here, it was nowhere to be found but on the death counts. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of, lot of deaths in that regard out of this Euro pick. But it seemed like when Genji was running out of ideas, they started to go for these aggressive yeah. plays, like Munchkin running down. Like some yeah, of but these why is it Munchkin's what I mean? Like you have a Euro, he can be aggressive Munchkin. and then go back. He's the ultimate feast or famine. If it, you're from EMEA, you know Angel. Same yeah, guy, I'm uh, convinced. Yeah, let's but talk about Tubi's real quick, because it's not less on the uh, on the Viper this time around. Uh, but same Vipers for Loud? Evidently good. Tui's filling into that role beautifully. This guy was so sick in the America's kickoff, and he's continuing that here. Yeah, exactly. And I think that his position in his off angles, how he's using the utility, everything is definitely looking very good for a map many people did not think we were even going to see from Loud. Well, Night 3 is a fantastic star. Surely Pansy Hypog Loud will never lose a Night 3 lead. Why well, have you done that, Sue? Mm. Huh? See that smug little yeah. look? Don't turn around. I'm next to you. It's an interesting throw, yeah, that. All of the desks are being obnoxious right yeah. now. They're like, oh, they wouldn't come back from this, would they? Oh, the chance in hell, Michael. Hmm? Let's see the first few rounds. <laughs> <laughs> and then all I'll... Right, uh, all right. yeah. And then I'll... Uh, You're willing I'll, and ready I'll either overreact or, or say I told you so. Look, I'm the play-by-play -play caster here. Let me be the one to overreact. Excuse me? Texture just came bounding in. And he's still alive. Okay, not for long. Well, that was short-lived. And that's, oh God, God, what? <laughs> what is going on? Munchkin's a mile away from being relevant to the outcome of this round now. Spike is so deep in enemy territory. And this round was pivotal. This, this was the only yeah. one that could, like, yeah. like, if you lose this, I'm going to be honest, the odds become near on insurmountable. And loud. Well, I mean, it, it's going to be a shame. Oh, pissed around as an indicator here. It looks like Genji have worked on a couple of uh, maybe, you know, geeky executes around cool. this Yoru, but I just don't I'm think gonna we're going to have enough rounds to see him, to be honest. Texture looks like he TPs into sight there, but unable to really string anything together with Meteor and I'll just absolutely dismantle them. <laughs> yeah, he knows it, dude. He's got a little smile starting to come on Salak's face. He's like, yeah, we've got uh, 10, very early. Okay. I, I think this is... Um, the difference of having tape and not having tape to a massive extent and completely walk into a trap. This was loud saying, oh, did we leave our perma ban? Open Oops. That? Oh, Oops. I can't believe I've done that. I can't believe you've done that. <laughs> <laughs> and now, well, there you've got three rounds and uh, loud of 10. So it's a long old road back, Michael. It starts with a ghost.
in the hands of Meteor. This, this isn't Cadian's clip. This isn't, this isn't how it goes. You know? This isn't it. It's not Mirage. Right. Oh. Do, you, do you believe Meteor is the one? Do you think he's going to what? Uh, no, what I think they're going to they're going to they're going to walk into Lester's crosshair. Oh. But they make it out alive. It's on the first one. Then what happens to the story? I must wait a moment. This is it. They followed that up. It was really like, good. Like this is a texture exciting. actually almost finding on the backside here. Cow and Zine. Oh, let's find one. Munchkin will fall, but the plant oh. should come through here. Okay. And an opportunity to reset at least. Yeah. Texas, don't jump onto that, but that's fine attack. That's down to 24 now. Are they able to stabilize a little bit? Timing for Caron as well here. Okay, Lucky, that's not bad. Here we go. Yeah, okay. Okay, see, if you'd followed up, if you'd committed to the bit, Michael, this could have been quite outstanding. Considering we are now down to a 2v3, and Lucky is still hitting with the classic. Two is. Left reeling with the bulldog. This has gone any other way than he expected. What a ridiculous round. And Gen G, he can catch Lakia. That's fine. You still had to get past Karen. You still had to get past Texture. And you don't have a chance at it. Time to back away, try and keep that bulldog in hand. What a turn of events here. Gen G, they're not out of it yet. See, actually, what the knock on effect of that is if. I mean, now. I don't think saved enough to really get SMGs or comfortably get anything back into this, but I mean, lucky out. Bundle D's got definitely the Gen G. Got to be. Hitting a little different there from range. Oh, oh yeah. Was that a right click? I, didn't, I, I couldn't actually see the ammo counter, but it was a right click. Beautiful. Love to see those. Okay, one Bulldog, Sheriff, a couple of classics. Oh, texture. There we go. Okay, Gen G getting fired up here. They make it to five. Tui's was the danger man, and he has done damage, but takes a fair bit himself. So, yeah, Texture's just just been let off the leash, hasn't he? Really? So go frag, go go get some kills, get the, get the game going. Now yeah, we did see that on Icebox as well. The first round that Genji actually won. We saw what loud call a timeout at four two to, to their advantage to try and slow down the momentum of stringing together a couple of pacey hits. Well, Gen G going to try and repeat that here on Breeze. They definitely need to. The six round deficit soon to maybe be five. Last player standing. Ooh, textures out of round. Yeah. Go on. Find us. All right. That's how you get warmed up. But those are the momentum builders. Gen G up to five now. Now we'll be back on a purchase here, but there won't be anything left in the bank after that. No ultimates at their disposal. Gen G on the brink of a blade storm. Texture already taking control of this second half, and QCK and Force just face plants into the bricks. Able to get away from that, but for the purchase here, you do favor Gen G. Okay. When do we. Ah! It's early. I, I'm asking. I'm on. Wow. Uh, Spirit's still high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're mapped to the good. That'd be all right. Maybe. This is. It's not scary yet. Loud still have a five round buff. Oh, hang on a second! Is just ripping them apart. And as our Gen G, this guy has been truly let off the leash. Straight in there, no messing about. Ferocious on approach, and the site's theirs. Absolutely now, sweeps a site. And if you're QCK, you're saving, right? Oh, like, definitely, that yeah. That operator's not going to be risked. For less, what do you do? You got 350 credits? Cool. I mean, maybe do a little bit of damage. You got Munchkin oh. and Texture down, but Meteor's found QCK. How's he done that? Was he was he actually peeking out from, like, And yeah, now the problem is Les has to try and hold on to the, yeah. the rifle. Or, uh, I mean, Genji may be expecting him to go towards the operator. Mm. But a beautiful continuation of this pace by Gen G. You can see Loud just get absolutely sucker punched, oh, to be yeah. honest, Straight completely up. caught off guard. And it was almost so disrespectful how confident he was at getting in there. Like one, I was like, oh, fair play. Well, uh, Two? Uh, again, seeing, uh, I believe Sadak flashed up behind yellow there. Yeah. Was that off Meteor or is that maybe a high flash from himself? And it, you know, 
Genji get ahead of that utility? I'm hoping we can see it again here, if possible. There was obviously a stun set up here, here for go. Texture. Oh, it was just the stun, actually. Yeah, it was the stun that caught. Nice! Oh! The snake bite landed, made wow. it very easy. I think Sadak trying to relay now what maybe the game plan is for Genji, whether or not they have a read on it, or actually how versatile Genji can be with. Me too on the Yoru here. We talked about maybe being the approach of damage control in the first half. This is where Genji can run away with it. They become the question mark here, not loud. Exactly that. And a second attempt for Munchkin there. Gonna note Kaunzin spotted him on the first attempt and a pace change completely here. Genji shifting gear a lot slower, a lot more curious across the map. Maybe looking for those adjustments, looking for those changes. Because they've been somewhat in their face, almost brash about it, and it worked really well, but looking to identify the adjustments from Loud. Maybe Tube the next port call of at least a few of these players. 3-2 nice. split, it looks like, and there's the ult. Actually, three players up Tube here from Gen G. Are they trying to catch him? Are they almost hurting them back here as well to an extent, right? Like, Loud is sitting deep on this. They don't want to get caught, so the site will now go to Gen G, right? Like, that's... Just a straight exchange. So now the problem is QCK belting shot towards Texture, who has been an animal in the last couple of rounds. Can anyone else from Genji step up? You still have a likes of Caron here, who has been known for those clutching capabilities, but pressured out of position and nowhere ready to go. Loud starting to flex a little on the retake as Meteor now left on his own towards Yellow hit, towards the back of sight. Gonna note the footsteps, spot the player, and the wide swing, it works to an extent. Tees up Cowanzine. Like it does have the Hunter's Fury here, but certainly in terms of the clock, it doesn't feel comfortable. Cowanzine actually going to send one out of his own. He's going to find Munchkin. Lackey now, you can see him shaking his head. Doesn't feel comfortable about committing to it. We'll have to concede an 11th round to Loud. Who just peel away from this so quickly. Genji almost left. You know, wondering what to do with a free site. And, and I kind of like what Loud were up to, right? This is lovely, but it's more how they almost held back utility for this sort of play, right? Completely clearing their way back through perfectly, understanding that they can't hold it frontline, so play it on the retake. Well, look at the comparison. Coming out of the previous, Sadax, like, yeah, I, I mean, we just got overwhelmed. There's nothing we can do from behind yellow there. This is the other side of the coin. Loud, once again, happy to concede space. We saw the same thing on Icebox as well. A good read on what Genji wanted to do. Oh. And now with a much more comfortable scoreline, they have a few more rounds to figure it out, should they need to. Genji definitely slowed things down for the first few rounds. Bladestorm, Hunter's Fury to work with. Comfortable in the purchase other than texture, but... They've been trying to be quiet about this, patient about it. Beautiful control and a beautiful follow-up. Can't quite make it a third, but the damage is done. Early information, everything they would have wanted. So the three remaining, Larkia, Munchkin, Meteor, don't really have a big foothold anywhere on the map here, Mike. Yeah, a little awkward on the spacing. Genji punished for it. They'll find themselves in a 3v4. I mean, loud elsewhere. It's only really going to be Cow and Zine that's going to get any audio cues here, but... The rest of the utility from Les in position to really spell out what this post plant will look like. Genji commit to the spike now. I mean, 30 seconds left. Cowan Zine already in the back lines. Oh, this could be criminal. Left. This could be criminal. So little safety. And oh, no. Munchkin, that's a heartbreaking moment there. Cowan Zine closing in. Uh, he's going to say bye bye, Larkia. And now Meteor having to find something, no value to be had as Munchkin now. After what was a moment possibility that slipped through his fingertips there. He's going to be kicking himself on that one. Uh, it's a round winning moment there for Munchkin. Uh, just too many targets to shoot at. A little bit of a fumble, but this will be loud on 12 now. They said Genji were comfortable in the purchase, but now no room for error. Has to be flawless from here on out for Gen G. Otherwise, we will be going to ascent. Oh. And I was almost hoping we saw the moment from Munchkin. As, as rough as that was, that was the swing moment. Yeah, you can see yeah, it. There it see, is. Yeah. 
it's 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 so difficult. What was it three players up there? What a difference that could have made. And it, it would have been a small lifeline, bearing in mind that Gen G were working uphill, to say the least. This has been an incredibly hard game to come back from. That first half was not good. They're probably not very happy with it. The second half started off with a bang eventually, but then somewhat slowing down. Losing a little bit of that spark to it. You see Kate looking to take heads. This texture creeps closer up middle, but he's alone. This is a solo somewhat endeavor. Yes, with a little bit of utility help from Caron, but that's about it. See how quickly Sadak's over here to try and support Cow and Z and QC Kate. So holding on to the backside of Nest as well. We're almost there with Lackia jump spot and it's trying to put Texture in a position to punish that operator. Loud, pretty well equipped for it. Knife probably caught three there, or two at the very least, I think. And now the pressure's starting to come towards the site. Three through middle, two through main. Flash there, Sadak goes in, gets handled though. One for one trade out, Texture still alive. Gonna let Media work his way in here. It's gonna be less holding from CT, one on site. Still some problems to try and clear, and less making himself the problem. Good trade for Meteor, but he needs a bit more. Plant gonna come down, and they still haven't fully cleared site yet. Now, Karen Zine's still here. And that's... What? Uh, okay, Lark, yeah, fair enough. That's the kill you're gonna get. Uh, no worries, didn't expect that one. But QCK's position might be unraveled. Munchkin this time should be yeah, good for it. Munchkin will have heard that drop. Was baiting up here with the wall. A crucial kill for him, and it's a freebie. QCK falls to his now, left to try and recover. Nice. Back here to seal the deal. Seventh on the board now. You need another couple to break the money. Loud able to steal. Purchase comfortably, and actually with the pick coming online here, an opportunity for Loud to maybe Counter balance that a little bit. Leave two E's in a position to anchor here. Because Genji have slowed things down. There's an opportunity for Loud to maybe exploit that. Mm. Go exploit. And they do have rounds to play with. Well, they're happy for I mean Genji to continue making uh, in their eyes mistakes, I guess. Are they going back to what we saw before or no? Definitely not the same pace to what we saw, but looking to maybe deal with QCK. Yeah, they've been they've been noting that that jump spot that you've mentioned just that you know, round prior, but that has been a constant. This time punished by Texture with the Operators. Not able to kind of do that same presence in middle, but look at this. On the other side of the map over by Elbow. Cowan's even going to spot one. That could actually cause a little bit of confusion almost. For Loud, do they continue to commit to being close? They're going to be both spotted. Surely they've got to make a run for it. Two's got to get out of danger. Texture trying to close the gap a little. Cowan's does find Munchkin, so the backline worry should be gone. Old could have come in and Meteor plays ahead. Big pick towards Tui's. But again, they didn't expect Sadak so close by. That flash does it bank in, I think it might do. But the plant is in, and they are going to sit deep on this. See already now, tricky position for Loud to try and recover from. And actually, get the tag onto Karen here, so some of that utility out of play for the time being. It. Missed from Texture, 39 HP. The timing isn't going to be great now. They've got to get back to having that Presence on the spike in Sadak with a great read, but Lucky with greater positioning. Gonna catch Kaunzine. Another tap on the spike, and now it's gonna get so difficult for Sadak. One in front, one to the side, and no time, time to play with. It's eight for Gen G. Step by step, they are not out of this game just yet. Bring it through, and uh, I mean, a couple Where's of members allowed yet. Yeah, still above 2k, but okay. now starting to struggle just a little bit. <laughs> That's expected to see the timeout at this point. The last few rounds we've been saying they've had rounds to play with. The investment comes here. There's a chance for Gen G to really turn up the heat here. Yeah, this is when it gets fun, isn't it? Yep. Because you might get... That, I, I want to add into this as well. We've got two ults already on deck. We've got Meteors and Munchkins. Then you have Lucky and not too far away too for his. So these are big ults, you know, round-changing ults that can completely turn it. So they're going to have that as, you know, a fallback plan if they need it. But if they keep going like this, they've got some nice little reads. Again, just that almost assassination of QCK holding Tube, completely isolating the rest of the players. Which is exactly the sort of thing you want to see there. But if they are going to slow things down, you want to see them have tangibles to action upon. Find Absolutely. somebody to be able to isolate. So that's a huge positive. The problem being is, is there enough? Like I said, with, with absolutely no margin for error, 
is there enough for Gen Z to really fall back on? I mean, now you've removed the operator. Maybe there's not as much of a, a, a I guess, a requirement to find out players like QCK, dig them out of spots. See what the adjustment is for Loud coming out of this. Okay, so they've got Tempered purchase. They're, they're, they're trying yeah. to keep, uh, I mean, play their cards very close to their chest. So your danger players, Les, Sadak, and Tui's. Tui's no armor, keep in mind. So Les and Sadak are heavy hitters. Actually, Les. switch up. Yeah, I was going to say, Les is utility now. Flash sets QCK in motion, but. Oh, does what? Karen. <laughs> Ballsy on the repeat there. Mm -hmm. Lucky not to get punished. But Genji almost anticipating a little bit of aggression to come out here. Oh, the timing on this texture. Did you, did you miss him? You absolutely, absolutely did. Absolutely did. So now Kaunzine's been let off. What? He's rechecking it. Oh, the guy's just texture. And it's, it's at the perfect time. He's about to shoot Karen in the back there. That's, that feels almost. But he did. <laughs> Karen's down to five HP. <laughs> I don't know how he felt that time. Maybe hearing a step, but it felt like he was already on that trajectory. So now QCK fancies another bite of the cherry, but he's going to miss the window. They're already heading away from here, but they're herding them. Three players going to be waiting on that B site. Sadak only has a classic, though, again, but the rest have rifles. A little bit of a misread here from Gen.G Loud. Be able to position themselves to maybe be in a position to punish this. Can they still be so diligent about it? It gets so dangerous, right? The slow, oh my word, too. He's going to isolate Meteor. That's great. Held at the door. 30 seconds now. They're starting to run low on time. And there's no fallback plan because look at the flank. Uh -oh. He pulled the trigger on the first, which I'm surprised by. But it's an issue. They have to clear him somehow. Seconds. They just have to run. You can't stop. There is no stopping now. And QCK. <laughs> a little short on the day there. Just to, you know, needs to. There we go. Does get it through. Spike going to go left. down. Nothing should be able to stop that here. Karen's just going to try and play out his life, buy some time for this. Oh, it's all Munchkin coming falls. apart. And now there's problems. Now it's down to two. Texture. Oh, oh my a God. Double. A chance. A glimmer of hope. Can he hold on to it? Can he do it for his side? Keep them in this game. Oh, a snap, but it goes Whoa. astray. <laughs> two ease. The one to break him in this game. And the one to take loud further in this matchup. There's a world there. There's a world. Where Tex is able to compose himself after that collapse, regain his footing. But loud, able to close things out. 13 8. It's that first half, too dominant in my eyes. Gen G may be feeling a little, I guess, apprehensive to really commit to some of the, yeah. uh, I guess, mystery around this composition. Unable to get it really going in the second half, and a shame, really. But wow, I mean, uh, the, the question mark of Breeze all settled now. But now we head towards ascent, and I cannot wait for that one.
They were down, but definitely not out. You cannot count this team out when they are 1-0 down. I'm back here with Mimi and Kukuka. Bit of a fake comeback, I kind of believe, for a moment. What about you guys? I don't think it's a fake comeback if they win, like, two rounds. <laughs> it, it was a bit more. Like, three? A bit. It was, like, like a nice three. Four. Yeah. yeah, it was, like, six. It was, like, an eight, Five. eight, 13, right? Like, six. coming in from a, from a three... <laughs> I'm so happy that you can count on it. <laughs> I, I, really I want to see how far you, you can go. I really yeah. been yeah. working carry on, on it. Carry on, carry <laughs> No, that's as high as I can go. Sorry, it only goes up to six. <laughs> All right, well, uh, they got more, more than six rounds. So uh, I feel like, uh, you know, maybe kind of a fake comeback, but nevertheless, mm. loud, they closed yeah. it out, uh, which means they forced a map three. Yeah, exactly. And I think that that first half, you know, let us know a lot of, of, of how Loud was exploiting the fact that there was no Sentinel on the side of Gen.G. We know that Cypher is incredibly strong on this breeze and not having it on that side. I think that it gave them a lot of leverage to do a lot of things. On the other side, when Gen.G uh, turned into the um, attack themselves, I didn't see that impact from Meteor. I think that Munchkin and Texture had a couple of very crazy rounds that might have given us that feeling of that fake combat. Yeah, I feel like a lot of the rounds they were winning were off of the individual stuff, off, yeah. of, off of the players kind of finding timings, going crazy with the multi-kill. I mean, Texture in particular was looking ridiculous for, for most of that second half. But Loud, I, I think they play the normal comp that everyone plays for a reason. Cypher makes it really tough to mid-round on the attacking side when you're playing against him. The Viper is great, first off. Tui's, by the yeah. way, yeah. It really slotting into the role that Les has owned this entire year and he looked incredible right like this guy in america's i feel like is the new slept on player for loud it's like he's the next one down Literally. the totem ospas was talked about so no one talked about less now less is talked about so no one talks about twoies but but twoies as well has just been a really and whose consistent fault is that, Mimi? whose fault is that for one, only talking about no, Les? That's on me. That's on I mean, no. we'll but I really see, like Les. Yeah. We'll see what Les can do and Tuis can do on the next map because Ascent is going to be that map when we're finally going to see QCK play something that isn't the Jet Bear. Yeah, exactly. Or I mean, that we? is what exactly. That we is will. the question. Maybe we see some changes coming into We were talking about a very short window of time before coming into this tournament. So we can anticipate that no. But hey, honestly, I said, you know, at least we know what Les is going to be playing in Breeze. And I clearly didn't know. So what do I know anymore? Uh, that's true. I, I, so this is the map where, where Loud is playing what they've kind of made to be their standard throughout the kickoff mm. in Americas, where they're running this this breach Phoenix composition that yeah. no one else is playing. They were playing it on this map, but in my opinion, it was the weakest showing of this idea. Uh, like we mentioned earlier, EG counter strategy. Exactly. The way they did that on their defense, a lot of uh, using two Odins, constantly spamming and pressuring mid, and also being very proactive to re-clear that space. This comp relies on getting mid control on mm -hmm. your attack side then splitting exactly. into sites if you try and strong take through main without dive nine times out of ten you're getting destroyed by stall utility and losing the round so i'm really interested to see if they take the risk in going back to this comp or if maybe they try something new and, and like go back to the default comp because i think that's also an option exactly selling utility it, it has like double effect on them because they do not have they're lacking all of that mobility and all of that explosiveness into sites one through one as, as she's saying on the attack is going to be the common thing and at the same 
same time, they do not have a Sentinel of their own to be covering on the defense. So the same thing that Genji struggled with on Breeze, they might struggle with when it comes to the defense uh, and, and that mid part of the map. I think that if Genji is able to spot that weaknesses and come back a little bit also mentally for what happened on Breeze, Maybe, you know, this, uh, this could go their way. Yeah, Genji's a team who I think definitely will have been watching those VODs and, and mm. have looked at how EG managed to, to best this comp, likely expecting to see it in play here. They're, they're a team that has really good fundamentals, is solid on their attack at playing the, the slow mid-round setup, right? I mean, yeah. that's the defense solution. On attack, you just kind of have to feel out where these flashes are, bait out util, mm. and not lose out to these strong retakes. But, but let's spin that around. That, those are some of the downsides of this comp. Well, then why the hell is Loud picking it? Because the amount of flashes you have gives you a ridiculous amount of options mm. for mid-round reclairs. Taking extremities way easier with this comp. Stun combos with a Phoenix Melon, that's really strong. Your retakes are much better than with the default comp. Again, because of combining all the different flashes, but you're giving up a Sentinel and you're giving up the dive yep. to do that. What comp do they choose? Oh, oh my god! Wait, it, well, everything it, goes south. It's the not window. Jet. It's not Jet, but it's also not the Phoenix. Okay, so they're still playing Breach. They're playing Viper still, but they've um. locked in the Yoru instead. This, this actually doesn't change the idea all that much. This is basically the same comp. You still have flashes, the equivalent of Kerpal, but now you actually get I dive think have with better it. flashes. Yeah. You also have a lot of mobility. Maybe they think they know that we're going to be playing on the Phoenix. They might be playing to cancel those orbs to maybe, you know, deny that that's ults coming online all the time and maybe to twist some things around because everybody has seen us playing this Phoenix. To me, this fixes the primary issue that this composition has. It adds the dive into the mix. Loud are so good at cooking things up, at having creative comps. I'm so excited to get into this. I can't wait to get into it either. Sadak has been cooking. And oh, oh, on the other side though, if Genji can pull this off, Pansy and Hypog, it will be a tremendous effort and an upset. You're absolutely right, Sue. And I think at this point, no one can then question Genji. When you look at Breeze being in the mix, it's a bit weird. And, you know, Icebox close, could have got... Nah, if you can beat Loud here, and they've adjusted the comp that a lot of people had issues with, and they still come out on top... Sure. 10 for, out of 10. for me, it's a huge positive to see Loud come in with this, because I, I, I think the desk have absolutely nailed it. It, it. it addresses some of the main issues with that Phoenix. Now, yep. some sort of pressure towards the back line possible, alongside Kowenzi and QCK, but I mean, both teams pulling out the curveball. The Yoru on map two and three here. Definitely excited to see it and fitting Have for the closing of this looks. series. Oh, Mike, I can't believe it. And, and, uh, I don't, I'm not mad about it. Not mad about it at all. Sadak, not going to spot Meteor there. So Timing's perfect for Meteor, yeah. yeah. I'm just going to find value from it, though. Trying to bait it in almost. Too lucky at trying to set something in motion, but yeah, it, it sadly goes to nothing, which is always a little bit of a disappointment. Oh, the swing! That flash to the swing was fantastic. Lakia is incredible to at least trade that back in to touch, but at this point, Genji have already got side control, right? So Plant's gonna come down. Bit of a strange exchange in middle, but also look at Lakia's positioning. They're wrapping all the way around. I think did note that QCK was chasing him, but now in a position. His timings. Yeah, to cause an issue back towards short. It's okay, trying to deal with... Good paranoia. The door on the way back through, yeah. Slowing things down, but you noted it before. Look at Lackey now. It's got to get there in time because Munchkin's full and maybe very late, but I guess the plant is for it, right? Look at the plant position. That's perfectly placed for it. Karen's done really well here. Texture trying to keep their attention. QCK wins the fight. Now we've got to look at that plant position. Does it come into play? Oh. Lucky's gone down. QCK over delivering, over doing it. And Karen's getting in at the Clutch King himself. Going to pull this one off. And Gen G with the first. Beautiful conversion from Gen G. Uh, I just think the whole time there, Lackey is the one to really throw a spanner in the works, but dealt with very quickly. Beautiful aggression from Loud to come out here. It's actually QCK's flash to open things up initially. He finds three on the round here, but forced into a very tricky position. Try and stick through this first half to fuse. Genji pissed around on the board. Only a ghost in the hands of Tui's. See what resistance there is here. Only noting one as Sadak to drift away from main. No preemptive rotation comes through from Loud. Definitely the firepower suiting Genji, though, as we've said. No real 
threats yet. You can see Lauda poised very nearby, though. Just at that jumper point. Oh, the timing. How has Sadak lived through that? That feels like texture was good for it. Paranoia. So that's one HP. Oh, yeah. The Paranoia are actually catching so many. Sadak and Les, though, finding value from the door. And now Texture feeling a little bit pinched here, and the shots aren't clean. Um, Loud turning this one back on its head. Where, and, and they're both the mixer, locked out in main. Yeah, they're both at the same spot. This is rough. The HP is really low, though. And Gen G just need to try and weather this one out. Les doesn't have the HP to play with, but he does get himself a nice little upgrade here. So could do well. He knows it's coming, though. He's read that. Oh, <laughs> you couldn't read that one, though. A really nice attempt and made it very costly. Touch and go for a moment there. Yeah. I think with uh, two E's falling when he did it, I don't know if there was a smoke coming up or any possibility to cut sight lines here. Obviously, noting the fragment and the nano swarm still available for Munchkin and Meteor. So, yeah, loud. Definitely making things work. Uh, like I said, Sadak swinging back through one HP yeah. and finding a kill. Some damage done. Obviously, Genji. Be suffering from that. Just two guardians. Well, actually, now Meteor rifle in hand as well. The sheriffs to round out the purchase. Doesn't feel as a threatening of a bonus, but I want to see what they can do with it. Really, rifle with Meteor is the interesting part to me, and a pace change very quick to this. Sadak uh, is going to get the drop on them, sure, but does get a keep away with his life. Two, he's going to try and post the paranoia. Uh, Texture's ahead of it though, and Zadak's gonna check him. Just straight body check him on the corner. Texture's gonna go down. Nice little underhand. Flash again, still stalling out here. Costing them a great deal. Zadak is being a nuisance. Caught. But he actually gets caught. Tries Meteor's to flash util. out. I yeah. thought he was good for it then. Uh, maybe with the door would last another second or two. Oh. Cowan Zine gets a better Alakia. Now brings it to a 2v4. And Zadak, the only one that NGA able to really pin down. Timing. <laughs> Bloody hell. Brilliant from Les. You'll take it every day of the week. You're smiling with that. Uh, Caron saved him in the pistol. I think this might be a little too far. Although Kaunzine really wants to give up his life. Does he expect Les? No, he doesn't. Les catching crosses twice now. And happy with it. Loud going to make it through that first hurdle. It was the bonus for Gen G, though. So. How'd you keep three rifles? They'll be okay with that. This is the big test, though. Yeah, great work from Sadak and Tui's in the last round as well to isolate, uh, really create some space between Texture and the rest of uh, Gen G's numbers. That's it, Meteor. Doesn't actually land the Molly to try and force Sadak out there and is punished. If that's a, a focal point for Gen G, because every single round here, Loud running with a different setup. Let's see, we know how they like to play around the breach. Create as many possibilities as possible, but a big crunch outside here. Meteor can't pin anything down. That's actually horrific for him. He's going to be gutted with that lucky. Oh, QCK right nearby, and they are just getting mauled to death here. Loud in their face, aggressive, pushing them in spawn. Loud, unrelenting now. Karen again, in a similar position to before, this time in a worse scenario, however. Sadak is low on HP, and they're drifting back. They're falling away. Try and run the clock down now. Still 60 seconds for Karen to work with, so plenty of time to make something happen. But we've seen the clutchability of this player in this series so far. This is a tall order here. Less Sadak and Cowan Zine to overcome. Have his ultimate available, but obviously question marks as to exactly how loud have retreated. The whole map feels, yeah. feels like a threat. I mean, you see he's clearing every single angle here. And those 60 seconds now turn into 30. Where does he go with this? There's no, there's no smart guess, because there's no way you can put together where they are, right? There's, there's no way you can just gamble an informed choice. It just doesn't work. So you're going to try and bait it out with the smoke. And nobody's going to see that smoke, though. Oh. So not really going to have the impact he wants. 15 seconds now, and he's walking towards the site with two players. And they're both tucked in hell as well. Yeah, and he's leaving it so late. There's almost no time for adjustment. There's the smoke. And they're going to close the gap here. Yep, he knows it. He's a sitting duck. He takes down 130 HP now. He's unthreatened. Spike is in. Um, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I thought. I thought he was way off that. I thought he was way off that plan. Oh, regardless. OK, all good. <laughs> all good. Seals the deal here. We'll give an orb across to Sadak. The Karen man. Whoa, you those saw last the window, five seconds look like ten somehow. 
God. How did he get away with that? that even the fact that he just stood there, bullets flying past, tracers just real close by, giving the old nose job at that point, just barely making it out. Wild. But again, this whole round, Mike, they're literally pushing him in spawn. Yeah. Beautiful setup here from now to open things up. <laughs> Sadak catching his breath after that. We'll see how much loud I've, I've cooked. I, again, because a lot of these set pieces they have, we'll hold that thought for a minute. It's pacey. You can see the exchange of the knives, both going to note each other's positions and progression towards their texture. Disrespecting texture. the utility. Doesn't care, goes straight through Stinger in hand. Still wants more, not going to get more. Meteor follows up towards QCK, but there's still Tui's, and Tui's is holding on, and he's holding on damn well. No oh. access allowed. <laughs> Tui's, that's his sight. Genji have previously run away with a few rounds like that in this series, but well handled, well maintained here by Loud. And a massive gap in mid that's exploited by Texture. He's up short so quickly, yep. all the way into tree. Unfortunately, nobody from Genji able to really make too much progress on the other side. I think Sadak slowing things down with the fragment. Able to keep things in check. Maybe a little bit of aggression outside A here. I've seen Cow and Zine set up. Oh, yeah. Flash of the TP comes through. Commitment behind this. Uh, Caron's above you. Both! And he gets both! He waited so long yeah. for that as well. Real patient play from him there. Can't even really say that's a little complacent from Loud. Cowan kind of waits out both pieces of utility. Munchkin now looking to re-aggress with him. There's still two members of Loud on the other side of this. You're surely thinking, no one's going to be sat here, right? Like, you're, you're doing your diligent work here from Mun Munchkin, you know, he's, he's, he's checking, but Gen G, I mean, the aggression has been there and they get rewarded for that heads up work, that diligence in play, and even might catch that mid look. This is lovely. Gen G reading loud like a book, prepared perfectly and delivered. Scoreline looking much, much more even. Absolutely, but a full house for Gen G in terms of the ultimates. There's plenty of options for them now. The other side of things, less obviously one away, Karen Zin three off, but Karen able to turn the tides on this early round aggression. Tie things up. So with this lineup coming through, Gen G might look for a pacey set piece. Well, Sadak can do the same thing again. It's been too easy for Sadak to slow slow down some of this aggression previously. Once his fury invested as well. Oh, but Munchkin ahead of it, catching Sadak on the back pedal. And I'm looking for the lockdown. It's there as well. That's looking like the site is very comfortably theirs. But I'm looking at the spike though. And well, Karen's TP to be. Yeah. yeah, this is just a, a fake around the lockdown. I reckon Tui's can do anything about this. I Tui's mean, ahead. Oh, he actually oh, cancelled. I thought he might commit. I was almost hoping he does, but decides to back away. Won't have much info from that then. But his positioning's good to catch Meteor potentially. No, Such really a small tough. Angle. Uh, now, less with the spray pulled away from the dash, but gonna have to fall off from this respect the cross. Spike made it to sight. A really strange round here. Yeah. Oh, we and another one. invested, but. Yeah, QCK now looking to try and find some information. The stun on the back of that info and punished by less. Okay. The value found here, but Munchkin responds. And then you got to look at the late positioning coming up from Meteor as well. Good positioning on this. The weird spot that's going to be coming in from Munchkin. This is all, oh my word, twoies. Backhands him on the way towards the site. Now you look at the backside. This is Caron, the guy who's super clutch, the guy who gets some great work done, and they're doing it right now. Munchkin falls, so now they know where that last player is. Twoies, can you close the gap? Can he find them? He can, but it doesn't matter. Caron is so sharp with it. Yeah, that round was bizarre, Mike, but it works out. It's a, a very well-invested fake. Obviously, with Caron, the one to TP across early, does confirm, obviously, Loud's reposition, but... Uh, I mean, again, something goes wrong in the mid-round here. Tui's commits to that TP for some reason. Somebody catches off, uh, you know, catches the rotation, Last sorry, through Link. It feels very, very uneasy. Oh. Looks snappy from the other POV. It looked even worse from, from Karen's. He's stepping up. He's warming up. We've seen a lot of, you know, texture moments here and there. We've seen a lot of the other players as well having their time. But Karen, this map, 
Certainly leading the fray. And uh, we're looking at what they've got. Pistols, stingers, guardians at most uh, for the loud side. So a little rough around the edges and hoping to maybe find an advantage where there probably isn't one. At the moment, Tui's is currently holding back two players who are looking for the orb there. No chance to really do any damage on it either. I have the spike. Gen G just trying to get a good feel of the setup here from Loud. That's obviously semi committed towards this. A stun off Cowan Zine, maybe on contact here. Could set things in motion as Gen G are drifting as five. This could be quite nice. Yeah, into this choke point. TP's already sent across as well. So QCK ah. could be here pretty quick. He's First lovely. one there. And the stun does slow things down as well, Lauren. Oh, fantastic. Isolates one. That gives them a chance. They pull the rotation. Three players on the side now. Going to be difficult for Gen G to cleanly take this. They've still got a little bit of kit, though, to play with. Not a massive amount, but Munchkin and Larkia's kit is in play, but they've got to be careful. Approaching the side. Unless they want to fight towards CT. Sadax here, though. This is becoming messy. This isn't right. This is going terribly wrong. And Tui's comes out of the flash just behind Munchkin, though. Going to lose his life. And now where do they go? Do they go back towards A? Do they run it down towards B? They're going to go into the unknown, and it's the right choice. Munchkin holds them back. And now the 1v1, this upgrade to round. So QCK going to get himself the Phantom. Karen with the plant. This guy has been good. Leading the board for Gen G. It's open as well. So plenty of opportunities for Karen to reposition, play a number of different angles and plenty of question marks for QCK. No kit for QCK either. No additional utility to maybe work with. And the time probably going to decide this one, Lauren. Feels like it, doesn't it? Unless it's a fumble from Karen, but it feels like that guy is not making mistakes there. And you're right, the time, you can hear it. Clock's starting to tick faster, and QCK has to at least get this to half. He knows it. His options are very limited. I that am. open plot, he's got it to halfway. That's not bad. Oh, and Karen with a wide swing across, dragging QCK's aim way out of the comfort zone. He's going to get the round. I mean, this guy's worth his weight in gold currently. 11 kills, four deaths and a good couple of rounds that he's been tipping the scales on. I mean, already what he's done so far in this series, but delivering here in map three versus a team like Loud, you can't ask much more of your rookie. Composed in the clutch here once again. And giving it on stage as well. The energy's still there for Gen G. Almost riding, wow. riding the wave here, loud. Uh, I don't want to call this a desperation timeout. It's a 5 3 scoreline, but. They do feel behind the curve. If we're talking about, I guess, round pacing, the way the rounds have gone down, I mean, it's 3 to 5, sure, but it's been a correction from Gen G. They brought it back from those three rounds on the trot that loud claimed. They've got a good grip on the game. We're seeing the individuals show up here. I'm not seeing Loud determining pace, it feels like. They're a little bit behind on that, which normally I credit quite highly towards Loud. I think mean, they're a very good team at demanding the pace, either defense or attack. It doesn't really matter. So seeing them a little bit behind the curve here, still want to say a little bit more from that Yoru coming into play. See if I, I like a bit more of it. It's not had masses of time. No, no, there's been a couple of small pieces we've seen around. Obviously, the ultimate, the, the, the fault line coming on the back of that. Obviously, that early aggression with QCK finding his way all the way into tiles and, and pressuring into Genji's spawn, but certainly have it. Again, we're not really expecting too many switch ups. Obviously, the Yoru really addresses a lot of the issues on the attack. Yes. In terms of getting through choke points, addressing the back line, and. Give it an operator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is set for his success, right? He is in the place for this if they do continue on this pathing, but there is that question mark middle. That was a very wide peak from Caron to stand Similar to the, the last round. Yeah, yeah. This time a little earlier in the round than before, but now Meteor with three on the platter, going to spot the first and slip across. He does have support there in the form no of texture. No way they read texture. Surely not, especially by finding Munchkin, right? Like this, if anything, plays him in even further, but he's got to play patience and he's going to pay dividends. He's going to find one and Lucky claims less. So this battle in middle is somewhat going Gen G's way. QCK tries to reclear. Ooh, oh, he no. Misses. That's heartbreak. But the second bite of the cherry potentially could be the one. This could be it. Could he find him? Oh, the angle is rotten. A texture just dancing around him. Leaving two, he's just drifting around like there's nowhere to go. <laughs> See, some of the weirdest rounds of Valorant today. Yes. 
Uh, is I mean, it, are we such, the problem? Such I mean, a strange exchange in mid here. Uh, and Lackey are finding that. I can't even remember. That's, I mean, I think it's the kill onto a less, if I'm not mistaken, that really throw things into disarray. Uh, and like here, yeah. dashing past, and then two E's <laughs> expecting them to commit towards B. Genji really starting to feel themselves. Oh, yeah. And getting a good grasp on on some of the chaos in the mid round here. That's an elusive thing to, to be able to do. It's a very small list that people have been able to handle loud in some of those more chaotic moments as well when they try and you know, get in their faces too. Because we saw their aggression from Loud in just a couple of rounds prior. And they were literally pushing them in spawn. So they've weathered that. But now we go again. We look at this. QCK quite aggressive towards B. But he's going to fall away from this. We can see all the attention is towards A. That knife Big is info. very, very important. Problem being, there are two lurks elsewhere, so Les has to consider the possibility. You can see he is trying to get a feel for things elsewhere. Genji drift away from this, sending two up catwalk. In texture, Caron to try and find something. For the rest of the setup as well. Now tucked into the corner. Oh, come on, committed here as well. Okay, texture. A whole lot of targets and very little time, but they are damn good at this. Clearing through well, too. He's still going to draw blood, but it's Gen G. Sweeping the side perfectly. Luckier on the follow up, and it's QCK tucked away, quietly waiting this out, but. There's problems here. He was noted on the knife, so what are you meant to do at this yeah. point? They're going to know he's in hell as yeah. well. Surrounded and hounded. Look at Lark here. That's cruelty. That's what you get for trying to come ahead of the reload. Oh, my word. Got a little, little scary there, huh? Down to 12 HP there. Oof. But a 7-3 lead for Genji nonetheless. Loud missing everything but the null command committed in the previous. Genji, a hunter's fury of blade storm and a TP of their own. Really looking to stretch loud out in this first half of ascent. <laughs> well, I just can't believe it, but a string of rounds unanswered here. Five. That's huge. You, and again, oh, look at this combination. This could be really nasty. They have seemed to make it out alive. Karen does find twoies in the meantime as well. Oh, it's it just, drifting it, out it, short here. Look at where the death marker yeah. is. They can't stop succeeding, it feels like, this team. QCK, though. Uh, look at the ping. <laughs> They've actually pinged out exactly where QCK is repositioned to. A couple of pings elsewhere, but that one's the, the awareness yeah, is here yeah. from Genji. See how well you clear this. Oh, that's how well. A pop flash. He does turn it. So QCK is so quick on that. Can't do much more, though. Finding one is really valuable, considering they already noted that position. They were already heads up about it. That is wild. <laughs> Gen G. Bloody impressive, this side. I think only noting texture there, but maybe a little bit of a red herring. He's noted towards short. Especially with the smoke coming through now. Two other members of Loud have committed towards this B site hold. TP will come through, will confirm presence on back site. Cow and Zine, let's do here. Rolling Thunder to work with. Two snake bites as well. 25 seconds. That's big. Time. It's running short. Spike is still in the hands of Caron. He's the one to keep him in the back of your mind. If you see that player, look at his position. More stall going to be invested here. They've got to move further ahead. They can't sit back and wait anymore. The plant going to come down. They can't deny it. It looks like they're going to be held at the back of Bow House. They can't escape here. And now it's a firing squad. But loud on to back. Caron and Meteor in perfect unison. And it's Sadak slowly working forward. Finally gets towards the B site. The one way goes up as well. That's half of the entry points gone, removed. He now knows that Meteor was playing a little bit closer. We talked by the boxes. But so much to clear and so little time. And you can hear it. That spike ticking. His time dwindling. Running low. Looking like another eighth for Gen G here, who are under the gun. The smoke just coming back up. This guy has no hope in it. Gen G playing an exceptional game here against Loud. Now we could be in a similar situation to what we saw on Breeze, which is just uh, too few rounds to really make this comp change, you know, have, have, get limit tested. Give, give, yeah, yeah. give fair chance. 
I just don't know if it's enough. Maybe four? Six unanswered for Genji. Caron now 17 and five, leading the charge. What a game from him. What a map from him. Good series. I think Tex should be up there for series. But this map, he has been exceptional. Get out of my way. Right place for it too here, though. Quite a lot of loud on the other side on eight. Let's see if they fully commit through this. Gen G tempering the pace a little, allowing Texture to probably get a little bit of work done with this operator. To slow things down, maybe anticipating the lesser purchase from Loud, equating to some form of aggression across the map. But this is smoke comes up, a fragment comes out from Munchkin. And follow up on this paranoia. I was just looking to slow. Any progress from Gen G? I mean, the thing is, though, Gen G is so happy to do late executions. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't even matter. If you're not going to capitalize on it, it feels like, they're still going to be happy to hit on 20 seconds. TP sent out by QCK as well. So ready to rotate. Gen G have got themselves set towards it. And it's Caron again. Sadak will fall. The first blood will open up round 12 here. So he has to respect this now. We still have QCK here, but tricky spots to work from. Kaunzin, maybe. Has he got what it takes? Oh, the flash, the little delay on it as well, bouncing off the wall. He couldn't even turn it in time. Last only good for one, and they're succeeding everywhere. Now it's QCK and Tui's split between the map and Sur Hello! Turn around! Texture gets there first, removing QCK, opening up the site for a plant, and Munchkin takes out Tui's. This has been decisive, Mike. Breeze was a different deal, but seeing the scoreline like this... Look at that timeline. Look at it. Look at that. What, what can you say about it? That was a masterclass from Gen G there. Absolutely is, and we do, we do still have the questions, the composition in the second half, if this is what it's designed for by Loud, but, uh, I mean, coming out of that, it's a tall order. The big question now is, is three rounds enough for us to even have a chance to see what that new Yoru is going to look like, what they could do on this. I'm not sure it is. We never know, Pansy and High Park, we never know. But the thing is, in terms of that Yoru and this comm, Mimi, uh, what do you think about what we have seen so far? I think we saw a few cool rounds, right, where they had these preset plans and they were working well. But I think where Loud got dipped was later into this game when it came down to the fundamentals. This is an example of the good, right, for Loud, where they have this really cool yep. kind of variant of, uh, of almost a shark attack, where you're crunching into B main and punishing Gen G for it. But then as we got later on, we still saw Loud going for some of these ideas, but making little mistakes, not clearing the corner in pizza, not looking up when they're going for that fight in A main. Yep. Gen G players are sitting there, they punish. Gen G, I also thought they did a really good job of slowing down, waiting for this aggression, yep. knowing that this comp lacks information, because it's only active info is a Kaona. Yep. No Sova drone, no Sova dart, and it lacks information because you have no sentinel to hold space in the mid round. They just had to bide their time, pick the right moment in the mid round, and they were so successful at doing so. Yeah, but it's still not enough because on the other side, Kakuka, Karam, yep. he's here. Hear me out. The performance that we're seeing coming out from him, we were talking about all the names that are going to be back in the stage Ooh. and the new okay. faces that we're seeing. This is the controller that you want to see. We talked about all the rookies, how Narrate and the rest of Casey had a brilliant date, but Karan is on a track of his own. 413 13 ACS just in this first half. And not only that, we're seeing him on stage going crazy, shouting at their opponents. Even at the beginning of the day, he was like, who's loud? <laughs> I don't hear anything. Know. They're very quiet for being called loud. Yeah, this Gen G team is looking electric. Texture is stepping up as well. They look on course to upset loud 2-0. What a moment it would be for Gen G. Yeah, they're on the precipice of a potential upset here. Pansy and Hypog, let's see if they can bring this home. That's the big question, is it? Can they? Can they actually bring this home? Three rounds were all that Loud could claim. Like I said, we're, we're in exactly the same boat as we were on Breeze. But now yes. we need to see this composition really do numbers for Loud. Yeah, it's, like, it's going to be good. Got, Genji basically have to drop the ball here. Because they were in total control that first half. Yeah. It all starts with the pistol. I mean, got weirdly close on Breeze and keep on Jinji didn't even win that second pistol. He like no. turned the next one or something mad. But if we're going to talk, you know, odds and statistics and, and what you expect to happen, if Loud want a chance, it starts 
here. This pistol is critical, vital to success. Gen G could hammer in that first nail in this game. Munchkin's about to get a whole lot of info on that. Yep, hello, that's half the team there. Where's the fifth? Doesn't matter, let's focus on the first. Less does find Lucky, so that... Fragment doesn't land either. Might be a bit of a problem here, actually, yeah. Kawanzin gonna find Munchkin. Oh, Sanak as well. That's gorgeous. Meteor with a lot on his plate. And he ain't gonna be able to do much about it. That's clear cut from Loud. Clinical to kick things off here. You need to see the conversion on the second, but finally a response on that round timeline. Could that be... Uh, I was going to say, I don't know how much of Lakia was visible there, but it didn't look like much. Sadak luckily played in some favourable timing there in that mid lurk. Round by round. No investment here from Genji. Haven't seen it since Icebox. A couple of sheriffs, I think a shorty there for Karen, but that's about it. So it needs to be quite the mistake to go astray. And, and Les isn't particularly, you know, <laughs> looking like he's trailing in this. He's still got that kind of confidence. He's willing to really brawl out QCK on the other side. Doing rather nicely. And yeah, this is loud looking almost automated yeah. in the way they're working through this. Jinji not really having much of a looking yet on this map, at least. Yeah, done. Go. Cool. Get it out of the way. Flawless second here in the second half. Loud. Now with an opportunity. Yeah, you'd almost hope, obviously, the conversion is going to come through from this round three as well. Makes things as comfortable as possible to start this second half. Actually, even getting things together here, two, well, two vandals, mm -hmm. two bulldogs to work with. Not stacked up. Ahead of the spawn barrier dropping. Genji may be toying with the idea of getting aggressive outside B here. Well, it looks like it, doesn't it? And the flash as well, Les. But Les will fight. Les will always fight. Two, he's taking a look towards middle as well. We have seen a lot of attention to market coming out from Genji too. But there's a lot of pressure points. Meteor's the first one to draw blood, dropping Kaunzine, and he gets a follow-up on QCK as well. He's dominated short now. That's a problem, because that unlocks all of that stress, and it allows Meteor to roam. He might even get a bit more. He's seen so much here. Paranoia, yes, is going to at least slow him Whoa. down, but he ran it like a book. Tui's going to be punished on that. That was a round and a half from Meteor, and honestly, Loud just falling short. Absolutely. Let's see, with that round loss, Let's see what the purchase looks like, or at least the, the funds look like behind this for Loud now. Couple digits found wow. for Genji Meteor. The stranglehold gifted the third onto Tui's as well. If maybe he thought that Meteor had slipped a little further back onto shore, but with the second player in mid, can argue, necessary. yeah. But again, that was the bonus now into the bite. But it was a well situated bonus and it wasn't because of the weaponry. So, you know, we, we wait and see. Texture, willing to go walkabout. It's all a bit of a look. In the meantime, we've got that mid control. Oh, the <laughs> timing. That is ridiculous for Meteor. Oh. Makes your stomach drop a little. You can see Sadak wants revenge, but the Owl Drone's going to check him. They know the position now. Really solid protocols on display here from Gen G. Meteor might even be played onto the second. That's a stab at it, but. Doesn't overcommit. It feels like middle's off the off the cards. You can't work that anymore. They're two heads up about it. So where do they go now, right? You've still got a little bit of room on A, but they, they don't know about any of this. They don't know about Munchkin's position, who's just about to get his knife back as well. So that's going to be the grand reveal. Unless he actually gets shoulder checked first. Oh, I guess denied. He doesn't get the full picture. Now, Texture. Oh, that's clean from Texture. Two big hits, two headshots. Spike dropped and predicts two. He's just as oh well. Oh, my Come God. On, texture, get another. Show us what you got. This guy is absolutely phenomenal. Map three finds Genji their 11th round. And looking so damn clean in the process. 
And we talked about it being maybe concerning if Gen G have to rely on these individuals, but in rounds like that, it just looks so clean cut. It does. It really does. Oh, they're ecstatic. Absolutely elated. 11, when you string together two, it really turns it. You know the loud money now is going to feel that pinch. It's not going to be in a good position. And they pump the brakes. Loud know it. This game was, you know, recoverable on the half. They did what they had to do. They got that pistol, but the second those rifles came out, Gen G re emerging. I mean, really, if you look at bringing this composition out, the fact that QCK is the first to fall in the previous, it takes away some of those options that, you know, Loud maybe did have cooked up. Now they come into the next round five of the second half with no ultimates to really fall back on. I mean, yeah, QCK won away, but uh, he's going to have a stinger maybe. Yeah to make something happen with, but I noticed it in the previous, the, the, the defensive protocols here from Gen G, really well drilled. Nobody over committing. Players delivering in, in positions they need to. And Meteor, the prior example, texture here, another. But I really, really caught off guard. I said the, the map veto, the first curveball of the day, some of the compositions along the way, but Gen G have thoroughly impressed me. Yes. Loud, unfortunately, falling a little short in my eyes. And, and not but because it's, it's of not some often of the we say that. No, exactly. And it's not just solely, you know, oh, we didn't like this comp, we didn't like this. It was genuinely, I think Gen G outplayed them here. Quite hard as well. But as it stands, we come back in with a shoddy buy for Loud. Stinger, Stinger, Sheriff, and that's about it. Man, the other they, side. they pretty much have to make something work in this round. Yes. The one bonus, they do get the ult for QCK online. That was the initial purpose of that play towards A, so that is in pocket. Maybe the Yoru ult makes some difference, maybe not, because Karen's already found less. Yeah, less. Maybe gives away a little bit of the uh, the game oh. plan here. The Owl drone definitely will. Hello. Look <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Loud's coming to my site, guys. He does have an Odin. Opportunity to potentially slow things down here, but not noted just yet by QCK. Now he will be. The stun comes through, confirming that. But Meteor, Meteor with three! Oh my god, in between a rock and a hard place, Meteor puts himself there. He willingly walks into it. Oh, that's just outstanding from Meteor. Gen G make it to 12, and all of those problems, all those little threats that could have happened get pushed aside. And now it's do or die. Loud have a purchase here. They don't have an instant ult to play with. You got two away for Sadak, two away from two. That's not what you really want at home. And anyway, they have nothing to depend on. And on the other side, you got knife texture, lockdown for Meteor, full purchase. Loud, if you got anything, this is the round to show it. No wiggle room left here. Texture. Fast mid. Yeah, very aggressive here, forcing Loud. Well, at least less, much deeper into spawn. But the and a ton of information, a ton of map control. Yeah. Garland on the back of that, lockdown available. And like you said, the Killjoy utility littered across A site. But already, Gen G are able to make their way over towards A site. The loud commit here? Then they are. Yeah, the lockdown, gonna, what's the plan for the lockdown then? Still that util, open plant. Can they get out in time? Oh, no, Meteor catching them on the cross. Big punish there. Anyone going to get caught by this too? None detained, but herded away. And look at Meteor, hot on their heels. Larkio with one, down to count Dean, less of two. He's the defuse, it's going on, they can't stop it. Gen G, crush loud in the final map here. Incredible performance. And a lot of us now very much on board the Gen G train. Wow. Uh, I mean, I'll put my hands up. Uh, we talked about this matchup at length. It was announced and uh, I wasn't really buying into the Shinji Stonks coming into this, especially drawing a first round versus Loud. I think that's a fair assessment. But I, I said at the top of this series, today will be the day they validate that hype. And I think they've absolutely done that, Lauren. Yeah. Looking no. so good. I mean, Karen and Tex, you're obviously the, the, the headline is here. Yes. Uh, Karen, by the way, deliver again top of the board on the final map as well. Map three versus a team like Loud delivering. It's a, it's a real joy to see, and actually, I'm very pleasantly surprised 
I'm, I'm quite happy to be wrong in this scenario. Absolutely, because a lot of people were. I, and again, if, if you look at it on paper, you can say, oh, but you know, all of us were worried about loud, you know, the weird comps coming out. They didn't look that great here and there. That wasn't why Genji won this no, game. No, it absolutely wasn't. And that's the best part. You even could argue the loud draw them into a trap on Breeze. They still come out okay, not ideal, but they weather the storm on Icebox. They best them there, which is wild to me. And then absolutely smash them on Ascent. This team is uh, very, very dangerous, I think, for anyone going forward who's going to face them. Certainly someone to look out for. Absolutely. And, and, um, coming back to another point we made throughout this cast as well, probably one of the most preppable teams in terms of the amount of tape here. The entire yes. map pool has yes. been shown throughout kickoff as well. And a couple of bumps along the way. Like I said, some of those series that Gen Z had to play regionally weren't a walk in the park. Oh. And, yeah, and they didn't look good, to be honest. There, there was some real struggles throughout those, but coming here now, delivering this performance on the international stage, that's what we're looking for. That was the main question coming into today. Yeah, and I think it, for us, it has answered a lot of those kind of earlier yeah, worries sure. that we had. And it's just going forward, we, the depth of the map pool worried me because they play a lot of the maps. Where it was like, okay, well, well, how diligent are they on these maps? How well can Genji actually flex this map pool that they, they run with? Yeah. So far, it looks, I mean, you're beating loud, which is. A uh, that's a testament in itself. Yeah, again, you talk about coming to the international stage and delivering versus any team. Loud's up there with one of the teams you want to say, yep, yeah, we beat them. Opening series came out 2 1, and it looked pretty comfortable in, in, in most parts. I, I, I am genuinely really impressed with this roster. And, and again, the win conditions we put out between ourselves was kind of like, okay, is it going to be texture? Is it just going to be like Karen having a pop off series? But it was everything else. We were talking about protocols and how impressed yes. we were by that. And that's the bit that really stands out to me is that. Protocol-wise, they looked very good. Yeah, they, they, they really did. Uh, and to have a rookie come up here and deliver those sort of um, yeah. clutch performances, those sort of round victories, bear in mind, roll your minds back to the last round of Icebox to really start yes. the upset here. Yes. Obviously, Breeze being the question mark, but uh, yeah, absolutely blown away. And a, a huge positive to see them carry this momentum across and open things like this in Madrid. Yeah, and, and I think for me, when it comes to, you know, looking at the Swiss stage and how this kind of works out, them getting themselves that one win on the belt is massive for them. That's a massive sign of relief. It's huge. Yeah. And, and I, I kind of going to have to draw parallels to who else gets that 1-0 start. How does it look when they go to those next games at the 1-1 marker? Does Loud look head and shoulders above the other opponents? Does that then put Genji even higher up, potentially? It's always that kind of like, okay, it's still group stage, so just trying to figure out where people fit in. But yeah, in my mind, Genji looking wonderful. Yes. Can't wait to see what they do, and I can't wait to hear from them to stick around. Menuda partidaza que acabamos de ver. Estoy aquí con Karen y con Jen. I'm now joined by Karen and Jen, who's going to be translating for us. Karen, what a performance that we're seeing here on stage. At the beginning of the day, you were saying, who's loud? I wasn't here when they were world champions. Is that the same feeling that you felt on stage? 카론 선수 오늘 승리 축하드립니다. 오늘 정말 좋은 모습을 보여주면서 승리를 가져갔는데 네. 어, 오늘 경기 전에 아, 라우드가 누구냐? 내가 그들이 우승했을 때는 내가 없어서 걔네가 우승한 거다라는 얘기를 해줬잖아요. 약간 경기하면서도 그런 느낌이었을까요? 어 당연하죠. 일단 자신감을 가져야 되는 게 최우선이기 때문에 그런 마음으로 같이 임하고 게임했습니다. Important to be confident uh, when you're facing loud or an, or a team of that caliber. So that was my mindset, just completely 100% confident when I was facing them. Me encanta. Le he preguntado porque al principio del día le preguntábamos eh, por qué dices que, que, que bueno que, que no le tienen tanta estima a loud porque él decía que él ni siquiera jugaba cuando loud se hizo campeón del mundo. Y dice que incluso eh, estando hoy en el stage él ha dado el 100%. Han estado muy seguros de todo lo que han hecho. Y ahora vamos a preguntar un poco por los mapas. Yo tengo curiosidad por saber Como aparece ese breeze que era permaban de loud. So loud had been permabanning that breeze during the entirety of kickoff, but now they leave it open. You decide to dive right into it, but it doesn't go as planned. What is the thought process be be uh, behind picking that map, and then also what happened on stage? 일단 라우드가 계속해서 킥오프 때는 브리즈를 고정밴으로 가져갔는데 풀어주자마자 젠지가 브리즈를 선택했잖아요. 좀 선택한 이유와 함께 좀 브리즈에서 패배가 있었는데 어떤 피드백이 있었는지 궁금합니다. 음 일단 저희가 저희 하던 대로 못한 것 같아요. 그리고 약간 좀 유리할 때 계속 싸워져가지고 그게 불리한 경우로 가는 경우도 있었고 그런 부분을 이제 줄이면서 이제 게임을 하자 이렇게 피드백이 나왔습니다. 
호흡은 이유는 그냥, 그냥 자신감 있어서요. 있어서요. The reason why we picked Breathe as soon as it was open was because we were super confident in it. And uh, I think what went wrong with Breeze was the fact that, you know, we were taking fights that we didn't really need to. And Breeze just didn't really go the way we planned. And I think it, it was more on us dropping the ball. María, que parece ser que lo que pasó en Breeze no es culpa de Laos, sino más bien de ellos, que son ellos los que han dejado, o sea, se ha dejado ganar, por así. Well, thank you very much for the interview. Thank you very much, Jen. We'll see you in a couple of days. El día todavía no ha terminado, así que vamos a hablar un poco más de lo que ha pasado el día de hoy. Thank you very much for that, Kukuka. Genji, they pull off this huge uh, upset. I'm your host, Yingsu, and I'm back here with Mimi and a special guest on the desk. Hi, Pog, welcome. Uh, jumping couldn't over leave you the hanging. other side. Couldn't leave you hanging. Yeah. Especially after a series like that, that, that honestly, I feel a little bad from the conversations I was having earlier about yeah. not buying into Genji, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm swayed in one match. Michael, matchup. they won every scrim. Yeah, I know, they won, won every Pacific. scrim, right? Yeah, that's that's never steered a team wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, you just before. believe scrim bucks yeah, every time. It. It's never, I'm, never I'm let anyone now. I'm all in, Genji going deep. Yeah, I mean, they looked so good throughout this series. They're just continuing on everything we saw from them from Pacific, the really strong protocols, really great just kind of discipline from the squad. And also, I think that what most people were doubting was if these rookies could come to an international event and yes. keep up the pace. And, and back my up the God, did they do yeah, it. I mean, can you imagine being a player that's only played 17 officials and you're sitting across, <laughs> you're sitting across Ridiculous. from like Les, uh, Sadag, uh, Cowan, et cetera, et cetera, and you are it it. It. The most experienced team we have here. You are given it. Uh, as you guys can see from this, there's a lot of trash talk. Uh, there's a a lot of energy, high energy, and this is what we like to see, Mike. This is what we enjoy at these tournaments. Absolutely, and one, one of the things I was talking to Lauren about was obviously the validation of coming to this event. The fact that we saw this sort of energy, we know Sadak can get up, get a little loud on stage as yeah. well himself. Loud. The fact that these guys like are seated. laughing and giving it, yeah, no, yeah. brilliant. Oh. Nailed that one. Anyway, uh, the fact that they're able to give back up and match this energy on stage and have the gameplay to back it up, for me, is a huge testament. Yeah, the guys just look comfortable out there. It, it is clear that it's not facing them at all, being in this new situation, playing against one of the best. And if anything, that confidence is only going to grow after a win like that. Absolutely. Munchkin was given it. How many yeah, times exactly. have you seen that guy give it? I don't think we've ever LN? said that before. No. <laughs> and, and you know what? He deserves to. I feel like after the performance they had today, they have every right. Dude, and especially I love Munchkin. The fact that we don't get Angel, it's just it just warms my heart that we get Munchkin. It's just him on freeze, running it down B main like three yeah, times And then just uh, turns it around <laughs> and is like dropping bombs on ascent. He is the duality of man, I as mean, a man. Speaking of those, Angel uh, of Madrid. Yeah. Oh, don't, don't do him like that. Wait, that's such a that's, hard that's nickname. A, that's an accolade. The Angel that's of Madrid. Yeah. Oh, okay. That goes that? hard. Oh, that is. kind of angel. Yes. Okay, I get you, I get you. Uh, but let's take a quick look at some of the uh, multi-kills we saw on Ascent because uh, you had Texture, Meteor and Munchkin all drop a 4k, as you do. And it's what they did in Pacific. They, they do it again here. <laughs> Like. That's, I mean, I was really concerned about that as well because Loud's a, a team that you don't really ever get. They the tend to, you know, like trade. Yeah, trade, does. or you never really get an opportunity to clutch out rounds versus Loud. It's like that their, their strength in numbers. They like death ball, and they're happy to throw three or four Karen bodies onto one person. Kills. Yeah, that is. <laughs> Uh, lunacy for for a rookie player to come out and do that versus any team on an international stage, let alone loud. Loud, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it's just, it's honestly kind of unbelievable what this team has pulled off. Like, I, I think that people really did have some reason to doubt. I, I think everything people said about the Pacific field not looking as great, DRX falling off a little bit, yeah. Paper X not up to their same standard. Okay, they got an upset. Like, I understand the doubters, but I think this is the match to cast all of that aside immediately in Madrid. It is, and I, I think as well, coming into this, the questions about loud and compositions and do they commit to it? Do they play with it a little bit? This was the switch up here that ultimately there wasn't enough in it for me to feel really confident about whether or not they do address some of the issues that we saw at kickoff. Yeah, in, in an interview back in America, Sadak said he, does, he doesn't like Sentinels. He doesn't like playing Sentinels. He's against it. It doesn't make the game as mobile. I think but that shows. On a sense, right? <laughs> yeah. Look, I thought you meant comp. the team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be like, damn, Sadak. I, I, you saw the video Why? this morning. I think yeah. they're, they're chill with each I other. I he was just gonna, he was, he was kind of talking trash no, about but, them. No, but the agent, and I think he has yeah. a very unique read on the game right now that 
I don't I don't know. I think it can work on some maps, but you really got to bring this this ascent comp into question a little bit because it definitely was Genji playing excellently. That is the primary reason why this series went this way. But still, some weird choices being made. I think yes. Loud has to kind of go back and do some reckoning within themselves to see what's the idea going forward. Absolutely yeah, if you take a quick uh, look at, on your screens here as well, we have two games under our belt, which means uh, Casey and Genji will be playing the next round because they're both 1-0 uh, up against uh, whichever teams that we're going to see tomorrow because Sentinels will be taking on Heretics and EDG will be facing Paper Reg. So what do you make of those matchups, Mike? I'm excited. I mean, I, I'm luckily casting the uh, Sentinels Heretics game oh. tomorrow. That should be an absolute bag. Did you buy the Sentinels bundle? I won't answer that just yet. How much yet. does Delsus pay you? Uh, not <laughs> enough. Actually, not I'll enough. Say, yeah, I'm, buy I'm the not Heretics bundle, go, everybody. Yeah. Buy the Heretics bundle. There buy the Don't just bundle. slipping money, uh, money <laughs> under your door to have you show yes. the bundle. Benji Fishy, you know what to do. You know what to do. Uh, but before we close everything out, Hypox, since you are a special guest for today, we're going to ask you uh, to ask a question for our special guest for tomorrow. It will be one of the Sentinels or Heretics players. We don't know who. So uh, feel free to instigate. You, you, you look like a deer in the headlights. Oscars, yeah. uh, well. Just. Yeah. Okay, what's, what's the best thing you've eaten in Madrid so far? Oh, that's a really nice question. I thought it was what? just going to be, what's the best thing you've eaten? Period. <laughs> just yeah, ever. Just, I mean, that could be the follow-up Yeah, I had this sandwich once. It was, yeah. it was fine. Okay, I'm looking forward to uh, GB having to ask one of them that I showed show them the question. Uh, but thank you very <laughs> much, Mimi, for joining me for today. Thank you very much, uh, Mike, as well. Of course, Kakuka, who was uh, doing the interview. Uh, Lauren and Bren and Show, because if I don't do that, I'm going to get half off and not flamed. naming every oh, single flamed. person. Uh, but make sure you guys join us like again. To Oh, my God. And Mika and Jen. And Sean um, Gass. <laughs> and Sean, but make sure you guys join us again uh, tomorrow for more Valorant action starting with EDG and Paper X, and we'll see you then. Upset surprises, we've seen it all on the regional stage, but can these teams continue their dominance when the stage is so much bigger and the stakes are so much higher? Connection, Martin willing to take the fight to transfer the damage for them. Flash over the top, Martin. How's he doing this? No way. Try and fight a target-rich environment. Take your pick, take your time, son. Live with the ace. Force them out into the open. No easy fights, no easy exits. That is Carmen Core sealing it up. Nice and pretty for map number one. Yeah, let's get to it then, map number two. What can he do? Paranoia glides, TP in face. No way. No way. No way. Shin. That's monstrous. And life is nowhere near. Half on it. Oh. Live. It's coming, Core. One it's all down to 1v1. Wraps it around. 20 seconds left. Spike still not retrieved. Thomas e. He finishes the job on their feet before you know it. And it's a 2 0 wrap to the series for Carmen Core in their opening match of Madrid. This is Genji's Masters debut, but they have to take on the former world champions in Loud. We only get one night like this. The pressure on the site was too much before, but it's less now. And his texture with a world of trouble. Texture, he's on it. Tipping the scales now into their hands. Oh my word. Oh. 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 Remove that meteor will fall here. That's going to get another one. No oh, way. Oh, oh my way. god. Yes. Can he stop this? Because Karen ain't stopping. He's going. No way! It's be 13 and it is! Genji! Steal away the 13th round! I've got to have map two. Let's get out of here. Ooh. Oh my god! <laughs> and he's still alive. Okay, not for long. Oh, God. Oh, my God! If Genji can pull this off, it will be a tremendous upset. And Talisker is destroying body check. Garon's above you, and he gets full. Oh, the angle is rotten. The texture just dancing around. They're on the precipice of a potential upset here. What a moment it would be for Genji. Lock you in one down a county in less than two. He's the defuse. It's going on. They can't stop it. Genji, crush loud in the final map here.
shelter.